Audiobook Title Evolution Start ASA Raft, 001-234, by I Am Link Part 04. This work belongs to author I Am Link, Source Royal Road and Scribble Hub. This is what you call a King Class C area. Pathetic. Come on, bring it on. I'm going to fuck you all down. 178. The Sky of King Class C. The boat's body was being ruthlessly assaulted by the downpour and relentless waves, drenching everyone on board. To deal with potential dangers, the crew did not seek shelter in the cabin. Initially, everyone was tense, but then they found Captain started bellowing and demanding more as if this was not enough. Charge King was taken aback for a moment but then burst into laughter. Ha ha ha, Captain, you must be crazier than a man man. I love it. Come on, brothers, we're here to conquer the depths of hell itself. Absolutely, we fear nothing. Only the kings can venture into the king's domain, and we are going to be the kings. He had a helpless look on his face. Insanity was contagious. Initially, there was only one crazy person, but now there was an entire ship full of them. Although there were many sea monsters around them, it appeared that they were also apprehensive of the firepower of the super battleship, and did not approach too close. Just when everyone thought they could cross the abyss without issue, a crisis warning suddenly appeared ahead. Ding! A super vortex has been detected in the east direction. With a diameter of 3,000 meters, the minimum escape speed is 40 knots. Oh, for goodness sake. Rain was a little bit regretted disrespecting the abyss just now. How massive a 3,000 meter vortex could be. The crucial point was that they couldn't adjust their direction at all, and rashly turning now could result in capsizing. To escape from the vortex, they needed to achieve a speed of 40 knots, yet the super battleship's maximum speed was only 38 knots, and their current actual speed was only around 25 knots. At this point, everyone saw the terrifying vortex ahead. Armin's eyes widened as she incredulously remarked, My goodness, how massive is that vortex? She too could use a vortex to kill, but hers was merely child's play compared to this vortex. This is the power of nature. Human effort is mere child's play before it. Blackie, don't worry about us, hurry up and charge. Rain yelled. Blackie refused to leave and instead used its head to push against the stern of the ship, trying to increase its speed. It seemed that little Blackie had no intention of abandoning Rain and the others. Rain took a deep breath. Listen up, everyone. In order to break through the vortex, I need to adjust the ship's speed to the maximum. Hold on tight. Everyone stared firmly at the huge vortex ahead of them. Even the relentless rain and the crashing waves could not distract their attention. This was a matter of life and death. Accelerate. All engines were pushed to their limits, and the speed of the super battleship suddenly surged. In the rolling waves, it looked like a speedboat, half floating and half flying. Blacka pushed the ship forward with all its might, but the ship was too heavy. Despite Blacka's massive physical exertion, it only managed to push the ship's speed up to 39 knots. Rain quickly adjusted all the cannons to point towards the stern. Fire all weapons! Just one more knot! He shouted. Boom boom boom. Rain probably didn't expect that the first full firepower test of the optimized Yamato would be aimed at empty air after it was built. Under intense gunfire, the ship's speed finally climbed to 41 knots. At this point, they had already entered the vortex. The gunfire had to continue without pause. As soon as their ship's speed dropped, they would be sucked into the vortex. The super battleship continued to unleash a hail of gunfire. Rain had never fired with such reckless abandon before. Charge! Charge! The crew roared with bulging eyes. This journey seemed to last half a century. But when Rain finally broke through the vortex, almost all of the weapon systems were in a state of high heat. Rainwater washed down, and the gun barrels were steaming. Black it was already exhausted, but it continued to slide along with the ship's momentum. Rain personally flew to Blacka and tied it with a rope, letting the ship drag it forward. They finally broke out of the vortex, and after passing through the vortex, the sea monsters around them disappeared without a trace, and the dark clouds in the sky became less heavy, with raindrops starting to patter. Have we crossed the abyss? True King looked around in confusion. Although it was not calm here, it was much quieter than before. They were not physically tired but rather mentally exhausted from the extreme strain they had just experienced. Rain's radar showed they had already crossed most of the abyssal zone. After more than ten minutes, they finally broke out of Satan's abyss. When they emerged from the heavily clouded sea, everyone breathed a sigh of relief and collapsed onto the deck. We finally made it. It was too exciting just now. Is this the King Class Sea? Is this the sky of the King Class Sea? I thought we were going to die in the vortex. We're lucky. 
Although we encountered a vortex, we didn't run into any powerful sea monsters. Black had given up swimming altogether and lay on the surface of the water, letting the ship pull it along. It was too tired. Of course, Rain was the most exhausted of all. The high-intensity mental strain made him want to fall asleep immediately. Ding, a pirate group has been detected in the east direction. The group consists of one D-class battleship and 29 F-class battleships, traveling at a speed of 35 knots. Holy shit, Rain became alert. It was said that if you hang out for too long, you'll eventually get caught. He had been hoping to encounter a pirate group in the previous sea area, and he encountered one as soon as he arrived at the King-class sea area. If he had encountered this pirate group when he was in full condition, it would have been no big deal. The other side only had one D-class battleship, which probably wasn't doing well in the King-class sea area. But the problem was that Rain had just used up all of his ammunition to accelerate. So now, he could only be considered a cruise ship. The enemy ships were very fast, but they did not rush straight toward them, stopping five or six thousand meters away from Rain. Captain, they're observing us. Armin's eyes had already become all-like, able to see farther than others even with a telescope. Can we still fight? We're out of ammo. Ah. Uh, then, what should we do? Armin, can you see what they're doing? Rain didn't want to show too much panic. They were definitely observing their every move. I'll try to see if I can understand their lip reading. Armin said they seem to be saying. Armin then began to recount their conversation. Oh my god, they killed a scaly dragon in Satan's abyss? No way, they're too ruthless. It really was a scaly dragon, tied up behind their ship. There are so many gun turrets on their ship. Captain, should we attack them? Let's not be hasty and observe first. After all, our strength is not particularly strong, and we are just scavenging here. Let's not take any risks. Notify the gunners to be prepared. If they turn and run, we will fire immediately. Otherwise, let's not expose our intentions for the time being. Armin was really a treasure girl, she had even self-taught lip reading. Her extraordinary vision, it's simply a powerful tool for gathering intelligence. The fact that the opponent was scared by the exhausted little black it was quite speechless for Rain. The situation was a bit awkward now. The enemy was motionless, and Rain dared not run. Rain immediately adjusted the direction of the guns, all aimed at the enemy fleet. Even if they didn't have shells, surface-level efforts still needed to be done. The crew members climbed up when they saw the movement of the weapons system on the ship. As they looked at the opposing fleet, they prepared their weapons one by one, with serious expressions on their faces. The two sides had been deadlocked for a long time. Suddenly, Rain began to move towards the opposite side. 179, Eastern Sulphur Islands. They didn't run, they even chased after them. The captain on the opposite ship lowered his binoculars, his eyes widening when he saw the blackened muzzles on the ship the metallic hull all over, and of course the black dragon tying behind the ship that had an unknown fate. Finally, he gave the order. Black's body was half floating and half sinking, and no one could really tell how big it was. The ship that went hunting sea monsters in the depths of Satan Abyss was not to be trifled with. Retreat. Quick, quick retreat. The opposite ship turned and ran, and Rain was slowed down by dragging a black dragon, gradually falling behind the other ship. Hee hee, you want to chase me? Impossible. Henry, the pirate ship's captain, laughed confidently. You're still dragging a sea monster. Goodbye. Let's go. Let's go to the next stakeout and see if we can find any easy targets. Henry ran off cheerfully. Rain finally breathed a sigh of relief. Damn. I'm just too unlucky. I just left Satan Abyss and ran into a pirate gang. Captain, the vulture pirate group, as their name suggests, specializes in scavenging. It's hard for D1-class pirate groups like them to survive in the center of the King-class sea areas, so they mainly rely on robbing outside the Satan Abyss for fleets that have just emerged from the Abyss, said Armin. If unfortunate fleets engage in a fierce battle with sea monsters and suffer heavy losses, they will seize the opportunity to plunder. However, these pirate gangs are cowardly and may encounter powerful forces among fleets that venture into the King-level waters. Rain nodded in agreement, so they're just a bunch of opportunistic thieves. However, we were welcomed as soon as we entered the King-class waters. It seems the competition here will be even more intense, remarked Shobe as he strolled over nonchalantly. Captain, why didn't we chase after them just now? He asked. Chase after what? We ran out of ammunition. I was just bluffing, replied Rain. What? We ran out of ammunition? Then why did you act like we were really pursuing them? Shobe exclaimed in surprise. That's called putting on a show. If we didn't appear strong, they would have attacked us. 
We would have been sitting ducks, explained Rain, shaking his head as he returned to the captain's quarters. Shob looked at Armin in disbelief, who nodded in agreement with Rain. Remembering the threatening behavior of the pirate gang earlier, Shob couldn't help but break out in a cold sweat. After tricking the pirate gang and escaping, Rain couldn't afford to rest. He quickly replenished their ammunition and ordered the crew to load them into the weapons. Once the ammunition was replenished, Rain regained his confidence. Wandering around the King-class waters unarmed is a death wish. However, strangely enough, Rain and his crew did not encounter any ships for the next few days. No pirate crews, bounty groups, or merchant vessels at all. What's going on? Rain carefully checked the ship's radar system, but there was no response. In the Beast-class sea, we often saw ships fighting each other. But now that we're in the King-class sea, it's so quiet. Armin, what's going on? Is it because there are too few fleets in the King-class sea? Rain asked. Armin thought for a moment and said, Captain, I don't know. In many memoirs of legendary captains that I've read, they all say that the King-class sea is very dangerous and has many fleets. Before coming to the King-class sea, Armin had planned a route, but after half a month of travel, the eastern sulfur islands that they should have arrived at did not appear on Rain's radar system. Lost? Rain looked incredulous. This had never happened before. There were many veteran sailors on board, and after Rain raised the question, everyone agreed that they had not deviated from their course. Captain, the King Class C has very volatile geological activity, with frequent underwater volcanic eruptions. It's possible that the eastern sulfur islands sank. Check the seabed to see what's going on, Tick suggested. Rain tried and found that there was a sunken island about 400 meters below their ship. Damn, how could this happen? We're so unlucky. Rain frowned. Now we have a problem. Our fuel won't be enough to get us to the next island. As soon as Rain finished speaking, chaos broke out in the captain's cabin. Did it really sink? Captain, this isn't bad luck. It's a fortune. A huge fortune. True King said in shock. He rarely gets so excited. Oh my god. As the saying goes, surviving a great ordeal will bring good fortune. I've only heard about this kind of thing, but I've never seen it. Charge King was also extremely excited, his eyes wide open. Showed blue smoke rings, yeah, it's extremely rare. The Navy has never encountered such a stroke of luck before. Rain looked confused. The more he listened, the more he couldn't understand. Everyone was ecstatic, but he was the only one left in the dark. Hey, what are you guys talking about? We're running out of fuel, and you're all so excited. Can someone explain it to me? Tick quickly explained to Rain. Armin used the latest nautical chart, which didn't show any news of the sinking of Eastern Sulphur Island. This means that it sank suddenly. This kind of situation is very rare because islands are closely monitored for changes in the surrounding sea currents. If a continental shelf is sinking, they would have calculated it three to five years in advance, and they would have had enough time to evacuate. But there are also some special circumstances that can cause islands to sink suddenly, such as drastic changes in the continental plate. This situation is very rare, but it's not impossible. In such a case, they wouldn't have time to evacuate supplies. A sunken island, and a large one that didn't have time to evacuate supplies is right under our feet. Captain, do you now understand why we say we've struck it rich? The more Rain listened, the more he understood, and the more he understood, the more excited he became. In short, what lay beneath his feet was a gold mine. Shob continued, what's even stranger is that there isn't a fleet around. It's a bit unusual, but on the other hand, it also means, we'll be the sole beneficiaries of this huge wealth. Rain took a deep breath, he understood everything now. Fuel or no fuel, he had found an island, and not just one, but an archipelago. He didn't need anyone to remind him. Rain already knew that there must be something hidden behind this unusual situation no matter why Eastern Sulphur Archipelago suddenly sank, or why there were no other fleets around. But none of that mattered. The only thing that mattered now was to salvage the supplies. What are you all waiting for? Everyone, get off the ship and salvage the island. Yes, Captain. Let's go. The crew rushed to get into the water and head towards the super treasure at the bottom of the sea. 180. Ask someone for directions. The crew members scrambled to dive into the eastern sulfur archipelago site. Soon, the heads of the sailors appeared above the sea surface. Large quantities of goods were delivered to the ship one after another. Suddenly, Hundreds of metal barrels floated to the surface of the sea, scattered everywhere. Soon after, one bear to bear emerged from the water. Quick, collect these oil barrels. They all floated up. Fuel was the most urgent resource needed by rain at the moment. 
The crew on the ship did not care about anything else and hurried to dive and salvage the barrels. The super battleship had been anchored nearby for five full days, and the crew members kept bringing various items to the ship. There were large quantities of metal materials, sealed gunpowder, which others couldn't use but rain could recycle through the system. In addition, there was a large amount of fuel that was enough to last the super battleship for a long time. Other items such as fishing equipment, underwater exploration equipment, and rare metals piled up on the deck. Although the super battleship was not a cargo ship, its tonnage was still huge. Being able to fill the deck was already terrifying. This is the biggest harvest ever. Rain couldn't help but exclaim. It was true that surviving a great danger would bring great fortune. Ha ha ha, Captain. This treasure hunt is so enjoyable. We can explore an island at random. And no one else was competing with us. It's a pity that there were still many good things on the island that we couldn't take with us. After some thought, Rain said, let's pick out the valuable items. There are so many things on the island that we can't possibly take everything. With so much stuff here, everyone helped Avril to count them. At this time, Fancy ran to Rain and asked strangely, Captain, have you seen one bear and two bear? Huh, I saw them earlier. Did they not come up? Tick also didn't see those two people. Just then, two exhausted looking people emerged from the nearby sea surface. It was not easy for them to swim to the ship's side. Give us a hand. We got something good. Lift the sack up first. Someone immediately put down a rope, and the two tied it to a black sack. Rain and the others were all curious about what was inside the bag. Not long after, one bear to bear boarded the ship and came to Rain with a sack in their hands. Captain, look what we found, they said. They opened the bag, and a dazzling golden light almost blinded everyone. The entire bag was filled with golden pearls. Rain was shocked. These two bears were indeed skilled. Not only did they find a large amount of fuel earlier, but they also now brought a big bag of golden pearls. Even if the islanders evacuated in a hurry, they would have taken the golden pearls with them. So even though they searched for a lot of supplies, no one could have found the golden pearls. Where did you find them? Charged King asked, his face full of astonishment. They had been looking for a long time but had never seen any golden pearls. One bear smirked, you guys didn't find such a good thing, haha. Two bear and I went to the pearl bank on the island and entered the place where they store the pearls. Pearl bank. Everyone was surprised. These two guys had an unusual obsession with pearls. They never wasted any opportunity to search for pearls. There weren't too many golden pearls in the bag. Only about 40 to 50 thousand. But if they were converted to black pearls, they would be worth around 4 to 5 million. This was almost equivalent to the total income Rain and his crew had earned in the beast grade sea area over the years. When Rain came to the King Class Sea area, he was broke and low on ammunition. Suddenly, he became rich overnight. Indeed, a captain with certain qualities will attract the same kind of crew. Rain was greedy, and one bear and two bear were no different. Ha ha ha, well done! Rain laughed heartily. Now, they had even more confidence in exploring the King Class Sea area. The crew is putting the harvest into the warehouse. And now Rain finally has time to think about their situation. Avril, Tick, True King, Charge King, and others sit in the captain's room discussing their next plan. Captain, something big seems to have happened in the King Class Sea. Yeah, an island suddenly sank, and there's no other ship around. I don't know what's going on in this King Class Sea. Armin also said, I searched for information about crustal movement in the last three years, and there was nothing. The appearance of the base island in the beast level sea area was detected in advance, which is different from the sudden sinking of the eastern sulfur islands. This further proves that humans in this era have the ability to anticipate changes in islands. It seems we need to ask someone. Rain shook his head, feeling a little clueless. Did the nearby islands survive the sinking of the eastern sulfur islands? He didn't want to do a fruitless expedition. But Captain, we've been here for so long and haven't seen a single ship. Who should we ask? Fancy frowned and asked. Rain thought for a moment, then suddenly brightened. Who said we haven't met any ships? We've encountered a pirate group. Now let's go back and find them. The Platinum Pirates never expected that the strange warship they encountered last time would find them again. What the hell? Are they crazy? They've been chasing us for hundreds of miles? Captain Henry put down his telescope, staring blankly, his face incredulous. I've never seen such a crazy bounty group. Captain, what do we do now? We haven't replenished our supplies for over three months. Our ammunition is running low and we only have enough diesel for less than a month, said an old, dark-skinned man. What else can we do? They're coming for us, and we have to take a gamble. All ships, prepare for battle. 
As soon as the order was given, the opposing ships fired from afar. Crazy, firing from such a distance. Henry was gloating when a loud explosion suddenly sounded behind him. Boom, boom, boom. A merciless bombardment, and all the ships behind Henry were hit. What the hell? They hit us from tens of thousands of meters away. The most critical thing was not the enemy's range, but their firepower was too strong. The more than 20 E-level and F-level warships couldn't withstand it. After two shots, they all began to sink. Damn it, my ships! Watching two transport ships sink, Henry's face turned white. A large number of crew members who had fallen into the water swam toward the only D-class destroyer that had not been hit. Then, on the bow deck of the opposing ship, the terrifying main cannon had already targeted this D-level armored destroyer. Boom, boom, boom. The triple lightning two main cannon fired directly, and the shells instantly pierced their 60 millimeters armor. 181. You're lucky today. Rain confirmed that all the gun positions on the enemy's flagship had been destroyed and that the main ship had not been completely sunk. As their ships approached, there were only 20 or so people left on the ship, who were led by Henry and were preparing for a desperate fight. It was unclear whether they were holding on to the idea of ship and crew share the same fate, or if they thought jumping into the sea here was no different from suicide. In any case, they held their weapons tightly, staring at Rain and the others. After the two ships docked nearby, someone brought a ladder or hooked a rope onto the other ship's side, and Rain led his people to board. Why the hell do you have to chase us? Henry asked Charge King. You chased us for 200 nautical miles. 200 nautical miles. Are you insane? Don't you care about the cost? Charge King was the oldest here, and Henry treated him as the captain. Rain was already used to this scene and said lightly, Because you're pirates, and we're bounty hunters. Looking at Henry's aggrieved look, Rain shook his head and smiled. Okay, okay, don't be so resentful. Usually, I never leave anyone alive, but you're lucky today. Henry didn't feel lucky at all. Since they last met, they had sailed 200 nautical miles, only to meet them here again. His fleet was gone, his crew dead or fled, and now there were only 20 or so left. He didn't know that Rain had just come back, not been chasing after them. He also didn't know how Rain treated pirates in the beast-class waters. Anyway, in Henry's heart, he was really unlucky. Um, as long as you guys cooperate and don't resist, I can spare your lives, Rain said kindly. I won't listen, I won't listen, Henry yelled angrily, expressing his resentment and determination to be uncooperative. Anyway, I have nothing left. I'll fight you to the end. Rain was also speechless. This guy was, after all, a captain. How could he be so impulsive? Brother, we just wanted to talk to someone. We didn't plan on really wiping you out. Look, you still have so many crew members alive. I just wanted to blow up your artillery earlier. Rain was not lying. If he really wanted to eliminate them, he would not have only fired two rounds of attacks. However, Henry was not buying it. First, he had never seen Rain's methods before. Second, his own losses were too heavy. Isn't this wiping us out? All my ships are gone. All the crew ran away. Rain shook his head helplessly. This guy seemed too excited. It seemed that the problem could only be solved by force. Shob, you guys take care of it. Avril, watch out. After Rain finished speaking, he walked to the fence to enjoy the scenery. What the hell was this king-class sea area? They couldn't even find a human shadow. It was really depressing. Shob and the others had been slow to level up before. The most important thing was that their scientific diet and training time were not enough. Just like Charge King, who transported goods all day long, although he could also train on the ship, it was more important to pay attention to the surrounding situation. Their ships did not have radar, so they needed to pay attention to the situation on the sea surface and the seabed at all times. Sometimes, encountering a sea monster on one cargo run was enough to make them scared all the way. If their minds were not focused on training, their level upgrades would naturally be slow. But it was different on Rain's ship. They didn't have to worry about their own safety at all, nor did they have to think about tasks. Although Tick's body recovered with Avril's treatment, his level was no longer outstanding. His specialty had long changed from improving himself to researching how to scientifically train his people. Therefore, his training methods and scientific diets were still effective for mutants above stage 4. In the more than three years since then, under the guidance of the system, reasonable and luxurious dietary supply, and wholehearted training, even the top few members had different levels of level upgrades. Currently, the highest level crew members on the ship were True King, Shobe, and Charge King, all of whom were at stage 4 level 8. Next were True Queen, 
Windbell, Old Bai, and others, who had also reached stage 4 level 7. It is worth mentioning that Arsene's progress was still rapid, having reached stage 4 level 6, making her one of the best in the third squad on the ship. One bear and two bear are now both at stage 4 level 3, which is considered above average on the ship. Next were a large number of stage 4 level 1, level 2 crew members, and a small number of stage 3. Unfortunately, Rain's level was about to be surpassed by all the crew members again. Of course, Avril was an exception. Her level now was at stage 2 level 3, and she could change 40% of cell properties and control up to 13 people at the same time. The cost of Avril's abnormal skill was that her leveling speed was extremely slow. It had been nearly 10 years, and she had just reached stage 2. With Avril, True King at stage 4 level 5 could defeat a stage 5 powerhouse, of course, except for the special mutation like Black Corpse. Currently, True King, at stage 4 level 8, did not fall behind Henry, who was at stage 5 level 4. Others also joined the fray. The battlefield was chaotic, and suddenly, as if remembering something, Rain said to True King and the others, it's best to keep some of them alive. Understood, Captain. Twenty minutes later, the battle had ended and Henry had been tied up and brought before Rain. What kind of sorcery did you use on me? Why has my strength been greatly reduced? Henry looked at Rain in horror. Rain turned around, drew his new titanium alloy dagger from his waist, and looked coldly at Henry. Now is not the time for you to ask questions. Answer my questions properly, and if you're willing to cooperate I... Before Rain could finish speaking, a flash of fear suddenly appeared in Henry's eyes. Rain followed his gaze and saw three unmanned drones quickly shuttling back and forth above their ship. Yes, it's the Terror King's Falcon drone. This drone can reach a maximum speed of 57 knots, making it impossible to shoot down. They have found us, we're doomed. Wait a minute. I don't have a fleet anymore, what am I afraid of? Ha ha ha, you have been discovered by the Terror King, you can't escape now, and when they come back, you're done for. Henry became a little crazy his eyes filled with a sense of satisfaction that everything was falling apart. Ha ha, so what if you destroy our platinum? You'll end up like us, dead. Ha ha. However, suddenly a burst of intense machine gun fire came from the ship, and the three drones were instantly blown to pieces. One bear got off the lightning machine gun seat and gestured a thumbs up to Rain from afar. Captain, I'm accurate in my shooting, right? It's not bad, Rain replied. Um, what did you just say? Rain frowned and turned to look at Henry. What the? You guys. Just like that. You destroyed the Falcon drone. Henry looked at Rain in horror. What kind of monster weapon did they have on their ship? A random crew member took down the Falcon drone? 182. The Terra King. This time, Henry would never underestimate this little brat again. Both the strength of these people and the power of their battleship were simply terrifying. What's even more frightening is their style of not hesitating to take action, which made him realize one thing these people are not joking around. Which fleet are you guys from? Rain pointed to his own flag, the dad. Dad. Henry's mind was instantly flooded with millions of question marks what kind of fucking name is that? An absurd bounty group, an absurd ship, an absurd captain, and an absurd crew, all of them were absurd. If I cooperate with you, will you really let us go? Yes. Henry looked back at his own crew. Perhaps he shouldn't have been too impulsive. This year, the King-class sea area experienced several violent crustal movements causing many islands to appear, disappear, shift, or new ones to emerge. However, the fleets here had no time to compete for the resources of the sunken islands, because a strange mirage phenomenon appeared in the core area of the King-class sea. Seeing a mirage on the sea surface is not uncommon, but the mirage here is very different from others. After the fleet entered the area, the mirage did not disappear, and people found themselves in this illusory scene. Later, a fleet arrived at the center of the mirage and discovered a miraculous stone displayed there. Within the surrounding mirage, people saw that this stone had changed the crust of the seabed, causing the movement of continental plates. Some quickly deduced that the crustal movement shown in the mirage was real, and its consequences happened to coincide with recent changes in the islands of the King-class sea areas. In other words, what the mirage showed people was a real event that had occurred in the past. You should know that in the Azure era, the most important resource is the island, and that stone has the ability to change the terrain. In other words, whoever gets that stone may be able to rule the entire Azure era, Henry said, his gaze becoming different. Perhaps we can go back to the era of civilization. Rain was also stunned, and he believed at least 70% of what Henry said. 
The mysterious stone that Henry spoke of was very likely the heaven crystal. The heaven crystal had gold, wood, water, fire, and earth, so this one appearing in the King Class C area must be the earth heaven crystal. But could the heaven crystal really have such great power? Rain couldn't help but think of his fire heaven crystal. He seemed to have forgotten to try to develop its power. Henry didn't know what Rain was thinking, he just continued. The reason why you haven't encountered any ships along the way is that all the powerful fleets are on the other side of the mirage. Although only strong fleets can enter the mirage, no one wants to miss this opportunity. And those fleets that entered the mirage area have drawn maps. But first, they don't dare to get too close to each other, and second, the mirage only appears for a few minutes every day before disappearing. This has caused great trouble in mapping, so it is said that until the mirage completely disappears, no fleet has drawn a complete map. Their maps are all incomplete. Oh, by the way, since the Terra King fleet has sent drones over, it means they've returned, Henry said. The Terra King fleet? Yes. The area within 3,000 nautical miles around here belongs to the Terra King fleet. In the Beast Class C area, most fleets don't even have their own islands. But this Terra King fleet not only has an island but also controls such a large sea area? Rain couldn't help but think that this was such a terrifying fleet. Henry continued previously. All major fleets tried to find clues about the mysterious stone in the Mirage, but now that the Mirage has disappeared, they've returned. Normally, they wouldn't bother with passing ships in their sea area, but for some reason, they found you. Rain immediately realized that they had stolen the Eastern Sulphur Archipelago, and according to Henry's words, the Eastern Sulphur Archipelago should also belong to the Terror King fleet. In other words, they took something that belonged to someone else while they were away, so the Terror King was to find them. Rain thought for a moment and asked, Is the Terra King fleet the strongest fleet in the King Grade C area? They're considered second rate. The fleets in the King Class C area are divided into one emperor and ten kings. The Terra King fleet is one of the ten kings, with a level of C3. It's a mid to low tier force among the ten kings. The strongest of the ten kings is the Black Hell Trading Company, also known as the Trading King fleet, with a level of C8. C8. Rain's face became serious. The Black Hell's strength was unexpectedly strong. They hadn't encountered the Black Hell in the Beast Class C area, but they would have a chance to meet them in the King Class C. However, the Black Hell was the strongest of the ten kings in the King Class C area, the Trading King. And there's one emperor, the strongest fleet in the King Class C area, the Poseidon Bounty Hunters. They're a C9 class fleet, and their power is extremely terrifying. They have a particularly powerful crew member on their ship, who can destroy my entire fleet alone. We also know that we don't have the strength to compete with those kings, so fleets like ours can only make money in the Satan Sea area. Rain frowned. The King Class Sea was indeed quite fierce. The Beast Class Sea only had three Beast Kings, but here there were eleven terrifying forces. One crew member could destroy Henry's fleet? Rain could hardly imagine it. Was this still something a human could do? After wandering around the King Class Sea for so long, Rain finally realized that the King Class C was quite powerful. Armin and the others then asked some more questions, such as the location of the Mirage, or some other specific details. Henry gradually got into the rhythm and began answering quickly. Unfortunately, Henry was only a small fry who hung out on the edge of the King Class C and knew only so much. After more than ten minutes, everyone didn't have any more questions, so Rain really let them go and took his men back to the ship. As for whether Henry and the others could save themselves, Rain couldn't be bothered. He had already shown mercy by releasing these pirates. Back on the ship, the core crew members entered the captain's room. Captain, it seems like we're too late. The mirage has disappeared, Tick said. Rain shook his head. We're not late. We arrived just in time. Huh? Everyone looked at Rain in confusion. Rain smiled wickedly. If we had found the mirage earlier, we would have had to draw a map, which would have been time-consuming and laborious and only a small part of the map. Now that they've all drawn their maps, and none of them are complete, no one can find that piece of stone for the time being. As long as we take them out, we can get a complete map, Rain thought for a moment, or we can take out one third of them, and if we're lucky, I should be able to find that place. Yes, taking out four should do it. It's not that hard, Rain thought more and more happily. Laziness always made people feel happy, but the other crew members weren't as relaxed. The captain had set their target in the King Class C to take out four of the eleven forces, including one emperor and ten kings. This target is really stimulating. Charge King hesitated to express his opinion. Okay, 
Let's take out this so-called terror king first. Rain slammed the table. 183. The true use of fire heaven crystal. After some restocking, the super battleship's status has been fully restored. Although Henry did not reveal the full power of the Terror King, he was familiar with the strengths of several well-known mutants in the Terror King's fleet. Those people were all objects of his admiration. The leader, Charles, had an unknown level of power and various rumors about his mutation type. But it was certain that his mutation type was not lower than that of prehistoric creatures. He had four great demon kings under him, all with a level above stage 6. Under normal circumstances, these four demon kings would each lead a C1-class fleet to patrol the jurisdictional waters. In the king-class waters, the distinction between bounty hunters and pirates seemed unclear. In the early stages of the power struggle, the terror king committed many acts of burning, killing, and looting, but after gaining control of the 3,000 nautical miles, they stopped raiding and instead began to collect tolls. After organizing the information in his hands, Armin held up a sea chart and explained to everyone, Captain, there are five islands or island groups in the Terra Sea. After the sinking of the East Sulphur Islands, we will pass through the remaining four if we sail in a northwesterly direction. Earlier, Rain had checked the drones with the system. It used a rough computer control system. The Terra King's technology had not yet reached the level of sending back real-time images. As for global positioning, that was even more impossible. In the Azure era, there were no global positioning satellites. Destroying the drones meant that the Terror King knew nothing about them. The enemy was in the open, and they were in the dark. I love it when they divide into several fleets. It's the easiest to take them out one by one, Rain said. Let's go to Java Island first, take it slow, and arrive in about a week and a half. This will give the four Demon Kings time to disperse the various islands. When we attack, it won't be easy for them to come to each other's rescue. After arranging the itinerary, the ship headed northwest towards Java Island, 500 nautical miles away. During the journey, Rain noticed that everyone had become more diligent in their training. This time, one of the ten kings of the royal sea will be faced. Even with Avril, a bug-like presence, no one wanted to become a burden to the fleet, and Avril could take care of everyone anyway. Improving one's own strength is key. White and the Tiger King were also fighting each other but Tick wasn't sure how to level up these two guys. He let them play around. Little Black was slowly regaining his strength. This guy ate too much, often devouring all the fish around him. Everyone was working hard to improve their strength. The whole ship was busy, except for Rain. His level had been stuck at stage 3 level 10 for 3 years, and there is nothing left for him to practice. Sitting alone in the captain's room, Rain opened the secret room. This not-so-small room contained only 4 things which Rain would not put normal stuff in here. There were a large number of pearls, including black and gold pearls. There were a total of 50,000 gold pearls and hundreds of thousands of black pearls, divided into two boxes. In addition to the pearls, there was a giant egg and a pile of feathers in another box. Rain looked at the giant egg, lying in the soft feathers, unchanged since he found it. He didn't know whether it could hatch, or what it would turn into if it did. It's been three years, and there's still no movement. I hope it doesn't turn into a preserved egg. I don't know if the temperature here is suitable. Rain shook his head. He knew nothing about this egg, so he adjusted the temperature in the room to 37 to 38 degrees, which is the same as the constant temperature of hatching animals. Anyway, if the Eagle King hatches, it should be at this temperature. Rain set the egg aside and walked to the last box, opening it. Inside was the Fire Heaven Crystal, which looked unremarkable, like an ordinary stone. Rain picked up the stone and became somewhat entranced. Previously, the archaeologist had only mentioned that it was the key to unlocking the ancient world, without revealing any information about the Heaven Crystal's purpose. However, the strange crustal movement in the King Class C area could possibly be attributed to the Earth Heaven Crystal, suggesting that the Heaven Crystal itself possessed potent abilities. Rain frowned, holding the Heaven Crystal. I have a strong suspicion that the stone that appeared in the King Class C was likely the Earth Heaven Crystal. But why is it so powerful, and you so useless? After a moment of contemplation, Rain slapped his forehead. After watching the shocking video, he had been a bit brain dead and had been so busy making money that he had forgotten to scan the object using the system. It wasn't until the topic of the stone was brought up again today that he remembered to come back and take a look. Damn, I'm stupid. System, analyze the item, Rain urgently said. Analyzing item, please wait. To Rain's surprise, the system didn't immediately provide an answer. Five minutes later, the system voice spoke again. 
fire, heaven, crystal, absorbs the essence of the fire element to form a crystalline structure. There are planetary level energy activities within the item. What the hell is planetary level energy activity? What does that mean? Rain was taken aback by the system's rare explanation, perhaps because it knew that Rain was not familiar with this knowledge. Planetary level energy activity can destroy an energy activity of a planet like star. Rain almost spurted out a mouthful of blood when he heard that the stone on his ship was even more powerful than an atomic bomb and could directly destroy the earth. Fuck, I want to throw it away. Heaven crystal status stable. Would you like to activate the heaven crystal ability slightly? Activate your motherfucker. My ship can't handle this thing. I'll never activate it in my lifetime. I don't want to blow up the earth. Host chooses to abandon the activation of the heaven crystal ability. Shut down energy stabilization system research. Shut down energy extraction system research. Block the individual mutation function stimulated by the heaven crystal. Shut down flame shield research. Shut down flame jet weapon research. Shut down nuclear power research. Wait. Wait a minute. Rain widened his eyes. The system only asked if he wanted to activate the heaven crystal ability. But the key was the long string of functions that followed. It sounded really awesome. And there was also an energy stabilization system. With the system's abilities, it might be able to control the energy of the heaven crystal. If that was the case, he didn't seem to have much to fear. You bastard, why can't you say everything at once? Get moving. Conduct all those miscellaneous researches right away. Rain got a slap in the face once again. The energy stabilization system has been completed, and the energy extraction function is reopened. Open the positive stimulation of individual mutation by the heaven crystal and filter out negative effects. Note, at most two units can be selected to enter the affected area at a time, and the maximum stimulation time limit is determined by the individual's constitution and mutation strength. The system will monitor the individual's attributes in real time. There are currently two individuals in the area, which has reached the limit. Open flame jet and nuclear power research. Currently the ship cannot use a dot. Open flame shield research. Completion rate 1% dot. 184. Flame shield. Rain was completely shocked. This meant that the system could now access the energy of the fire heaven crystal. It could positively stimulate mutations in mutants. Does this mean that it can enhance the combat effectiveness of the crew and fundamentally increase the strength limit? By the way, have two people already entered the affected area? He is definitely in the area. So who is the other person? Rain searched around and found only himself, the egg, and a bunch of pearls. Could it be you? Rain stared at the giant egg in surprise. Oh my god, you haven't turned into a salted egg yet. Since the system viewed this egg as a single unit, and the real-time monitoring system had not sounded any alarms. It meant that the egg was still normal. Starting from an egg, it had been undergoing modifications with the fire heaven crystal. Well, Rain suddenly felt extremely excited about what this egg would hatch into in the future. Since the egg can be enhanced, what if I just bring the sea god fruit over? Rain immediately began brainstorming. He wasted no time and quickly returned to the captain's room, took out a sea god fruit from a golden box, and put it in the secret room. Then he left the room. According to the feedback from the system, there were still two units receiving stimulation, and the system had no other prompts, which meant that the sea god fruit could also be modified. Oh my god, this is a big breakthrough. Rain was extremely excited. In addition, the flame shield was currently in the research center with a completion rate of 1%. It was not known when it would be completed. I'm so stupid. If I had started researching three years ago, the flame shield would have been completed a long time ago. Rain regretted so much that he turned green. He had this treasure by his side all along but never realized its potential. By the way, this unexpected gain also made Rain realize the terrifying power of the Heaven Crystal. At first, Rain was just curious and would go look for the five Heaven Crystals if given the opportunity. But now, things were different Rain had developed a strong desire for the Heaven Crystals. Even without opening an ancient world, just strengthening oneself was already very powerful. Hope that the stone that appears in the King Class C area is the Earth Heaven Crystal. In any case, I must get it, Rain said fiercely. Ten days later, the first Sea God fruit had reached its limit after being strengthened. After being modified, the color of the Sea God fruit changed from gray-white to light pink. However, judging from its capacity, it seemed that this Sea God fruit was not very strong, as it could only last for ten days. The research on the flame shield had reached 50% and Rain was now very excited about it. 
Thinking that the flame shield might be useful for her future battles, Rain slowed down the speed of the ship again and planned to study the flame shield before going to Java Island. At the same time, Rain put away the light pink cigar fruit and replaced it with another one in the secret room. Ten days later, the second cigar fruit had reached its limit again and turned into a light pink color, similar to the first one. And there was good news the research on the flame shield was completed. On this day, Rain confirmed the safety of the sea area on the radar and ordered all the crew to return to the cabin. Core members such as Avro gathered with Rain in the captain's room, all looking confused. Captain, is there an enemy? But we didn't see anything on the radar. No, I came to test our new weapon. New weapon? We have a new weapon? Rain smiled mysteriously, you'll see. The captain's room became quiet, and everyone followed Rain's gaze to the outside, waiting for the captain to test the new weapon. Flame shield. Flame shield activated. Shield integrity at 100%. Shield duration remaining 60 seconds. In an instant, a semicircular transparent shield formed around the ship, partially covering the surface of the sea. The reason the transparent shield could be discerned was due to a change in air density near the shield, causing a refractive phenomenon. With the naked eye, one could see the distorted scenery inside and outside of the shield caused by the refraction. Much like the feeling of air distortion in hot temperatures during the summer, the shield had a diameter of 300 meters and completely enveloped the battleship, moving along with the vessel. Oh my god, Captain, what is this? Shobe dropped his cigar on the ground without even picking it up. This is impossible. What? What is going on? My god, the temperature around the shield must be extremely high to cause the air to warp like that, said True King. If a regular projectile hits the shield, will it explode? Asked True King. Rain frowned. I don't know. Let's try and find out. He fired a shot from the lightning anti-aircraft gun directly at the shield. When the projectile hit the shield, with a loud bang, the projectile exploded directly. However, the shield remained intact. Oh my god! Everyone was shocked at the scene, stunned. This is too amazing. If even lightning attacks could be blocked, that meant that they were invincible as long as the flame shield existed. Ding! The flame shield has been attacked. Integrity at 99%, shield duration remaining 54 seconds. Rain was still satisfied with only a 1% loss in shield integrity, as his lightning anti-aircraft gun was very powerful. If it could withstand it, it could probably withstand most attacks in the King-class sea area. Unfortunately, we can't defend the seafloor, we can only intercept with torpedoes. I don't know if the shield can be upgraded in the future, but for now, we shouldn't be too greedy. This shield is free and having something is better than having nothing. The effect of the flame shield surprised everyone, and Rain was also very satisfied. After retracting the shield, Rain placed another sea god fruit in the secret room, and then confidently shouted to everyone, Guys, let's go to Java Island. Fortunately, Java Island did not suddenly sink. It is a medium-sized island in the nearby waters, but because of its important role as a transportation hub, there are many ships docking here. Rain and his companions went directly ashore, purchased some daily necessities and food, and went to the trading market and auction house to take a look. The items in the auction house were numerous, but there was no advanced sea god fruit that Rain needed. The saying priceless is not just a casual remark, sea god fruits are already rare, let alone advanced ones. However, one bear and the other's most important task was to investigate the situation of the Terror King fleet. When they returned in the evening, they brought back the latest intelligence. The Terror King fleet had already split up at this time. Captain Charles led a fleet to personally pursue the fleet that stole the supplies from the eastern Sulphur Islands, and the other four Demon Kings led a fleet to their respective four islands. Patrolling in the nearby waters was the fourth Demon King, Cardi, the Swamp King, a stage 6 level 3 mutant with 93 warships under his command, none of which were below grade E. Captain, it is said that Cardi's mutation comes from the Swamp Monsters but we don't know the specifics, no one knows that. Rain, asked in surprise, one bear nodded affirmatively, we asked many people but no one knew in his jurisdiction, they said that anyone who has seen Cardi's abilities, except for his four strong subordinates, has died, and died miserably, well, Rain couldn't help but inhale sharply, a tough one, 185, straight to war, Rain checked the time and realized that the other three of the four demon kings had probably already left, so it was time to take Cardi out. Five days later, a huge fleet arrived at the port, with a total of more than 90 ships, each of which was over 100 meters in length and completely covered in armor. 
Rain and the others had never seen such a grandiose display before. To put it bluntly, if Rex the Beast King encountered them, he would be reduced to nothing in a matter of minutes. Thousands of crew members disembarked from the ships, and the almost arrogant confidence in their eyes was evident. Get out of the way. A crew member punched a man who was blocking their path from behind, sending him flying more than ten meters away and spewing blood as he lay on the ground, not knowing whether he was alive or dead. Are you tired of living, dare to stand in our way? A woman holding a baby hurriedly went to help the man on the ground. She wanted to help the man up, but he was lying there like a pile of mud. Seeing that the group was already approaching, the consequences would be unimaginable if they continued to block their path. The people around had already fled far away, and the woman was holding the baby and dragging her man towards the entrance to the pier little by little. Can anyone help me, please? I beg you. The baby in the woman's arms continued to cry, and she couldn't let go of the baby or drag the man. The crew on the opposite side had a faint sneer on their faces, and they quickened their pace. As long as they reached the woman, they could have some fun if she hadn't dragged her man away yet. After running at sea for half a year, they now found even so's to be attractive. The crew had punched the woman's husband after seeing him embrace his family earlier, and noticed that the woman was quite pretty. Now they weren't in a hurry. Will she throw the man away or drop the baby in her hands? This choice was truly something to look forward to. The woman was so anxious and tearful that she was sweating profusely, but no one dared to lend her a helping hand at this moment. Even those who were in the same boat as her husband just looked at her struggling with blank expressions. Here, no one dares to offend these people. No, even in the entire King Class C, almost no one dares to offend them. Just when the woman felt almost hopeless, suddenly three people appeared in front of her. An eleven or twelve-year-old boy, a tall man wearing a black cloak, and a woman in her twenties. The man in the cloak lifted the man from the ground and brought the woman to a spacious place at the entrance of the port. The woman then checked the man's injuries and pressed her palm on his chest. After a moment, the woman's husband coughed a few times and woke up. The woman held her child and knelt on the ground, excited and incoherent, benefactor, great benefactor, thank you so much for saving my husband. I don't know how to repay you. These three people are Rain, True King, and Avril. Rain helped the woman up, looked at the child in her arms, teased the child, and smiled, it's just a small matter. Come on, little guy, call me cool man. This action by the three people instantly caused a stir around them. This is clearly not giving respect to the Swamp King. Does that guy not want to live anymore? The Swamp King's men obviously want that woman. These guys who suddenly intervened would be retaliated. They must be newcomers. Hey, they're done for. They're newcomers, no wonder. Don't they know that the entire island belongs to Lord Cardi? So being people absolutely cannot be so nosy. The woman heard the discussions around her and suddenly woke up from her dream. She quickly urged the three people, benefactors, hurry, leave Java Island quickly. You can't afford to provoke them. Rain, however, was unbothered and continued to play with the little one. The child grabbed Rain's fingers and giggled. Good sir, please leave now. The woman opened Rain's hand and tried to push them onto the boat. They are all vengeful people and will destroy your ship. Rain smiled faintly at the woman. Don't worry, they won't have this opportunity. With that, Rain took True King and Avril and headed toward their own boat. Halfway there, they met the formidable army of the Swamp King. Kid, do you like to meddle in other people's affairs? As expected, the other side was full of hostility. How dare you get involved with the Swamp King? Do you want to die? With that, the dozen or so people in the lead all reached for their waist knives. In the Beast Class C area, all ships were forbidden to engage in combat on the islands. The same rule applied to Java Island, with one exception the Swamp King. They were the rulers here, and they made the rules. Rain coldly snorted at the actions of these sailors and continued walking towards his ship with Avril, looking for death. The sailors on the opposite side attacked directly, and many others were waiting to watch the excitement. At that moment, True King also moved. Under his cloak, he had already completed his transformation early on. In almost an instant, his titanium alloy short knife had slit the throats of more than twenty people. This scene was too sudden and shocking, and all the onlookers, whether they were the sailors parked here or the Swamp King's sailors, were stunned. In Java Island, the people who dared to kill the crew of Swamp King, and in such large numbers, no one would believe it. My God! Am I seeing things? They killed the Swamp King's men? Am I dreaming? In Java Island, even people who dare to fight back don't exist, they just killed people directly. This can't be true. Rain and Avril had already boarded the ship 
and he stood on deck and said calmly to True King, True King, the ship is leaving, come aboard. True King's figure was agile, and he quickly ran and jumped more than twenty meters, landing firmly on the deck. Of course, the most important thing was that these were just ordinary sailors, and their strength was not the strongest. Perhaps there were some experts in the crowd who were much stronger than them. The truly strong ones were not these sailors, but the Swamp King himself and his captains and elite sailors. At this point, the Swamp King's men finally reacted. Some quickly reported to their captains, while others shouted to charge onto Rain's ship. When Rain's ship was about 50 meters away from the port, all the cannon positions on the ship had turned towards the thousands of sailors in the port. Everyone was stunned when they saw this. What did this mean? Not only did they kill the Swamp King's sailors, but now they were going to war directly. Are they crazy? Boom 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 boom. Clack 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 clack. Lightning cannons and lightning machine guns emitted terrifying flames. 186. Chasing War. The super battleship unleashed its firepower directly against the thousands of Swamp King crew members and their vessels. Under the fierce onslaught of the battleship's firepower, the long pier was instantly reduced to debris and cement flying everywhere. It was fortunate that the Swamp King's crew members were used to bullying others, and their appearance made all the other fishermen retreat, allowing Rain to pour out his firepower so easily. The Swamp King's crew members were frantically fleeing around, but how could they withstand the strafing of the ship's gun? The scene was instantly filled with flying flesh and blood, and within moments, the devastated pier was a ghastly sight of mountains of corpses and rivers of blood. All the onlookers on the shore were petrified. Goodness gracious! Many people looked at the flag on the super battleship, where the silhouette of a man was swaying in the wind. The letters dad made people think of another almost homophonic word, dead, death. On the other side, the Swamp King's rear crew members were fleeing like mad toward their own vessels. But the battleship's guns made them quickly realize what despair meant. Under one round of attacks from the opponent, at least 30 of the 93 vessels were hit. The carpet-style bombing was precise, with no wasted ammunition and a large number of vessels had already burst into flames and raging fires. Damn it! Who's firing? In the crowd, a tall man shouted angrily, Who the hell dares to attack me on my turf? All the ships that can still move, follow me. At all costs, blow them to smithereens. The man's face was twisted in a fierce expression of rage, and all the surviving crew members quickly boarded the less seriously damaged vessels, revved up their engines, and rushed out of the harbor. Rain looked calmly at the enemy vessels sailing out of the harbor, and his ship's guns had already adjusted their direction. He took a sip of coffee nonchalantly. The second round of firing had begun. Boom, boom, boom. After a violent burst of cannon fire, despite the opponent's attempts to disperse, Rain's shells still hit their targets with devastating accuracy, striking dozens of enemy vessels once again. There were only 40 vessels left that could still move on the other side. At the same time, the enemy also opened fire. From all directions, a large number of shells rained down on the super battleship. Rain lowered his head and took a sip of coffee. Flame shield. Around the battleship, an invisible half-circular shield quickly formed. The shield is under attack with 67.5% integrity remaining and a duration of 60 seconds. Their projectiles are not as powerful as lightning cannons. 70 to 80 in total projectiles hit the shield with each one causing only 0.3% to 0.5% damage. It seems I can withstand two more attacks. Within these two attacks, rain must sink all enemy ships. At this point, all ships have sailed out to sea, and the water depth is deep enough. The system radar showed that the enemy has already launched 18 torpedoes. Only 18? Rain shook his head. My babies, it's your turn. Intercept the 18 torpedoes and attack enemy torpedo boats. Under the sea, an invisible battle is raging. In no time, 18 water columns burst out of the sea, soaring into the sky. Rain had intercepted all enemy torpedoes and triggered explosions at the seabed. Shortly after, all three enemy torpedo boats began to shake violently and were hit by the torpedo rain fired. The torpedo boats were loaded with many torpedoes, and the explosion quickly caused the chain reaction. The three torpedo boats were suddenly hit by violent explosions from within. What the hell? What's going on? All enemy ship captains were shocked when they saw this scene. Clearly, they had launched the torpedoes, so why were the enemy unscathed, and their own torpedo boats turned into rubble? Gunfire raged on the sea, but unfortunately, the Swamp King's projectiles cannot penetrate the flame shield. After sinking the torpedo boats, 
rain began to launch a large number of torpedoes. Originally, more than 40 ships of the Swamp King were pursuing rain in front of them, but as they walked, they suddenly realized that their underlings were getting fewer and fewer. After just a moment, they were left with only a dozen or so ships. It's like life, some people just disappear. What kind of ships are they? Damn it! Special forces, charge! All drones, launch! The man on the main ship roared. The special forces of the Swamp King were different from the small and shabby ships in the Beast Class C area. They were almost not equipped with weapons but were heavily armored and very fast. Their goal was not to engage the enemy in combat, but to collide with them. Five heavily armored and slender warships quickly accelerated, aided by twenty drones, and charged toward Rain. Captain? Charge King saw that Rain was still drinking coffee and quickly reminded him, those ships have strong defenses. Rain nodded, closed the flame shield. Load piercing rounds. Yes. Charge King immediately went to change the ammunition with his team. Shobe, True King, you're in charge of the drones. Yes, Captain. Shobe and True King went to operate the lightning machine guns, while the automatic two machine guns had already begun aiming. The flame shield had been removed, and the machine guns on the battleship quickly entered firing mode. The twenty drones were unable to get close and fell one after another. At the same time, the cannons on the ship also started firing with more than 10 cannons firing at the same time, along with the torpedoes. The heavily armored special forces warship at the front was instantly blasted to pieces. What the fuck? On the enemy ship, a group of people was stunned. Those warships that had strengthened defenses couldn't withstand the firepower for even a second. The five warships were all scrapped in less than a minute. The large ships following the Swamp King were also silenced one by one under the heavy torpedo and cannon attacks. The battle continued at high speed for 20 minutes. Now, the Swamp King fleet that had initially chased after Rain was left with only one C-class main ship. Rain had already used up all his torpedoes. He ordered the general crew to enter the cabin, and he himself entered the captain's cabin. These two ships had entered the final stage of the fight. After a series of intense bombardments, the super battleship used a precise barrage of machine gun fire to intercept the enemy's main artillery attack and its hull was only hit by thousands of machine gun bullets. For the super battleship, which was constructed entirely of metal, this kind of injury was not significant harm at all. But for the Swamp King, all of its gun positions were destroyed, and there had already been no firepower output on the ship. What kind of ship is this? On the main ship, the Swamp King Frank was furious. They had been fighting for so long, and they had not had any effective attacks, and he had already lost all of his ships. Damn it, damn it, damn it. I'll kill them, kill them. If Charles found out that his fleet had been sunk, he would definitely not let it go. The only chance to turn the tide now was to board that ship, kill everyone on board, and take the ship. Frank was still confident when it came to fighting. As one of the four demon kings of the Terra King, how could it be just an empty name? In the entire King Class C area, there were only a few people stronger than him. Adam, take us aboard, Frank said to a man behind him. I'm going to tear them apart. With that, Frank led twenty sailors and jumped into the sea together. One of them, the man named Adam, had an extremely bulging body, and under his leadership, the twenty-one of them shot towards the super battleship. 187. Material Mutation, Frank's Ability. Rain had already seen these people on the radar system, but he didn't stop them and let them approach. He had questions to ask them. Black it, let them come over, Rain shouted towards the sea. The huge black figure under the sea gradually sank into the depths, continuing to search for those corpses. Soon, Frank and his team boarded the ship without encountering any obstacles, and even boarding was unusually smooth. Upon reaching the ship, Frank found that dozens of people were waiting for them on the opposite side, which made him suddenly feel a little uncomfortable. Here you come, Rain sat in his chair, greeting the enemy. Frank felt frustrated. He originally thought that these people would be on high alert when they saw him, but instead they were sitting there leisurely drinking tea. You're the captain. Frank was shocked to find out that the captain of this terror battleship was actually an 11 or 12 year old child. Yes, that's me. Rain handed the coffee to Armin, stood up, stretched his wrists and neck, and then said to Frank lightly, let's not waste any more time and get started. Shobe, True King, Charge King, Arson, and others all stepped forward. Frank snorted coldly. This was the moment he had been waiting for. Kill them all, leave no one alive. The elite crew members of the Swamp King fleet rushed forward. The battle was about to begin, and three out of Frank's four subordinates directly transformed, their bodies suddenly swelling, 
muscles bulging, and partial dinosaur features already showing. Transformation, Torvosaurus King, Carcharodontosaurus King Transformation, Tarbosaurus King Transformation. The remaining short and sturdy man had not transformed yet, and he should be an underwater mutant. He was waiting for the opportunity to strike, and he would follow up on the killing after his teammates pushed the person into the sea. All four of Frank's crew members under Frank were prehistoric biological mutations. They are more thoroughly mutated and more powerful than Rex. Perhaps in the King Level C area, they could still make a name for themselves at least at this level. Of course, Rain's team was not weak either. Charge King and Arson mutated in the water, while the other three each found an opponent. The two sides' armies collided fiercely on the deck's open space. Although the crew members were of a high level on Frank's side, Rain's team had Avril, the bug-like woman. The Tiger King protected Avril by ensuring that she could use her skills without worry. On the other side, Rain was staring at Frank. White, I'll try him first. Don't be too eager to act, Rain said to White. Although he had White, Rain knew that practical combat training was also essential, especially against strong rivals. He couldn't rely on White for everything. Rain spoke, and White could only lie bored on the ground. If his master were in danger, he would act then. Frank snorted coldly, little bastard, are you trying to play tricks on me? Do you think I'll believe you? What use is that dog? And you, you can't be my rival. How do you know if you don't try? Rain said and quickly launched his tiger's fong. His figure disappeared, and he was already killing Frank. Frank's eyes were full of disdain. Your battleship is strong, but in terms of combat, you can't match me. Second transformation, swamp. As soon as Frank transformed, Rain was momentarily stunned, but this didn't stop him from cutting Frank's waist with his knife. However, when the sharp dagger passed through Frank's waist, Rain felt no resistance, and the knife passed through Frank's body. When he turned around, he was shocked to see that Frank's waist was split open, almost cut off, but strangely, no blood flowed from his body. The cut area of his waist quickly healed, like a puddle of mud. What the hell? He's not a biological mutation. All along, Rain had contact with mutants, and 99% of them were biological mutations. These mutants might have all sorts of strange abilities due to their mutations, but he was well aware that mutants were not just limited to biological mutations in this era. There is Avril who belongs to the auxiliary type, Shobe who belongs to the material type, and the mutated black corpse. Although their proportion is very small, they do exist. It looked like he had encountered another one now. The Swamp King, Frank, could actually transform into a swamp form. Although this thing is not as invincible as Shob's smoke, it is still very tricky and even harder to deal with than the black corpse. Frank saw Rain's shocked expression and confidently laughed. How about it, kid, feeling hopeless? Your physical attacks are completely ineffective against me. You can only wait to be slowly played to death by me. With that, Frank suddenly swung his fist, and his arms stretched to a creepy length of over two meters with a large fist. Rain's eyesight was amazing and he could see that the surface of this regular sandbag-sized fist had solidified to be as hard as a rock. Rain quickly rolled on the ground and tried to cut off Frank's arm while dodging the fist. Although his dagger cut Frank, his arm quickly recovered. Rain had just stood up when he suddenly felt his feet stuck. When he rolled away earlier to avoid the fist, he unknowingly fell into a swamp. More accurately, the before he and Frank's area had already become a large swamp. The more he struggled after falling into the swamp, the deeper he sank, but it did not mean that he would be okay if he did not struggle. Rain now was slowly sinking. Frank stood in front of Rain, with half of his body submerged in the swamp, but he could move freely in the swamp in some unknown way. He had merged with the swamp. He he, I told you, you are not my rival. I will slowly play you to death. Kid, remember, the king of the king class sea area cannot be shaken by just any ship. Are you strange that I can create a swamp on your ship? Frank looked at Rain's eyes as if he were looking at prey waiting to be slaughtered. Ha ha ha, even if the king of the tyrannosaurs falls into my swamp, he will undoubtedly die. You mutant creatures of the biological type are just useless in front of me. Only material type mutations can become true kings. Do you know what people look like when they drown in a swamp? Their skin will swell like rubber, their bodies will become huge. And when I shit them out, they will look like a pile of mud. Ha ha ha, a pile of mud. In the end you will become a part of me. Isn't that interesting? Frank's expression had begun to become insane, and he enjoyed this feeling. Rain was still sinking deeper and deeper, not knowing how deep the swamp under his feet was. Rain stared at Frank fiercely. Material-type mutations were indeed very powerful, 
like Shob. Even Rex, who was much stronger than him, couldn't handle him when he was in his smoky state. However, Shob's level was too low, and he could only vaporize five times. But this Frank could maintain this state indefinitely, showing that there was a qualitative difference between above and below level 5. The situation was very tricky, and currently, even White couldn't find a way to defeat him. However, Rain firmly believed that Frank couldn't be without weakness. What was the weakness of a marsh? Rain quickly thought of a possibility, and then made a shocking decision. System, break down the ship. 188, chance is coming. System, decompose all the ships in the area where Frank and I are located. Fancy, tell the others not to follow. They must stabilize the battlefield. As soon as Rain finished speaking, the support under him suddenly disappeared. They first fell to the deck of the cabin, then to the next deck, then to the hull, and then, both fell into the water. The swamp was a combination of mud, decayed matter, and water. However, if it was diluted with a large amount of water, its adsorption capacity will be greatly reduced. And if the entire sea was used to dilute it, the swamp will no longer exist. Coincidentally, rain was a marine creature mutation. Frank still hadn't figured out what was going on. The seawater around him had diluted the mud, and he was shocked to see rain breaking free from the mud. This is unbelievable. What the hell is going on? This guy, what kind of mutation is he? His physical attributes have obviously increased significantly. Material mutations cannot have such a large increase. He must be a biological mutation. But how did he do that? The crew members who were fighting around were also confused. A big hole suddenly appeared on the ship. Although it did not cause the ship to sink directly, it was too incredible. Captain, True King and others shouted angrily, repelled the opponents, and rushed towards the deep pit. But their opponents were not easy to deal with. They instantly flashed in front of True King and blocked his way. Your rival is me. Although Fancy was also worried about rain, at this time, she had to implement the captain's orders and shouted to True King, Brother, the captain told you not to follow. The seawater washed Frank's body, and some clay began to fall off him. He quickly changed his form. Transforming into a swamp in the sea is simply asking for death. After reverting to his human form, Frank ran wildly towards the ship. Rain would not give him another chance this time. He increased his speed and shot toward Frank like an arrow, quickly dragging him down to the bottom of the sea. Woo 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 Frank didn't dare to transform and was dragged down by Rain, unable to escape no matter how he struggled. Finally, two minutes later, Frank's eyes rolled back, and the breath he was holding in his mouth turned into bubbles and was exhaled. Frank had fainted. Rain looked at Frank and coldly smiled, taking him up to the surface. The battle on the ship was intense. White was staring at the big hole, anxiously circling around. Rain hadn't let it take action all this time, almost driving it crazy. And now, both of them had fallen into the water. White barked continuously towards the deep pit, when suddenly Rain's voice came from behind the ship. Don't bark anymore, White. Go help them. Rain climbed onto the super battleship and threw Frank, whose belly had swollen like a balloon, onto the deck. It can end now. Seeing its master return safely, White happily wagged its tail and went to greet Rain, rubbing its head against him. Rain laughed and patted White. I know you're worried about me, but I can't rely on you for everything. After all, that guy's basic attributes are relatively low. As long as we think of a way to deal with him, the danger isn't too great. Okay, go help the others quickly. They're having a hard time fighting. White obediently nodded its head, turned its head, and stared fiercely at the crowd. Suddenly it turned into a red and white lightning bolt and rushed into the crowd. Tiger King you go too. I'll protect Avril. The Tiger King couldn't bear it any longer. After receiving Rain's command, it let out a roar and pounced toward the enemy crew. Rain walked up to Avril. Avril looked a bit tired, and when she saw Rain, she finally breathed a sigh of relief. Captain, you scared me just now. Yes, Captain. What were you doing just now? Fancy also grabbed Rain. You're the Captain. How can you do such a dangerous thing? Rain smiled slightly. Don't worry, I'm very afraid of death, and Blackie is still underwater, so we won't die. In fact, with Frank's abilities, except for Shobe's ability, which can compete with him, it's difficult for the rest of Rain's subordinates to deal with him. And since Shobe's level was not high enough, Rain must personally take care of Frank. Anyway, the captain has taken care of Frank, and Avril and Fancy both breathe a sigh of relief. On the battlefield, with the addition of White and the Tiger King, coupled with the fact that the crew of the Swamp King fleet saw Frank fall, they could no longer match them either in strength or fighting spirit. 
Soon, the situation turned into a one-sided trend. Ten minutes later, the battle on the deck and in the sea ended one after another. Seven or eight elite crew members of the Swamp King were critically injured, and their life and death were unknown. The others chose to surrender. After this battle, Rain roughly judged the strength of White and the Tiger King. Without Avril's attribute enhancement, White's strength can only handle two low-level stage 6 mutants at most, while the Tiger King can easily handle one stage 6 mutant, but not two. Rain had more than 20 injured crew members, and Avril immediately had the non-combatant crew members take them down to the crew compartment for simple treatment, and they would be healed later. The prisoners were tied up with iron chains, kneeling in front of Rain and his people. Rain looked coldly at these people and said coldly, I heard you were born as pirates, so according to the old rules, no one on will be spared. Those dozen or so crew members turned pale when they heard this. Spare us, your highness, spare us. The prisoners begged urgently. Rain frowned slightly, spare you? Sorry, you have no value to me. Your highness, do you want to know something? We know everything. We will tell you everything. Rain frowned slightly. Where did Charles put the map of the mysterious stone? Immediately, someone rushed to answer, your highness. The captain put the map on the terror battleship, which is his flagship. Rain nodded. Now, tell me about the other Terror King fleets. Whoever can provide useful information, I will spare their lives. I'll talk, I'll talk. I helped out in two other fleets before, so I know the most. I'll talk. I've been in the captain's fleet, so I know the most. Rain left the task of collecting information to Armin and the others. These people could provide more or less useful information, and no one would dare to lie by splitting up the investigation. Now, the most important thing was to salvage the materials to repair the hull, and of course, their usual practice of salvaging treasure chests. Looking at the big holes in the ship, Rain shook his head slightly. This time, he was a bit careless. If White had not killed Black Corpse with one blow during their last encounter, Rain wouldn't have taken it seriously enough. This time, Frank's strength made Rain truly understand the truth. In the Azure Era, there were still many mutant directions that he couldn't imagine before. The four great demons under the King of Terror were all extremely strange mutants. Although he managed to defeat Frank, he wouldn't be able to win so easily against other opponents. Frank was said to be the weakest among the four great demons. The other three were stronger, especially Charles, who could make the four great demons bow down to him. His strength was definitely even more powerful. Oh my god, why is my luck so bad? It's been three years, can I at least get a rare sea god fruit? It would be even better if it's something material. Rain looked extremely disappointed. I want to evolve. I want to become stronger. Tick happened to be free and heard Rain's sigh of despair. He walked over and patted Rain's shoulder. Captain, I have good news. Some guy told me that there's a rare sea god fruit hidden on Java Island. It was left behind by Frank. Oh? Rain looked at Tick in shock. Could this be the opportunity he was waiting for? 189. Strength and Shobe. Rain segregated the prisoners according to their land or water mutations, confining those with land-type mutations in water barrels, and those with water-type mutations on the ship, assigning guards to watch over them. As for Frank, Rain had a large water tank specially made to keep him inside. When Frank woke up, he saw Rain and his crew counting their loot. There were 34 treasure chests from this battle, and some of the ships were completely destroyed, so a few treasures were inevitably missed. Captain, we get a total of 170,000 gold pearls, reported Avril. Armin followed up with her own report. There are also 31 intermediate level skill books, 27 intermediate treasure maps, and a pearl bank deposit certificate with 500,000 gold pearls. Hmm? There's a bank deposit too? Rain was quite surprised. But upon further thought, they weren't a pirate crew after all. They controlled an entire island, so having a deposit was normal. However, it was regrettable that there were no advanced skill books or treasure maps. After spending so much time in the Beast Class Sea area, Rain's bounty team had killed hundreds of fleets, yet they couldn't find a single advanced skill book. The advanced treasure map was only pieced together from the spoils of a few fleets, showing how rare these two items were. Of course, the income of 670,000 gold pearls already made Rain very satisfied. Frank watched with a heavy heart as this was his years of savings now suddenly in someone else's hands. After sorting out the loot, Rain returned to his captain's quarters. The sea god fruit that he had kept in his secret compartment had already reached its transformation limit after 12 days, it seemed this fruit wasn't that great, so Rain took it out. The mysterious bird egg remained motionless, but Rain didn't want to disturb it. 
As long as the system didn't raise any alarms, he would let the Fire Heaven Crystal continue to stimulate the mutation. With one more enhancement slot available, Rain thought for a moment and decided to call in several core crew members. A group of people looked at Rain with confusion on their faces, as the captain paced back and forth with a heavy heart. Captain, why did you call us here? asked Fancy, looking puzzled. Now seventeen or eighteen years old, Fancy's outstanding appearance made even her questioning expression cute. Rain looked at Fancy and shook his head. Her attributes were still unknown, so he didn't want to stimulate her for now. They had already taken down the Swamp King and were likely to encounter other fleets soon. Rain didn't have much time, so who was most likely to improve their strength the most in a short period? Finally, Rain's gaze fell on the tall man smoking a cigar. Shob, this slot is for you, he said decisively. Huh, what slot? Shob looked puzzled, as did everyone else. I want to enhance your mutation ability, Rain said. As soon as he spoke, everyone's confusion turned into extreme shock. Enhance mutation ability? Captain, that's impossible. Yeah, I've only heard that leveling up can make you stronger. How can you directly enhance mutation ability? Captain, you're not joking, are you? Rain smiled faintly. When have I ever lied to you about these things? The captain was not always reliable, but he had never had a problem with crucial issues, which everyone had to admit. Rain's smile faded, and he turned to Shob seriously. Shob, I also want to hear your opinion. I'm not quite sure what kind of effects mutation enhancement will produce. Shob didn't know how to answer. Captain, how exactly do you plan to enhance my mutant abilities? The heaven crystal we obtained in the beast class waters can stimulate human bodies to mutate again after research, Rain explained. Everyone present was stunned. Stimulate the human body to mutate again? Rain nodded. That's right. I didn't say it correctly. It's not a second mutation but a deeper mutation. Ah, uh, I can't explain it clearly. After all, we haven't tested it yet, and I don't know the effects. Everyone looked confused. But, I can guarantee that it will be a beneficial change. Rain immediately dispelled everyone's concerns. And I can ensure your safety. Shob thought for a moment and said, Captain, I trust you. I'm willing to go first and let everyone see the effects. Well, Shob, try to relax and adjust your body to the best state possible. The longer you can endure, the greater the benefits will be for you, Rain advised. The reason why Rain chose Shob was that he had participated in the slave arena and won 89 consecutive battles. Not to mention Shob's strength. His mental toughness was definitely strong enough, and he knew how to adjust his own state. There's no time to waste now. You enter the secret room, and I'll send food and water to you every day. Don't come out during this time. Oh, Captain, can I bring some cigars in with me? Sure. Under everyone's close attention, Shob and Rain entered the secret room. Captain, how long do I have to stay here? Shob asked. It depends on how long you can last. Last time I put a cigar fruit in here and the longest one lasted 12 days. Just remember, the longer you can last, the stronger you will become. Okay, I'll do my best, but do I just sit here and do nothing? Shob had a point. It would be really boring to stay here for more than 10 days. After some thought, Rain gave a set of 48 styles of love, deluxe edition. Take this, but don't tell anyone it's from me, Rain whispered. Wow, it's the deluxe edition. I've always wanted a set. Shob's eyes widened. Don't crumple it. Rain warned. Okay, okay. After arranging everything for Shob, Rain came out of the secret room and saw a group of people staring at him. He immediately put on a natural expression and said, What are you looking at? You'll see the effect when Shob comes out. Go back to what you were doing. Oh. Captain, where do we go now? Someone asked. Of course, we're going to Java Island to get all the rare sea god fruits and pearls. Oh, right. There are still many sunken ships over there and the treasure chests haven't been salvaged yet. Rain would never forget this kind of thing. The ship sailed to Java Island and arrived at its destination the next day. When the super battleship stopped on the island, the surrounding crew members all put down what they were doing. That ship, isn't that the one that fired at us last time? How did they come back? They came back alive? That's impossible. Is it an illusion? What about the Swamp King fleet? Wait, look at the people tied up on their ship. Oh my god, it's... It's Cedis. Rain didn't know who Cedis was. Perhaps he was one of his captives. Avril, take Arson, White, come with me. Charge King, one bear to bear. Take forty people to salvage the treasure chest. True King, True Queen, Armin, Windbell, stay here. Go. Yes, Captain. Ignoring the almost bulging eyes of the others, 
Rain calmly arranged the tasks, and everyone immediately went their separate ways. 190. Showed the explosive flame. The islands in the King Class C were basically private base islands for the major forces, and there were few public islands. Therefore, these islands were different from islands like Bankra Island. The troops on the islands were not independent departments but belonged to the fleet where the island was located. At this time, there were very few troops on Java Island, especially after rain attacked and annihilated the Swamp King. The island was almost in a state of anarchy. Fortunately, the Swamp King's management was extremely strict, so the island still maintained temporary order. Ahead was the governor's mansion of Java Island, but the owner of the mansion was currently locked in the big water tank on Rain's ship. Stop, who goes there? Two guards at the door tried to stop Rain but were easily dealt with by arson. Rain and his team swaggered into the governor's mansion. There were not many soldiers in the mansion, but there were quite a few servants. Rain grabbed a maid at random and asked for the location of the governor's room, then led his team in for a quick search. Meanwhile, Rain activated the system to assist in the search. Ding, see God fruit found 30 meters southwest at 183 degrees. Rain smiled slightly. This system was really useful at times. The location indicated by the system was behind a wall, and without hesitation, Rain punched through the wall. Sure enough, a secret room was revealed inside. In the secret room, there was a sophisticated looking safe. Well, I quite like this box. Let's take it with us. So, the safe containing important items was also taken away by Rain. With the Sea God fruit in hand, Rain rushed to the Pearl Bank on Java Island and slammed the deposit book with 500,000 on the table. The boss, upon seeing the deposit book, turned pale with fear and asked, T this deposit book is yours? It wasn't before, but it is now, Rain said calmly. The boss was a shrewd man. Upon hearing this, combined with the rumors that a fleet had apparently taken down the Swamp King's fleet, he quickly changed his attitude and put on a smiling face. Please wait a moment, I'll take them for you. Soon, more than twenty employees brought out four or five large boxes. As soon as the boxes were opened, the room was bathed in a golden light that was so blinding that no one could keep their eyes open. My goodness, it's so shiny. Arson's eyes were filled with golden pearls that glittered brilliantly. The golden pearls were truly something else. They were in a completely different class from white pearls and black pearls just in terms of their looks. Although Rain's eyes were also full of golden brilliance, he forced himself to remain calm. After all, a captain should behave like a captain. Help me deliver them to the ship. Yes, yes, this is completely fine. The boss bowed repeatedly. As they were leaving, Rain suddenly stopped and looked back at the boss. After thinking for a moment, he said, You guys are the ones who often hold fishing competitions in the uninhabited area, right? Well, yes, the boss replied awkwardly. But those are just small-scale activities organized by the local division in the human-class waters. It didn't make much money. Rain nodded. You can run a pearl business in the king-class waters, so your strength must not be weak. The boss laughed awkwardly. Ha ha. Well, our business has always valued harmony. We believe that harmony brings wealth. If others don't provoke us, we won't interfere with them. It seemed that this boss was very afraid of attracting Rain's attention. His words sounded humble, but there was also a hint of threat. We'll follow the rules and won't interfere with others' business. But if you mess with us, our business is not to be trifled with. Rain looked at the boss, who had been smiling all this time but he knew that this guy was not as harmless as he appeared on the surface. Rain didn't say much and led Avril and the crew to the dock, followed by the employees of the Pearl Bank. The boss of the Pearl Bank walked Rain to the door and kept smiling until Rain and his crew had walked far away. Then his smile disappeared. He turned to one of his employees and said, Investigate their background. Yes, sir. After returning to the ship, the Pearl Bank employees left after delivering the pearls. Meanwhile, Charge King and One Bear, Two bear were searching for treasure chests around the sunken ships in the shallow waters. Despite the fleet and the locals being aware of the Swamp King's sunken ship, they were too afraid to fish it. This made it easy for Charge King and his crew to get the treasure chests, and they had already found 47 of them in half a day, with only 3 or 4 left. Rain decided to give up on the remaining chests and set sail for the next destination, Misty Island. The ship sailed smoothly on the sea while the prisoners were exposed to the sun and wind on the deck. The other crew members were training in the warehouse, while a few core crew members gathered with Rain in the captain's room. They were all looking at the orange sea god fruit. One of them asked, Captain, do you eat it now? Rain shook his head and said, I plan to enhance it with the fire heaven crystal before eating it. Let's wait for Shobe to come out. 
Someone asked about Shob's situation, and Rain checked and found that Shob's data was still being strengthened. He decided to slow down the ship and take his time exploring. The Terror King might become agitated after learning about the loss of Java Island, but he might not be able to guess their current location. It had been 20 days since Shob entered the secret room, which was beyond Rain's expectations. The fact that the system had not raised an alarm yet meant that Shob still had untapped potential. Ten days later, on Shob's 30th day in the sealed room, the system finally issued a warning. Ding! A human crew member named Shob in the enhanced area has reached the tolerance limit for mutation stimulation. Please transfer the crew member immediately. Rain quickly jumped down from the rooftop balcony and rushed into the sealed room. By this time, Shob was already lying naked on the ground, with six volumes of 48 styles of love, deluxe edition, scattered around him. Oh my god, Shob, are you dead? exclaimed Rain. However, Rain suddenly realized that his own 48 styles of love, deluxe edition, had serious burn marks, and most of the pages had turned to ash. The cigars that hadn't been smoked were also burned to ash. The temperature in the sealed room was much higher than usual, at least 50 degrees. Damn it, my book! Rain didn't have time to worry about his cherished collection and patted Shob. Shob woke up groggily and looked at Rain weakly. Captain, I want water. Rain quickly went to fetch a glass of water, which Shob snatched and drank in one gulp. How are you feeling? Rain asked, concerned. Another. Shob replied. Rain was speechless. So he just went and poured four or five glasses and brought them back together. Shob drank them all and finally seemed to be feeling a little better. Captain, the stimulation was too strong. Not only did my mutation ability become stronger, but my level also increased. Ah? Did your level increase too? Yes, my level has increased by a whole ten levels. I am now at stage five level eight. Wow. What are your abilities now? Shob smiled mysteriously. Hee hee, Captain, do you want to witness it? Sure, if you have the strength, demonstrating it would be the best. With a bang, a sudden burst of flames erupted in front of Rain, and then his clothes caught fire. Damn it, my clothes! I bought them with a lot of pearls. Shob transformed back to his true form, clenched his fist, and his eyes were full of confidence as he said, From now on, I am no longer Shob the Smoke, but the Explosive Flame. 191. New Mutation. What? Shob, you're now at stage 5 level 8? exclaimed Charge King, and your smoke now has fire attributes. It turned out that Shob's ability did not turn into the fire that Rain thought, but rather his vaporization had certain fire attributes, allowing it to burn and cause an explosive range, in simple terms, igniting the smoke particles to cause an explosion. This enhancement was definitely several times stronger than his previous pure vaporization. As Shob put on his pants on the ship, he smiled smugly, not bad. After all, I'm a man who has persisted for 30 days. This progress is really insignificant. After Shob put on his pants, the ladies were finally able to come in. Shob, you've gone up 10 levels in 30 days? Not bad, just a little progress, Shob boasted. I'm so jealous. You are almost at stage 6. One bear looked regretful. He should have been the volunteer earlier. The key is that his ability has also been enhanced. Shob's vaporization used to be just a kind of body technique but now it has considerable terrifying attack power. By the way, Shob, do you still have a limit on the number of times you can use vaporization? Putting on his shirt and lighting a cigar, Shob's confident smile became even more apparent. Once I cross stage 5, there will be a qualitative change, so I no longer have a limit on the number of times use it. I am now a blazing smoke. Wow, that's too strong. These captains are no match for you now. Shob has become the top combat power on the entire ship. Where is the captain? Captain, I want to strengthen myself. As soon as this sentence was uttered, it stirred up a commotion. Everyone suddenly woke up from their daze. Rain was also in the room, changing his clothes. Shob burned his clothes and they were all ruined, but he didn't have an attractive figure, so no one paid attention to him. At this moment, suddenly a group of people rushed over, some holding arms, some holding legs, and even True King, who was usually quiet grabbed onto Rain's leg and refused to let go. Let me go first. Let me go first. What's wrong with you guys? Don't you know respect elders? I'm old. Let me go first. Let me go. It took me ten years to advance two levels. Avril held onto Rain's stomach tightly. Rain was almost torn to pieces by these teammates. Stop stop stop. Who the fuck pulled my pants? They're falling off. Rain shouted, Shob, burn them for me. The group of people immediately behaved themselves. 
Now that Shob was too strong, if he took action, no one could match him. Only then did Rain have the chance to put on his clothes, pull up his pants that were falling off his butt, and stare at this group of crazy teammates. As a captain, his pants were almost pulled off. How could he maintain his dignity later? You guys always act like this, rushing to everything good. It's fine to do this in the captain's room, but if you are seen outside, it's a disgrace to me the captain. Especially you, Avril, Arson, Fancy, True Queen, and Windbell. Don't you know there's a difference between men and women? Someone even bit me secretly earlier. What's wrong with you? And you, Armin, why would a quiet girl like you learn from them? Avril and the other women lowered their heads, not daring to speak. And you, True King, I thought you are a steady man, but you almost broke my leg. One bear, two bear, do you really not know how much strength you have? Next time someone does this, they'll have to clean the ship for a year as a punishment. After scolding these crew members, Rain looked at the group who didn't dare to make a sound, and then calmed down. I will arrange for stimulation reinforcement one by one. Don't worry. Everyone has a chance. You all speak as if you're so pitiful. I've been stuck at stage 3 level 10 for 3 years. Did I say anything? At this point, everyone remembered that the captain had been waiting for this day for 3 years. If anyone was more miserable, it would be the captain. He had the physical body of the son of Poseidon. But he had reached the top early, and couldn't cultivate any more. Every day he could only watch others train while he sat on the deck, alone, looking into the distance. Without a doubt, the next priority for stimulation reinforcement would be the orange sea god fruit. During this time, they hardly moved. With Rain's steady character, it was best to strengthen the sea god fruit before going to Misty Island, so the bounty team just sailed around aimlessly on the sea, passing the time in boredom. Thirty days later, Rain still hadn't received a system warning and the stimulation reinforcement of the sea god fruit had not yet reached its limit. Forty-seven days later, just as Rain was about to lose patience, the system finally sent a message. Ding! The stimulation reinforcement of the sea god fruit has reached its limit. Please remove it in a timely manner. Rain ran all the way to the captain's room and entered the secret room to take out the sea god fruit. When the others saw Rain so panicked, they immediately knew what had happened and followed him into the room. The color of the sea god fruit had completely changed from its original orange red to a bright red, like blood. Peeling off the outer skin of the sea god fruit, the fruit inside was even more delicate and tempting. Rain hesitated for a moment, then took a deep breath and ate it. Captain, how is it? Rain looked up and wiped his mouth. It's orange flavored. Everyone was no longer surprised. When others ate sea god fruit, they had strong reactions, but when Rain ate it, it was no different from eating regular fruit. Half an hour later, Rain opened his system. Rain, Captain. The body of the son of Poseidon, stage 4 level 1 1 tenth, basic attributes 68 times that of an ordinary person. Physical combat power 136, each level in this stage increases by 16 points. Dot. Skills, Tiger's Fawn, 10 out of 10, within 10 seconds, speed increases by 200%, strength increases by 200%, sensing increases by 100%, and reaction speed increases by 50%. Cooldown time, 30 minutes. Mutation count 3. Detailed classification 1. Combat type biological mutation. Mutation ability. 3. Dragon transformation. First transformation. Level 21 attributes increase by 210% in water and decrease by 21% on land. Second transformation. Level 21 a layer of dragon scales can be formed on the surface of the body, which can increase underwater movement speed by 200%, already at the limit, and increase defense by 105 points. Third transformation, level 21 obtain dragon skin and dragon bones, increase physical defense and hardness, increase unarmed attack power by 105 points, and increase defense by 105 points. Detailed classification 2, support. Naga's Gaze, primary 10 out of 10, can be breakthrough. Skill Information Under the current level, gaze at the enemy unit for 1 second, causing their entire body to stiffen for 1 second. Detailed Classification 3, Material Type Mutation Flame Transformation 1 out of 10 the body can be transformed into a flame form. The number of transformations in 24 hours is once, and the duration is 3 seconds. Captain, how is it? The group of people continue to ask Rain about his situation. But after reading the data, Rain stared with his eyes wide open, slowly turned his head, and said slowly, I'm now, ridiculously strong, 192, tracking, 
They have been wandered at sea for two months now, which was quite a lengthy period of time. However, their gains were well worth the months of drifting. Shob's strength had greatly increased, and Rain, after consuming the new sea god fruit, had unlocked the door to stage 4 upgrade, and his new abilities were nothing short of extraordinary. After witnessing Rain transform into a flame person, everyone was amazed by the power of the Fire Heaven Crystal. Captain, if you had this ability before, Frank would not have been your match. The key is that it's so cool. Captain, I'm a little envious of you. I also want to strengthen our abilities. Captain, please arrange it as soon as possible. I can't wait any longer. Rain returned to human form and thought for a moment. Through two experiments, the terrifying power of the Fire Heaven Crystal had been fully demonstrated. This was an ability that can continue to generate benefits, and the strength of the crew would be greatly improved in the future. Don't be in a hurry, everyone. If the Fire Heaven Crystal has such an ability, then do other Heaven Crystals have similar abilities? Rain's divergent thinking was activated, from the situation of Shob and me, after being strengthened by the Fire Heaven Crystal. The mutant abilities all developed in the direction of fire elements. So, will the Earth Heaven Crystal enhance Earth Element abilities? Rain's words also opened up everyone's thinking and made them more eager for the mysterious stone that was likely to be the Earth Heaven Crystal. I've thought about it. Some people's mutations are suitable for strengthening in the direction of flames, but not all. For example, people who mutate underwater have no use for this ability in the water. The Fire Heaven Crystal can only improve your levels, and this can be achieved sooner or later as long as you spend more time training. So don't choose it just for the sake of increasing one level hastily. Assume that with the increase in rank and physical fitness, it may be possible to attempt second or even third enhancements in the future. But it is possible that it may have to be on a specific element. I will investigate these assumptions later. Until further investigation, you should temporarily rely on my assumptions. Therefore, those who wish to enhance their abilities should first determine if they are suitable for the fire element, and if they choose to strengthen with the fire element. So, True King, are you willing to go? True King's mutation type was Dinophelus, and he performed well with any elemental ability. But the fire element had a stronger attack power, and was a good choice when paired with Trooking's sharp attacks. Captain, of course, I am willing. There is no difference in any element for me, as each has its own advantages. Rain nodded and sent True King into the secret room. At this time, Shob also walked over and reminded True King, True King, keep a stable mindset and keep your body relaxed. The longer you persist, the higher your rank will be and the more obvious your ability enhancement will become. True King nodded, thank you, I will try my best. True King had already begun the enhancement process, but Rain cannot wait any longer. Each enhancement would take 20 to 30 days, and with so many people on the ship, it didn't know how long it would take. He increased the speed of the ship and headed toward Misty Island. Three days later, Rain arrived at Misty Island. The island was surrounded by steam and misty all year round due to the many hot springs within the island. Rain and his group first replenished their fuel, then went to the slave market, trading market, an auction house to look around. There were a few ordinary people who were also slaves in the King Class C area, and many daily works here required ordinary people to complete. However, there was a huge gap between mutant slaves here and those in the Beast Class C area. Mutant slaves here were at a minimum of Stage 3. Rain searched around and only found five people from Sea King Island clans, who had been sold second-hand or even multiple times. Rain immediately bought them. There were many items in the trading market and auction houses but what interested Rain the most was that they were selling sea monsters and beast hatchlings. The fleets in the King Class Sea area were already capable of capturing these creatures. However, judging from their appearance, their levels were not very high, and their species were quite common, such as water snakes, octopuses, and other ordinary creatures. The rarest item in the auction house was a giant swordfish sea monster egg, which was estimated to be E-Class. It was not bad, but the price was sky-high reaching 1 million gold pearls. Seeing this price, Rain had to give up his plan of raising fish. There were many skill books on the market, but only one advanced skill book on aquatic creature mutation, underwater assault, was available in the auction house, and it cost 10,000 gold pearls. Rain didn't hesitate to buy it. Rarely did he come across an advanced skill book, although it was a bit inferior. It was an advanced skill book after all, which he was currently lacking. The advanced treasure map was still difficult to find, and Rain had not found the navy on this island yet. It's strange. The navy is fighting with others, how can we improve the strength of our bounty group? 
Rain said puzzledly. Armin immediately answered, Captain, if you want to improve your fleet's level in the King Class C area, you shouldn't look for ordinary Navy personnel. You need to find the Navy headquarters. And there's only one neutral island in the King Class C area where the Navy headquarters is located. And that's Pandora Island. Pandora Island is about 6,000 nautical miles away from here. Damn, forget it. Let's finish our business here first. The group wandered around the island, and the most important goal was to investigate the situation of the owner of the island, the Underground King Fleet. After investigating, Rain learned that the King of the Underground Fleet had set sail a few days ago, saying they had received orders from the King of Terror to increase their vigilance, so they had been patrolling the nearby waters. Occasionally, ships would return, but they were only fuel transport ships. These guys must have received the news that the Swamp King lost half of their ships in the port. So they are so alert, Tick speculated. The Terra King did not yet know that rain was coming for them, but with one of their fleets destroyed, they would definitely be on guard and make new tactical arrangements for the situation in Java Island. One of their arrangements was not to approach the shore easily. Possible, rain sipped his coffee. But since they want to fight us at sea, let's make their wish come true. Everyone wait here for a while, wait for their transport ships to return, and then track them to find their fleet. In the eight days on Misty Island, Rain and his crew were no different from any other fleet, paying docking fees every day and even paying a toll of 1,000 gold pearls to pass through. They occasionally went ashore to purchase some daily necessities, looking like an ordinary stopping ship. After eight days, five transport ships with the flag of the King of the Underground appeared in the port. Someone had already prepared barrels of diesel in advance. After they docked, they quickly loaded the diesel and left without much delay. Rain quickly gathered his crew and sent someone to check the onboard radar, locking onto the five ships. Captain, they are about to leave the radar monitoring range, Old Bai said. Upon hearing this, Rain snorted, let's set sail. 193. Battle in the Sky On the radar, the enemy fleet carrying full cargo was not traveling very fast, and Rain always maintained the farthest distance, quietly following behind the five ships. The search range of the ship-borne radar was 36 kilometers. Although the ship-borne radar was not as detailed as the system radar, it was not difficult to lock onto the opponent's ships. On the radar, the five ships had been sailing in the northwest direction. However, suddenly, the five targets on the radar disappeared. Captain, the radar cannot detect the enemy ships. Rain hurried to the radar control room to check what's going on. The system did not report an error, indicating that the radar was not faulty. But it was strange that the other party disappeared like this. Captain. Have you noticed that the direction they have been sailing has always been northwest? This direction seems to be the general direction of Eastern Dawn Island. Shob looked serious. Hiss. Could the king of the underground be with the king of the quicksand? Charge King also frowned. The biggest possibility of their disappearance from the radar was that they had anti-radar equipment on board, but they did not use it at first, but waited until rain and the others followed for more than 200 nautical miles before using it, which was suspicious. Could it be that they are ambushed among them? I underestimated them. Rain frowned. At first, I thought they wouldn't know we were going to attack the king of the underground. But I overlooked one possibility that could let them know our purpose. Captain, are you saying, the crew members of the Swamp Kings that we released? Shob immediately realized. When the Terror King was unsure of Rain's intentions, he might have raised the alert for all fleets, possibly launching an attack on Rain as soon as he landed even mobilizing all personnel to search for rain in the entire area, but definitely not waiting here and setting a trap early for rain to fall into. They were certain that rain would follow the transport ship. At first, they pretended to be indifferent, but finally sent out a transport ship to lure rain into the trap. They were very aware of rain's intentions, the firepower characteristics of the super battleship, the flame shield, and even knew that rain could decompose ships. And these were things that only the crew who had experienced the previous battles knew. If they didn't want to destroy the entire harbor of Misty Island and minimize casualties, the best way was to trick Rain into exposing himself, and then annihilate him. Rain couldn't help feeling regretful. He was still too kind. Being kind to the enemy was being cruel to oneself. He knew this truth very well. But when it came to killing the surrendering crew, he couldn't bring himself to do it. Well, it seems that we are going to face the most dangerous battle this time. Shob, you command the ship, maintain the speed, and sail irregularly. Armin, come with me. Ah? Captain, where are we going? Armin asked strangely. Rain snorted coldly, looking in the direction of the sky. 
They have clearly located us now, but we can't detect them. I don't believe their radar is more advanced than ours, so there must be something up there watching us. So that's it. Armin didn't ask much and immediately spread her wings on her back, running with rain, and flying into the sky, all the way up. Rain only experienced an increase in his facial features when in Tiger's fond state, but Armin was different. As long as she was in her transformed state, her vision surpassed that of an average person. When the two flew above 5,000 meters, Armin had already spotted their target. Captain, there really are people up there. Is it another flying creature mutation? Rain looked at the blurry black dot. Armin, stand back when I make move. Okay, Captain. The two quickly moved towards the black dot, and soon caught up with the person. The wings on his back were larger than Rain's, but the feather material appeared somewhat messy. It was made up of feathers from various bird species. He was followed by a group of seagulls, apparently using them to transmit information to his crew. The man looked surprised at Rain and Armin. Like him, they were also flying mutants. What was even stranger was that they had actually found him. But he did not run away and stopped to look at the two of them. Kid, you're the captain of that ship, huh? Just a little brat. Hey, how did you see me? Rain sneered, I guessed. Guessed, humph, interesting. The man said coldly, it's interesting that the captain himself came out. If I kill you, won't the battle be over? A mere bird mutant and one. With such weak mutant features, are you a match in the air? Before you die, remember the name of the underworld king's fourth war god, Quetzalcoatlus mutant, Wilder. After speaking, Wilder's wings fiercely contracted behind him, and then violently opened up, as he shot toward Rain and Armin. They say you're so powerful, but in the end, you'll die by my hand. Raptor heart pierce. Wilder was like a sharp sword, bursting forward. His transformed hands now giant eagle claws, intending to tear Rain to pieces. Armin, get out of the way. Rain pushed Armin aside and stared firmly at Wilder, who was charging at him like a sword. Ha ha ha, you can't dodge this. Wilder laughed maniacally. As Wilder approached Rain within two meters, Rain suddenly sneered, sorry, it's you who can't dodge it. Flame transformation. Wilder could never have imagined that a flying creature like Rain would suddenly transform into a ball of flames. Even if he had known, he wouldn't have been able to break in time. Wilder's entire body pierced through the ball of flames. His wings didn't catch on fire directly. After all, they were the wings of a mutated bird, and coupled with Rain's current temperature was not high. It was impossible to ignite these tough feathers in an instant. However, Rain suddenly reverted back to human form and crawled onto Wilder's back. Rain had already drawn his waist knife and smiled slightly at the shocked Wilder. Oops, sorry. Farewell Wilder, one of the four war gods. Two titanium alloy daggers simultaneously crossed Wilder's neck from behind. Wilder, one of the four war gods, died. Rain lifted Wilder's body and looked at Armin, who was shocked on the side, frowning. What's wrong? Captain Yu, you won too easily. I thought you were going to fight for a while. I was just thinking of learning a thing or two. Rain shrugged helplessly. There's nothing I can do. Being too strong comes with its own set of problems. Well, I always feel lonely. Armin covered her mouth and chuckled. Captain, can you stop boasting for a moment? So, what do we do next? Rain thought for a moment. We've dealt with the guys in the sky. So of course we have to make good use of our aerial advantage and find their main forces. 194. Looking for a breakthrough. Rain and Armin first eliminated all the seagulls around them to prevent them from going back and reporting. Then they held an altitude of 5,000 meters and patrolled the surrounding waters. Soon, they discovered the surrounding ships. Around the super battleship, there were at least 300 ships, forming a siege around the super battleship, maintaining a distance of about 20 nautical miles. Oh? Can't be the king of terror, underground, and quicksand fleets are all here? Rain was really shocked. The opponent was really going all out this time. When the transport ship disappeared, the surrounding fleet began to encircle the super battleship, and it seemed that they didn't have much time left. Although the performance of the super battleship was superior, the enemy's ships were also much stronger than before. When dealing with the Swamp King, Rain did not dare to engage in positional warfare with them. So many cannons couldn't be stopped by just one flame shield, and their firepower couldn't take down so many armored warships at the same time. Especially noteworthy were the enemy's torpedo ships. Rain only had 50 torpedoes at a time. No matter how powerful they were, they couldn't withstand the salvo of all the torpedo ships of 3 D-class fleets. Armin, is the screw still on your head? Rain suddenly asked. It's still there, Captain. Well, you observe nearby and be sure not to lower your altitude below the current altitude. 
They shouldn't be able to hit you at this altitude. I'll go back to the ship. Yes, Captain. After instructing Armin, Rain quickly dived and returned to the battleship. When everyone saw Rain coming back and he had an extra person in his hand, they all gathered around. Captain, what's going on? This guy is a sky-type mutant. He had been observing us in the clouds and has now been taken out by me. Rain threw the body of the person Wilder into the sea, giving Black a sacrifice. I've seen their fleet. Now we're surrounded by three fleets of the Terror King. Everyone, be on high alert and prepare for battle. All crew members immediately went into combat readiness. Shobe was already in position at the Lightning II heavy machine gun. Control of the ship was handed over to Avril. In the combat room, Rain was more accustomed to letting Avril control the ship, as their cooperation was more seamless. Rain once again shifted his consciousness to Armin's side. Armin had turned the screw cap into a pendant, which now floated in the air as they flew. Rain quickly focused his mind and said to Armin, Armin, take me for a spin and report the position of their torpedo boats. I need to know their approximate locations. Okay, Captain. Armin's speed immediately skyrocketed to its maximum, and with the advantage of her top quality wings, her speed in the air approached 60 knots. Rain quickly marked the positions of these torpedo boats on the system radar. There were 27 in total, grouped in threes, but they had not yet completely converged. Otherwise, their strike capabilities would be truly terrifying. After detecting their positions, Rain shifted his consciousness back to the super battleship and headed toward the two more concentrated groups. Soon, the enemy fleet had entered Rain's shipborne radar, and then into his system's radar range. Damn, there are 70 to 80 ships just in this direction. Rain looked at the dense ships on the radar. The Terror King fleet was undoubtedly a force to be reckoned with. After losing control of the surveillance unit, the Terror King fleet became a bit confused. Why hasn't Wilder sent any news yet? A huge man over one meter tall asked impatiently on the main ship of the Western fleet. This guy was over two meters tall, with broad shoulders and a big body, even bigger than Sho. The king of the underground, Rexa, made countless people fearful just by looking at his fierce appearance. Captain, we are trying to contact him. Forget it, useless guy. Anyway, we have surrounded their ship. Once we join forces, they won't be able to escape. As Rexa was speaking, suddenly, a cry came from the radar control room. Captain, come and see. We have found an unidentified ship. Rexa hurried into the radar control room, and on their radar display, there was indeed a ship sailing towards them at high speed. Now, the only thing that could appear in this position was a ship. What's wrong? Did we make a mistake in our course? Why did we encounter them so quickly? Their encirclement was supposed to be a uniform one. According to the original route, they shouldn't have encountered them so quickly. Captain, our heading is correct. It seems like they changed their heading. What? Rexa widened his eyes. Did they discover this trap? All ships, prepare for battle. Yes, Captain. The two sides approached each other, and the distance between them quickly narrowed. 30,000 meters, 20,000 meters, 10,000 meters. Rexa slightly narrowed his eyes. At this distance, they were already close to the torpedo fleet's range. Notify the torpedo fleet to prepare to launch. Torpedoes had not finished saying, when the six ships behind them suddenly launched torpedoes. What's going on? Who told them to launch torpedoes? Someone immediately reported, Captain Morgan and Captain Kevin said they have found torpedoes coming and are trying to intercept, but the enemy has too many torpedoes, at least 50. What? Rain had already taken action. It was almost impossible for six torpedo ships to intercept his 50 hunter torpedoes, but just to be safe, after the first round of torpedoes was launched, Rain quickly launched another 10. Captain Morgan and Captain Kevin looked at the total of 60 torpedoes rushing towards them on the radar, their faces serious. A ship can launch 60 torpedoes at the same time? How could they launch and control so many torpedoes at the same time? Their hit rate should be low, and with our interception, it won't pose a significant threat. Well, why is their range so long? I don't know what type of torpedoes they're using, but they're moving at more than twice the speed of our torpedoes. However, they soon realized that something was wrong. Of the 30 interception torpedoes they launched, only 15 hit their targets, and the other 45 torpedoes suddenly split up midway and their subsequent route became increasingly clear. They, their target is, our torpedo ships, quickly, continue to launch torpedoes to intercept. Kevin, it's too late, the speed is too fast. Morgan looked at his comrades in horror. 45 accurately guided high-speed torpedoes, what can we use to intercept them? Boom, 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 
A series of explosions confirmed Morgan's judgment. Their six ships actually could not stop the torpedoes launched by a single ship. Rexa stared wide-eyed as the six torpedo ships exploded around the main ship, stunned. They had already protected their torpedo ships very well. But, the enemy's attack was as accurate as if they had eyes. 195. Final Showdown After destroying the enemy torpedo boat, Rain did not fire again but turned around to search for the next target. Rain received new intelligence from Armin that the enemy was rapidly shrinking the encirclement, and there was an urgent need to sink all enemy torpedo boats. Deploy the drones, no need to sink them, just distract the opponent. Rain immediately issued the latest instructions, and ten unmanned aerial vehicles quickly took off from the ship, while the vessel moved towards the northern encirclement. Rexa put down his telescope. The enemy ship actually turned around. Did they run away? No, after witnessing the powerful attack capability of this vessel, Rexa didn't think they would just run away like that. Moreover, a batch of drones took off from the enemy's deck and scattered in all directions, indicating that they had the next move. After thinking for a moment, Rexa narrowed his eyes and said urgently to his subordinates, Inform Charles immediately. Their target is the torpedo boat. However, unfortunately, the drones had already launched a harassment attack on other fleets. Where are the anti-aircraft guns? Shoot them down. Machine guns, open fire. However, the task of these drones was just to attract attention, and they did not need to sink enemy ships. In moving at high speed, their guns were difficult to hit accurately. At this moment, the radar detected the location of the enemy ship, and just as they were about to enter the firing range of the cannon, suddenly, seven torpedo boats that were protected inside the fleet exploded, as they were hit by a fierce torpedo attack. Captain Lewis, all the torpedo boats have been sunk. What? The enemy launched 50 torpedoes. At this moment, a crew member reported the message. Their target is the torpedo boat. Put the torpedo boat at the back. Unfortunately, the intelligence came too late. When the seven torpedo boats exploded violently and sank, the enemy turned around and sailed away in another direction. Due to the drone harassment and their aerial visibility being taken away, Armin noticed that the situation for their enemies was now somewhat chaotic. The speed at which the encirclement was shrinking was uneven. After destroying 13 torpedo boats, the remaining fleet had not yet realized Rain's intentions and did not focus on protecting their own torpedo boats. Subsequently, Rain quickly took out another 14 torpedo boats and excluded the threat of underwater torpedoes. After sinking the last batch of torpedo boats, Rain launched a fierce attack on the current fleet. Using the advantages of controlling visibility, radar range, and artillery range, the super battleship quickly eliminated nearly 50 enemy ships, sinking most of the enemy fleet. Captain, the armor of the enemy's main ship seems to be particularly thick. Avril looked at the C-class main ship in front of them, which was covered in armor all over its body. The three lightning-type guns did not cause fatal damage to them. Well, turn the ship's head around. We must hit their weak spot with the lightning-2 main gun. Rain made a decisive decision and made adjustments. Drone support. Torpedo and bow main gun. Fire at the same time. This was a real three-way strike from the sky, sea surface, and seabed. The machine guns on the drones swept through the ship killing a large number of crew members on board, making the organization on the enemy ship extremely chaotic. Suddenly, the ship's bottom shook violently, and four torpedoes hit the bottom of the C-class main ship, damaging its hull. At this point, the crew was in chaos and unable to organize repairs. But it wasn't over yet. With the addition of the Lightning II main gun, a single shot with 5,000 attack power hit the enemy captain's cabin and radar control room. With a loud bang, the boiler on the ship exploded violently, and the ship was engulfed from the inside out by the explosion sound and flames. The enemy still had more than 30 ships, but Rain couldn't afford to delay for even a moment. He quickly turned around and headed toward the enemy ships behind him. Without the torpedo ship, Rain could fire without any hesitation. He had to sink more enemy ships before they surrounded him. The sound of gunfire erupted quickly around them. A man of medium build with a dark complexion squinted his eyes and looked at the eight torpedo ships behind him. This person was the king of terror. The ship that had just destroyed their torpedo ship was right in front of them, and they didn't even give him a chance to vent his anger before they ran away. At that moment, the crew members reported the message. Captain, the second fleet was attacked. Captain, the third fleet suffered heavy losses from long-range attacks. Captain, the flagship of the fourth fleet, Mighty, has sunk. What the hell? 
We clearly surrounded them. Why are we attacked from all sides? What are our radars and artillery for? Are they eating shit? I spent so much money, and they can't even touch them, Charles roared. He had never seen such a situation before. The enemy was like a slippery eel that was impossible to catch. When they tried to charge, they would run away. Everyone, advance quickly, tighten the encirclement. The battle had been going on for an hour, and Rain's ammunition reserves were running low, but the situation for the enemy was even worse. The four divisions were split up, and all 27 torpedo boats sank. In addition, a total of 212 D-class and E-class battleships sank, while one C-class battleship sank, another was heavily damaged, and another was lightly damaged. When the terror fleet completed its encirclement of rain, they were left with only 101 warships. When the Terra King fleet regrouped, they discovered that in just a few short times, their fleet had been reduced to only one-third. Although 101 warships were more than enough to surround rain, losing 240 warships in one fell swoop made Charles unable to believe his eyes. What kind of monster is this? Where are my ships? I only have a few left. Charles was now furious. Damn it, I'll make them pay ten times, a hundred times the price. All ships charge at them. Suicide squads in front, other ships providing cover fire. Even if we get hit, we have to ram them to the bottom. All drones, deploy and blast them to pieces. At Charles's command, the remaining ships rush towards the super battleship, with over 40 drones carrying explosive bombs flying from all directions toward rain. The battle had already reached a fever pitch, guerrilla tactics were no longer effective, and they had to engage in a frontal confrontation. Facing one of the ten kings of the King Class C, the Terror King, Rain could not care less. Surrounded by a large number of armored ships, Rain would not just stand and be beaten. He quickly turned the ship and charged at another C-Class battleship among the remaining enemy ships at a speed of 35 knots. We must take out this C-Class battleship. 196. Intense Close Combat. Taking down this giant ship over 200 meters long not only would weaken their firepower but also tore open a hole. Rain was determined to do this. Rexa don't let him pass. Stop him at all costs. Charles roared and quickly instructed the flag bearer to signal the order. All drones, pursue at full speed. Rexa clearly understood the signals sent by Charles through the flag language. Of course, he knew what to do even without the signal. All firepower, prepare to fire. We cannot let him pass. Over the super battleship, more than 40 drones circled and dived, ready to drop bombs. Anti-aircraft guns, fire. Rain immediately made a decision since the bombs carried by the drones were quite powerful. Shob, holding a cigar, squinted his eyes and controlled the lightning-heavy machine gun. He fired indiscriminately toward the sky. Let's see who can take down more. Charge King was not afraid of Shob. Little guy, are you trying to scare me? Little shit hit them hard. Not a single one of them would get close. Boom, boom, boom. The barrels of the anti-aircraft guns erupted with fierce flames. While the eight machine guns were even more exaggerated, constructing a terrifying fire defense net in the sky. The more than 40 drones could not avoid such intense firepower, and crashed one after another. Damn it, the anti-aircraft firepower is so strong, Rex accursed fiercely. But the good news was that after the firepower of the unmanned fighters restrained the battleship, it had unknowingly entered the range of the second fleet. Finally caught you. Hit it hard. Boom, boom, boom. More than 20 warships, led by the mystery armor, launched a fierce bombardment on the super battleship. Flame shield. Ding, inferno shield under attack. Integrity. 98%, 95%, 92%. How many hunter torpedoes do we have left? Remaining number of torpedoes, 27. Fire them all. 15 targeted at C-class warships, and the rest choose their own targets. Swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. Rain launched all of the remaining 27 torpedoes from underwater. The mystery armor battleship also had torpedo tubes, but since their fleet had dedicated torpedo ships, torpedoes were not the main means of attack. They only had two rows of torpedo launch tubes, and the underwater radar performance was poor. Seeing a large number of torpedoes approaching, Rexa quickly ordered the launch of torpedoes to intercept. Six lurking torpedoes faced 15 hunter torpedoes, and the difference was not small. They only intercepted three torpedoes, while the remaining twelve torpedoes hit the bottom of the mystery armor battleship. Captain, the bottom of the ship has been hit, and there are serious leaks in multiple places. Use all means to hold on. Rexa displayed his ferocity. Deck gun positions, 
fire at full force. If anyone dares to abandon ship, I'll kill him. Rain didn't expect that this underground King Rexa was so fierce, even stronger than Frank and even Charles. However, the six warships on the right side of the mystery armor battleship were not so lucky due to tonnage and armor issues. They had already started to sink. The two sides were close to each other, and the firepower of the mystery armor battleship was exceptionally fierce, reducing the integrity of the flame shield to only 48%. If it weren't for the excellent long-range strike capability of the super battleship, it would not have been easy for it to engage in close combat with the C-class battleship. Captain, the enemy's firepower is too strong, Avril said nervously. We don't have any torpedoes left now, and if they continue to attack us like this, it will be difficult for us to deal with other fleets behind us. Behind rain, there were still 70 to 80 warships in hot pursuit. Seeing the two ships about to pass each other, rain quickly ordered, all crew, enter the cabin. Shobe and Charge King quickly led people into the cabin. At this moment, the two ships were passing each other. Avril Arson, hold on tight. Rain said in a deep voice, retract the flame shield. All firepower, concentrate on firing at the C-class battleship. Upon hearing Rain's order, Avril and Arson looked frightened. Canceling the flame shield meant that they had no outer protection. They were only three to four hundred meters away from the mystery armor battleship. This would be true close combat, they guessed correctly. At the moment when the flame shield disappeared, two massive ships appeared side by side, unleashing their full firepower. Rexa was overjoyed when he realized his cannon could hit the enemy. He sneered, no more shield? Ha ha ha, do you know what my ship is called? The mystery armor. I've never been afraid of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Come on, I'll show you who's boss. The two fierce captains both launched an attack. The sound of dense gunfire was deafening. It was impossible to count how many cannons were fired by both sides at such a close distance. But it was certain that every shot hit accurately. The super battleship and the mystery armor passed each other in less than two minutes. But countless shells were exchanged. After two minutes, the two ships stopped firing at the same time. Charles had been observing the battle with a telescope and saw that both ships were severely damaged. On the super battleship, 17 were severely damaged out of 27 gun positions. The radar control room was heavily damaged, and the hull was severely deformed. The mystery armor known for its defense was even more severely damaged than the super battleship. All 33 gun positions were scrapped, the weapon barrels were leaning on the deck, the deck collapsed, and the hull was pierced in multiple places. In addition, the ship had serious leaks before, and the mystery armor finally could not hold up and began to sink rapidly. Rain finally tore through a defensive line, broke out of the encirclement, and sank the C-class battleship. Shobe, bring people to move the warehouse materials up here. They didn't have much material left. They had spent a lot of metal and gunpowder making shells. They must temporarily skip repairing other things and focus on repairing the gun positions. The ship was still traveling at high speed, and the other ships couldn't catch up for the time being. Rain took the opportunity to start repairing the hull. Hurry up and repair the gun positions. After repairing these gun positions, Rain could no longer repair the radar control tower. At this point, Rain transferred his consciousness to the body of the son of Poseidon, Avril, you control the ship. After speaking, Rain rushed out the door. Captain, what are you doing? Rain didn't have time to answer before rushing to the side of the ship. Black it. At the side of the ship, Black it popped its head out, and Rain immediately jumped onto Black's body. Take me and let's charge. Go from underwater. Black it made a dive into the water. Charles put down his binoculars with a grim expression. His best defensive C-class battleship, Mystery Armor, was taken out by the other side in just one round, and they only suffered minor injuries? What the hell, what kind of monster ship is that? Why is their defense stronger than Mystery Armor? But Mystery Armor did not die in vain. They inflicted considerable damage on the super battleship, and its speed had dropped to 30 knots. Especially after the radar control room was destroyed. Their cannons could no longer be as accurate as before. Chance, they are blind with no fire control radar. They are already at their weakest. All ships, use your full power and chase them down. Charles roared loudly. Tear them apart. As soon as he finished speaking, the thirty or so faster ships in front quickly increased their speed and chased after the enemy ship. But just as they had traveled two or three kilometers, the super battleship suddenly made a big turn and charged towards them. What is this guy trying to do? Wait, when did their gun positions recover? They repaired it so fast? Impossible. Don't be afraid, 
their radar system has already been destroyed. They rely on manual aiming, so they can't hit us, but we can hit them. Everyone listened and thought it to be the case. The opponent was within 20,000 meters of their range, and everyone was fully focused, ready to deliver a fatal blow to the ship. But just then, the enemy's cannons fired. Boom 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 boom. A series of carpet bombings and 17 or 18 scattered warships 20,000 meters away were precisely bombed. T this is impossible. Charles put down his binoculars in a daze. Impossible. Hitting directly from 20,000 meters away was impossible without radar cooperation. 197. King of Terror. With insufficient materials, Rain was unable to repair the shipborne radar. But he still had the system radar. At the center of the two armies, Rain was the hub and the system radar had a coverage radius of 10,000 meters, which was just enough to target enemies 20,000 meters away from the super battleship. After creating a gap, the Terror King's fleet was unable to envelop the super battleship, and their advantage in range was once again put to use. Black led rain through the seabed, constantly adjusting their position. After 40 minutes of working with the enemies, the super battleship roared with gunfire and sank all of the Terror King's fleet's D-class and E-class warships. How did they do it? This can't be possible. Charles stood stunned at the bow of his ship. From the beginning of the visual battle to tactical decision making to the unbelievable firepower and defense of the super battleship, he suddenly felt powerless. Over 300 ships failed to execute their encirclement plan against the single ship. Even when facing other opponents from the Ten Kings, Charles had never been beaten like this before completely unable to find a breakthrough. Who is their captain? His tactical arrangements are decisive, effective, and difficult to deal with. Could he be a legendary captain? During the hundreds of years of the Azure Era, there were many outstanding captains known as legendary captains. They had extremely excellent tactical skills and charismatic personalities. Their classic battles were numerous, and they were the trendsetters of the Azure Era, the most respected presence. Countless people felt honored to follow a legendary captain for their entire lives. And this opponent, who was able to immediately identify and shoot down Wilder in the sky, sink all of the torpedo boats, use visual advantages to engage in guerrilla warfare within the shrinking encirclement, quickly narrow the gap in strength, and ultimately choose to eliminate their C-class warship and break out of the encirclement. This series of decisions displayed wisdom, action, and courage. By the time the last enemy ship was left, Rain had already returned to his own ship. The raging flame shield had been destroyed. But Rain had also taken out most of the turrets on the enemy C-class battleship. In addition, their radar was destroyed by Rain, so they were essentially like a cruise ship now. Of course, Rain was in a similar position with no ammunition left for his various cannons. The two ships faced each other on the sea, about 10,000 meters apart. In between them, the only remains of a sunken ironclad battleship was a huge wooden deck floating on the surface of the sea. Rain had old by wave a flag demanding that the enemy fights on this wooden deck. The enemy was happy to oblige, as they were unsure if Rain still had any ammunition left. The two sides met on the deck of the third ship. On the side of the Terror King, there were a total of 43 people, while Rain had brought 40, including White and the Tiger King. Charles looked at Rain incredulously. Although Rain was only a 12 or 13 year old boy, all the other crew members stood behind him, clearly indicating that he was in charge. Are you the captain of this ship? Charles asked, his eyes full of shock. It was inconceivable that a young boy like Rain had orchestrated that series of unimaginable maneuvers. Rain also took a look at Charles. Yes, are you Charles the Terror King? Yes. Charles was not as angry as before. There was only one final battle left. When it came to fighting, that was what he was best at. Kid, including Frank's fleet, you've destroyed over 400 of my ships. This is the first time anyone has done anything like this, Charles said. Rain smiled slightly. You've severely damaged my ship as well. You're also the first to do this. Charles snorted. Who are you? Why are you attacking us? You have something I need. Rain was frank. I know what you want. Charles said. You want the map to that stone. Someone has already told me. Rain had indeed inquired about the map. And Frank's crew should have been able to guess what he needed. Charles guessing wasn't anything new. Unfortunately, you can't get it from me. Why not try? It seems you're pretty confident. Ha ha, I have what you need, and the lives of you and your crew are also what I want. It seems we can only see who is more capable. With that said, there was no need for any more words. Charles looked at Rain with a cold gaze and said, This captain is mine. Everyone else, kill his crew. 
As soon as he finished speaking, the crew of the Terror King rushed forward. Rain's crew, led by Shobe, was not to be outdone and charged toward their opponents. The crews of both sides left a large open space for Rain and Charles to fight on. Both sides were willing to fight on this deck. Rain could leave Avril on the ship where she was safest. With Avril out of harm's way, White and Tiger King, two super strong fighters, could join the battle. Moreover, being close to the sea, Rain was the strongest when he mutated into the Black Dragon. Charles knew that Rain could break down his own ship. Although he didn't understand Rain's ability, fighting here was obviously much safer than on the super battleship. Kid killing you and taking your ship, I won't lose anything. Charles walked step by step towards Rain. I heard that you are very strong, but unfortunately, in front of me, you are still going to die. Let me show you my true face. Ancient Centipede King, Stage 3 Mutation. Rain was shocked. The Terror King, one of the ten kings of the King Level C, turned out to be a centipede mutant. Wasn't this a bit weak? Could he really be stronger than Frank's? However, the following scene made Rain feel a little uncomfortable. Charles's body stretched out, covered in black armor, and four additional pairs of arms grew out of his sides. Holy shit, this is so. No wonder he's called the Terror King. So scary. Charles's facial mutation was also very severe, with tentacle-like mouthparts protruding from his mouth. Rain couldn't help but lean back. This kind of insect-like mutation was really disgusting. You, a centipede like this, can actually make Frank take you as the boss? Charles was very dissatisfied with Rain's disdainful expression and had to explain a few more things. I am the ancient centipede king, an invincible existence of that era. Kid, do you think that biological mutation is not as powerful as a material mutation? Then you're wrong. Biological mutation can gain unimaginable attribute abilities, which is incomparable to material mutation. You fought with Frank. You should know that they have an important weakness, they are afraid of water. Moreover, biological mutation can rely on level advantages to have strong combat ability in the water even without transforming, but Frank is different. As long as he is trapped in the water, his ability is suppressed, and his basic attributes only slightly improve, making him basically useless. Also, I have some bad news for you. Whether on land or in the sea, my mutation is just as powerful. Rain frowned slightly. This guy's defense was astonishing, and he was a centipede with venom. So it turned out that this guy was both offensive and defensive, and to make matters worse, he was amphibious. This was extremely rare. It could be seen that the Terror King was not just living up to his name. He looked scary, and he was even more terrifying in terms of strength. The King of Terror was not just a name, he looked terrifying, and his strength was even more terrifying. Okay, it seems like I have to go all out this time. Rain took a deep breath and drew his two titanium alloy daggers from his waist. Transformation 198 Underwater Battlefield Charles was on high alert, ready for battle. Rain rushed towards him, but Charles had prepared for his attack. Suddenly, during his charge, Rain made a sudden turn, jumped high, and leaped into the sea. On the water surface, Rain yelled out, White, I'm not feeling well. I'm leaving this man to you. Charles almost spat out a mouthful of blood. This guy was just bluffing this whole time, and he turned out to be running away. Of course, Rain had a reason for this. Frank was a material-type mutant, and White had a hard time dealing with him. Plus, Frank's basic attributes were not too high. That was why Rain took action himself before. But Charles was different. Just a moment ago, Rain had already roughly calculated that after Charles transformed three times, his basic attributes surpassed 1,000 points. Even after Avril weakened his attributes, he still had 600 points left. Rain's basic attributes were only 576 with the help of Tiger's Fong and Avril's attribute boost. It was terrifying that his opponent could still suppress him in this situation. Furthermore, the opponent had a thick defense shell that probably had the additional defense. Five arms that could change direction to increase attack power. The centipede's toxicity, and that disgusting appearance. Rain felt it was unlikely he could beat Charles in 10 seconds. So the best course of action was to flee for now. In the water, Rain had a 210% boost, so if Charles jumped into the water, he could win. As for fighting on land, that was left to White. Woof roar! White's voice changed drastically, emitting two completely different sounds. His front paws still made normal Labrador barks, while his back voice was a low growl of a beast. White had a strong immunity to venom, as Rain noticed when fighting the black corpse. Therefore, he was not afraid of Charles's venom attacks. 
His whole body tripled in size, and he pounced toward Charles at an alarming speed. Charles had no idea that this ordinary pet dog was actually such a powerful mutant. Seeing how fast White was, he didn't dare to carry on with his pursuit of rain. He rolled into a ball and blocked White's first attack. White's claws slashed Charles's back, leaving six blood marks. White's attack was able to directly break Charles's tough armor. Charles understood that his opponent was incredibly powerful. On the other side, Rain helped the crew kill three or four strong opponents in the sea before returning to the land battlefield. Shobe was particularly fierce today. His ability was extremely outstanding, especially after gaining the flame boost. Each time he missed it, he could use the flame explosion to cause unavoidable damage to the opponent. The opposing stage 6 expert also had no way to deal with Shobe. Damn it, are you only good at running? Let's kill the others first. In the Terror King's group, several people were being held in check by Shobe, which made them furious. Want to kill others? Have you asked me first? Rain snorted coldly and quickly moved towards them. With Rain's addition, Rain's crew became braver in battle, while on the Terror King's side, many people began experiencing strange phenomena. Why has my body become so heavy? That guy really is only a stage 4 level 7? Impossible. Absolutely impossible. Where's the captain? Everyone looked towards their captain, who had always been their strongest support at this point in the past, but this time he was nowhere to be seen. Turning their heads, they saw their captain being fiercely attacked by a large dog that was entirely red, except for its head, which was white. Charles, who was proud of his sturdy armor, had already been injured all over by white, and the venom he released from his mouth splashed onto white's fur, but was quickly broken down. Damn it, what kind of mutant beast is this? These people obviously didn't know White's true identity and thought it was just an ordinary mutant beast. Charles could no longer bear White's crazy attacks and abandoned his own crew, leaping into the sea. Rain saw this and shouted to Shobe, Shobe, leave this to you guys. White, Tiger King, protect our crew. Avril, give me cell enhancement. Rain shouted loudly and plunged into the sea. Upon receiving the request, Avril quickly enhanced Rain's attributes and completed the enhancement before he entered the water. Dragon's Transformation Tiger's Fawn Rain activated all three forms of the Dragon's Transformation, charging toward Charles at an incredible speed. When the two met again, the situation was completely different from that on shore. Although Charles's cell decay time had already passed, and his strength had recovered to a terrifying 1000 points, Rain's attributes were now even more frightening. With the boost of Dragon's Transformation, Tiger's Fong, and Avril's Cell Enhancement, Rain's basic attributes had already reached 1,700 points. Underwater, he also had a 200% movement speed boost, 100% perception boost, and 50% reaction boost. Underwater was Rain's most terrifying arena. On basic attributes, Rain completely dominated Charles, and in other additional abilities, the Jialong is no weaker than the ancient centipede king. Moreover, Charles was already injured beforehand, making this a completely one-sided battle. Rain was incredibly agile as he attacked Charles recklessly with his daggers, repeatedly stabbing him toward Charles's body. Despite having five pairs of arms, Charles was completely powerless to retaliate. With the aid of the Naga gaze, Rain plunged both daggers into Charles's heart in just a few seconds. Not long after, a corpse floated to the surface of the water which Rain dragged back onto the deck from the sea. When the crew saw Charles's body, their morale plummeted, and under the terrifying attacks of White, the Tiger King, and Shobe, they could no longer hold on, and within ten minutes, the entire army was defeated. One bear and two bear began examining the corpses, feeling around for anything valuable. Among them were ten or so stage five experts and two or three stage six experts, who would likely have some good stuff on them. Rain searched for Charles's body and discovered that he had a key on him. Apart from that, there was nothing of value, so he took the key and tossed the body back into the sea. Black is lucky again, Rain shook his head. All right, everyone, bring the wounded aboard, and Shobe, have Avril bring our ship over. I'll go check things out to make sure they don't run away. After speaking, Rain opened his wings and shook off the water droplets on them. White, come with me. Rain picked up White and flew towards the enemy's warship. There were actually some crew members still on the enemy warship, but their strength was not impressive. They had already witnessed the prowess of this dog and Rain, and knowing they were no match, they hastily jumped into the sea to escape. Rain easily took over the warship. We finally finished the fight. That was really close, Rain breathed a sigh of relief. 
After checking that there was no one left on board, he headed straight for the captain's cabin. By now, the super battleship had also arrived, and Shob and his crew quickly boarded. The Terror King's flagship is quite large, over 200 meters long. Captain, do you need these materials to upgrade your ship? Rain hadn't thought about it, but what he was more concerned about now was something else. Quickly search for any pearls or treasures, and most importantly, the map. Yes, Captain. 199. Collect resources. Over. On the Terror King, Rain and his crew got only tens of thousands of pearls. But they found a bank book with one million pearls, and most importantly, they found the map. Rain called back Armin, had Avril control the ship, and had the rest of the crew busy salvaging various resources, while he studied the map in the captain's cabin. The Terra King fleet was only allocated a small area in the Mirage, so they could only observe the Mirage from their location and draw it into a map. Rain asked the system to record the map and tried to use it to locate the treasure. No matching area detected. The system's reply dashed Rain's wishful thinking. He realized that the King Class C was so vast that he had not explored many areas, and it might not be easy to find the area on the map. It's still more reliable to determine the approximate location first, and then search nearby. Rain shook his head. It took a long time to defeat the Terra King fleet this time. In the past, Rain might not have found too many treasure chests, but now his crew's level was high, and Blacka was assisting them in the seabed. After fighting for more than two hours and pulling the battle line for several hundred kilometers, they still managed to retrieve 183 treasure chests, which was already very impressive. Avril and the others counted the spoils, while Rain began to thoroughly repair the ship. Materials were everywhere, and he repaired it effortlessly. Five days later, the super battleship was fully restored and was again replenished with a large amount of ammunition and fuel, fully equipped. Captain, we obtained a total of 930,000 golden pearls this time, plus a bank book with 1 million pearls and another with 500,000 pearls. But one is in the Goldfoot Merchant Bank on Misty Island, and the other is in Eastern Dawn Island. We have to go to two places to withdraw the money, Avril reported their harvest this time. Rain thought for a moment, Shob, you take people to control the Terra King, the ship can still sail. You go to Eastern Dawn Island first, and get what needs to be taken. We will go to Misty Island, withdraw the money and meet you. Yes, Captain. Two days later, the super battleship arrived at Misty Island. Rain led his crew to split into two groups, one to loot the governor's mansion, and the other to retrieve the pearls from the Pearl Bank. Unfortunately, there were only tens of thousands of pearls in the governor's mansion, and there were no rare sea god fruits. Apart from the 500,000 pearls retrieved from the Pearl Bank, there was nothing else to gain. Then, Rain set sail again, heading towards Eastern Dawn Island. Now, outside Eastern Dawn Island, the batter giant ship parked there attracted the attention of countless people. Oh my god, isn't that the Terra King's battleship? How did it get so badly damaged? Hmm? Are those people on the ship from the Terra King? It doesn't look like it. Sure, don't you want to live? Once the Terra King's crew hear you, you're doomed. Oh, okay. Shob had already completed his mission, retrieving one million pearls and searching the governor's mansion and slave market. During the time waiting for rain, Shob's biggest feeling was that the people living on the islands dominated by the Terra King fleet were always trembling in fear. It was said that sometimes the residents here would accidentally be killed by the Terra King's men. When they were on Java Island, there were rumors that Charles the Terra King liked to eat human flesh. Originally, they didn't believe it, but when they arrived at the Terra King's stronghold on Eastern Dawn Island, Shob finally confirmed this. The Terra King often abducted some residents into the governor's mansion and those people never had a chance to come out. The next day, people would find some residual bones in the garbage dump behind the governor's mansion. Shob sighed deeply. The Terror King Charles being called the Terror King might not only be because of his terrifying strength, or his terrifying appearance after his transformation. What was truly terrifying was his deeply distorted psychology and cruel rule. A few days later, Rain's ship finally met up with Shob. Shob told Rain about their discoveries these days. Rain also couldn't help but sigh. People on the previous islands also said that, but it feels disgusting to really confirm it. I shouldn't have let him die so easily back then. Captain, don't regret it. We don't want you to become so cruel too. Killing them is enough, Tick said. When people become numb to killing, it's not a good thing. Rain nodded. Thank you for reminding me, Mr. Tick. By the way, Captain, we now have a total of 3.4 million pearls. If we add the Terror King's ship, is it enough to upgrade? Avril asked. 
Shobe immediately said, Captain, Charles has a shipyard here with a lot of materials. I have already blocked it before. A shipyard. Rain was very surprised. Ha ha ha. That's definitely enough. Let's go. First go to the shipyard. It was not surprising that large fleets like the Terra King fleet, which occupied many islands, had their own shipyards. The shipyard was located on the shore, with its own port, and a large number of materials such as steel were stacked inside. Holy shit. We're really developed now. Shob, stop the Terror King's ship. Let me see what materials we still lack, and everyone else will go out and purchase them, Rain said excitedly. At the thought of building a new ship, everyone was in high spirits, quickly taking their positions and working together in a busy scene. The surrounding residents dared not make a sound about the sudden appearance of this group of people in the shipyard. Anyway, they knew that they could freely use the Terror King's ship and there was no one from the Terror King's men on the island to stop them. But there were rumors going around privately. Were these guys friends with the Terror King, or did they really take down the Terror King's fleet like in the legends? Ten days later, all the materials Rain needed were ready. However, Rain couldn't build a new ship yet because True King was still undergoing modifications, and he didn't want to interrupt True King's strengthening process. So everyone rested inside the shipyard. Captain, it's a pity we don't have enough manpower. Otherwise we could occupy these islands, Shob said. The residents on the islands live under the brutal rule of the Terra King, and although they live in fear, without a powerful fleet, it could also make them a target for other fleets to fight over. When war breaks out, it's not a good thing for these residents. Rain took a deep breath, furrowed his brow, and thought for a moment, then suddenly asked Armin, among the ten kings, are there any with a better reputation? They can all be brutal thugs, right? However, Armin lowered his head, Captain. There's no mercy in the trading markets of the no man's waters, let alone in the king class waters. Governors like Hallowell are really few and far between. Shob also sighed, what Hallowell cares about is not the residents, but his own position. Rain agreed deeply with this. Hallowell was a decent governor, but he wasn't an honest man. He always schemed against Rain and often resorted to dirty tricks. If Rain wasn't astute, he might have been used by him. Captain, as far as I know, Although not all of the Ten Kings are necessarily tyrants, in a world where everyone is trying to enhance their own strength by all means necessary, falling behind is equal to destruction. So whether it's due to their personalities or the situation they are in, they will do everything they can to exploit the islands within their jurisdiction and plunder other islands. So if you're looking for someone with a better reputation, it seems there isn't one. Rain frowned, sighed, and stood up, walking towards the harbor, forget it, I can't save everyone. Watching the captain's back alone, Avril also narrowed her eyes. The captain's personality was indeed like this, he wasn't a suckered person, nor did he ever consider himself a hero. But he had a characteristic, which was to often say one thing and mean another. 200. Upgrade, Aircraft Carriers Twelve days later, Rain finally received a notification from the system that Trucking's strengthening was completed. Perhaps the experience Shob taught him was effective. This time True King persisted for a total of 33 days, three more days than Shob. When True King came out, everyone rushed over. Brother, how did it go? Man, what level are you now? Although True King was exhausted, he had some energy left. He smiled and said, I am now at stage 5 level 9. What? One level higher than me. Shob suddenly looked jealous. His position as the first level in the whole ship was not secure anymore. In addition, my mutated attack of the Dinophelus now carries flame damage, True King said as he mutated his palm. This guy's claws were now burned with deep red flames. After this strengthening, True King's level leaped to become the highest in the whole ship, and with the enhanced ability, he had more killing power. If he encountered a black corpse now, the corpse poison would be quickly evaporated by his flames, and he could easily take down the black corpse. After True King's evolution was complete, the next exciting moment came. Since there was a shipyard here, the ship upgrade was done here. With Rain's order, a massive amount of materials quickly began to self-cut and assemble. Wow, I'm so excited. What kind of ship is stronger than our current one? The number of materials this time was extremely large, and even with system construction, it took a whole day. But when this ship gradually took shape, everyone except Rain looked bewildered. This, this is a battleship? It's huge enough. It doesn't really look like a ship. Yeah, it looks a bit like a runway. Where are the gun turrets on the ship? Are they distributed inside the hull? Captain. Avril turned her head and saw Rain's eyes widen, his mouth gaping open and his chin almost hitting the floor. 
Every time Rain saw the ship evolve, although he was pleasantly surprised, he always acted very reserved. But this time, the captain was shocked to this extent. This was the first time Avril had seen it. Captain, what's wrong with you? Rain was petrified all over. Only his eyeballs moved. Looking at Avril, I never thought it would be it. It's so damn fucking strong. What's the one emperor and ten kings? In front of me, they're all trash. I can finally unify the King Series waters. Everyone looked at Rain in surprise. This oddly shaped ship didn't look particularly strong at all. Captain, what kind of ship is this? Rain said in a deep voice. It is, the legendary, aircraft carrier. From now on, our super battleship becomes super battleship fleets. As soon as this massive 263 meter long and 39 meter wide behemoth took shape, Rain couldn't wait to shift his consciousness. He wished he could immediately see the parameters of this warship. Host Rain, ship, diesel fuel joint power small aircraft carrier, cabins, 600 crew cabin, 5, large storage cabin, power room, 9, sonar flow hood, 1, radar system control station, 1, backup radar control room, 2, power cabin, 6, backup power cabin, 2, crew, 2, all positions have been assigned, open to view details, except for Rain and Little Booty, everyone else was unsure and not counted by the system. Speed, maximum 35 knots, open to view details. Combat power, not equipped with carrier formation. Evolution, 100 million gold pearls. Rain was dumbfounded. His combat power was? What the hell was that? He quickly opened the weapon system. This time, the weapon system actually had two branches. One was the shipborne weapon system, and the other was the carrier formation system. What the hell? The system is getting more and more complex. Can it be simplified? The system still didn't respond, and Rain could only patiently check it out. Shipborne weapon systems, Typhoon series anti-ship six-pack missile, five range 18.5 kilometers, 5.5 kilometers for the tail chase, single attack power 10,000, total combat power 300,000, Typhoon series anti-air six-pack missile, five range 20 kilometers, single attack power 8,000, total combat power 240,000. Typhoon series anti-submarine rocket, 10 diving depth 400 meters, diving speed 14.8 meters slash second, firing rate 12 rounds slash minute, single attack power 10,000, total combat power 100,000, Typhoon series attack torpedo, 40 single attack power 5,000, total combat power 200,000, Typhoon series torpedo interception torpedo, 20 single attack power 2,000, Total combat power 40,000. Fisherman series anti-torpedo net. No combat power. Scarecrow series decoy bomb. 10. No combat power. Lightning 2 shipborne heavy machine gun. For 40 mm caliber strong cooling shipborne machine gun. Range 3,000 meters. Firing rate 300 rounds slash minute. Single bullet attack power 260. Total combat power 1,040. Lightning 2 shipborne light machine gun. For 25 mm caliber strong cooling shipborne machine gun, range 2,700 meters, firing rate 500 rounds slash minute, single bullet attack power 120, total attack power 480, lightning series shipborne heavy machine gun, 240 mm caliber strong cooling shipborne machine gun, total combat power 360, lightning series shipborne light machine gun, 220 mm caliber strong cooling shipborne machine gun, total attack power 160, level 4 ironclad hull, defense 20,000, average defense 2,000, total combat power of carrier formation 0, rain swallowed his saliva. After this upgrade, a large number of Typhoon series weapons appeared, and Typhoon series weapons were no longer cannons. They are missiles. A Typhoon series anti-ship six-pack missile system has a combat power of up to 3 million, which is more powerful than the entire Yamato battleship. Holy shit, I finally have better weapons, Rain said tearfully. Oh, where are my drones? Last time in battle, Rain lost 10 drones. Although they were shot down by enemy planes, those 10 drones played a very important strategic role. Besides, how could a carrier not have planes? Can a carrier without carrier-based aircraft still be called a carrier? Okay, let me see this carrier formation. Rain immediately opened the carrier formation menu. The submenu was not blank, but the few words of information made Rain's blood rush to his head. Carrier fighter squadron, none. 
Carrier Helicopter Squadron None, Destroyer Formation None, Escort Formation None, Submarine Formation None, this series of None made Rain both frustrated and excited. Next to these formations, there appeared a selectable submenu. Rain casually opened a destroyer menu and found that all the warships that had been built before were actually on the list of available ships. So, you're telling me that I can finally build my own fleet? Rain exclaimed, holding his forehead. This was his lifelong dream, and it was finally about to come true. Hold on, how much money is it going to cost to build so many ships? Rain suddenly realized the issue. 201. Fire Heaven Crystal Upgrade. Rain didn't want to go out with a bare small carrier. The enemy had hundreds of ships in their fleet, and he would be shot down even if he was strong. The speed of the carrier was slower than before. This was probably the first time in upgrade history that a ship's speed had regressed. Flexibility had also been reduced. When facing encirclement, it would become an easy target. Okay, it looks like we need to make some money. As he spoke, a group of crew members rode over on a small boat from the shipyard. Captain, you're so unfair. You didn't even bring us over. Fancy grumbled. Rain helplessly said, If you were on the old ship, I could have brought you over. But how can I bring you over if you're on land? Rain's explanation was ignored, and the group of people began to wander around the spacious deck. Although the length of the new carrier was only 50 meters longer than the optimized Yamato, and the width was only 12 to 13 meters wide, the carrier deck was very clean, and all the weapons had been moved to the side of the ship, making the deck surprisingly spacious. Is this a runway for planes? And there are parking spots. But where are our planes? Captain, where is this ship strong? Faced with everyone's questions, Rain could only explain the current situation and said, The situation is like this. We need to find a way to make more money and form a carrier formation. Avril thought for a moment and said, Captain, this upgrade has used up all our savings. If we want to make money, we have to go out. Rain also knew that they didn't have any money now. He had calculated the cost of building the carrier and there was no surplus. Well, it looks like we can't rush things, Rain shook his head. The system didn't even tell him that after the upgrade, he had to raise money to form a carrier formation. Oh right, Captain, since we're going to stay here for a while, let's just occupy Java Island, Eastern Dawn Island, and Misty Island first, and collect some tolls or something, Shobe suggested. Rain thought for a moment, and said, I guess that's our only option for now. On that day, Rain first occupied the governor's mansion on Eastern Dawn Island and then announced the takeover of the three islands. The local residents did not dare to have any objections. These people had occupied the shipyard for some time, and they had not seen the Terror King fleet. Although they had doubts in their hearts, they did not dare to question them. The people in the King Class C areas seemed to have little reaction to the change of ownership of the islands, perhaps because they had experienced it many before. Anyway, Rain was now the governor of the four islands in the eastern dawn, with East Sulphur Island already sunk, leaving him in charge of three islands. What's going on? Why are the residents not reacting at all? Rain returned to the shipyard board. Captain, there are no armed forces on the island anymore. Without opposition from armed forces, who among the residents would dare to speak out? Shob said. Yeah, do you think they would fight us for the Terra King? They want Charles dead as much as we do, True King also said. This coup seemed to be somewhat eventful, but Rain did not care whether there were opposition forces quietly forming. He wouldn't be staying here for long anyway. The plan to build a carrier fleet was not urgent, but strengthening the crew was something that could not be delayed. The secret room was still in the captain's room, but now the system had redesigned it. The current secret room was a hexagon with a central room containing pearls and fire heaven crystals, and six surrounding rooms, one of which contained a strange bird egg, and the other five were empty. Well, system, why did you create so many rooms? The system did not respond. Rain was speechless. It seemed that when he received the achievement reward last time, the artificial intelligence system appeared again, but it quickly disappeared. Now this system was an emotionless machine. He had to check it himself. Check the status of the heaven crystals. Fire heaven crystal status. Energy stability system, normal. Energy extraction function, stable. Flame shield, Level 2 Defense 50,000, Duration 120 Seconds. Flame Shield, Level 3 Research Progress 0%, Requires the Next Level Ship Technology. Mutation Enhancement, Level 2 Can Simultaneously Affect 6 Units. Mutation Enhancement, Level 3 Research Progress 0%, Requires the Next Level Ship Technology. Flame Spray, Level 1 Research Completed, Requires Flame Spray Tower. 
Nuclear power, level 1 research completed. What the fuck, you secretly completed so many research projects? Rain exclaimed in shock. It was really shocking to see it now that the data representation of Heaven Crystal's ability was not only available but also upgraded after the ship's upgrade. So, does that mean I can enhance 5 crew members at once? Rain suddenly felt excited. It was too inefficient to enhance them one by one before. By the way, replace the power system of my ship with a nuclear power system. No available equipment found. Please purchase or manufacture the corresponding equipment. Click the nuclear power division menu to view. Rain immediately clicked on the nuclear power option and found that he had never heard of the required equipment. As for buying it directly on the island, it was even more impossible. To make it himself, Rain calculated that he would need at least 500,000 gold pearls. He then opened the flame spray tower and found that it required a large number of rare metals, which Rain was powerless to obtain. Damn it, what I lack now is money. Forget it, 35 knots is 35 knots. Let's first work on the aircraft carrier formation. Although he couldn't use the flame spray tower or nuclear power for now, the strengthening of the defense shield and the increase in mutated enhanced personnel had already exceeded Rain's expectations. He immediately called the crew members over. Anyone else wants to enhance their fire attribute? Sign up yourself. This time, surprisingly, nobody was enthusiastic about signing up. Rain was a little surprised and looked at One Bear. One Bear, don't you want the fire attribute? Captain, I do want it, but I have been hesitating for a while. Should I choose the fire attribute or the earth attribute? I heard that the earth heaven crystal can enhance defense power significantly. Two Bear and I are not agile enough so it's better to increase defense rather than fire damage. Yes, Captain. The mysterious stone in the King-class sea area. I think it's very likely to be the Earth Heaven Crystal. So one bear and I are considering waiting for it. Rain pondered for a moment and realized that it made sense. One bear and two bear were not true king, and their agility was not high enough to easily land hits on enemies. Well, that works too. And true queen, what about you? Captain, my brother is already a fire attribute. I want to see if there are other attributes available so that we won't have such a single attribute in the future. That's a good point too. Rain was surprised to see that his crew had become so insightful and were thinking more than he was. Avril, what about you? Captain, I can't fight, so this fire attribute is useless for me. I want to see if there's a chance to wait for the wood attribute, which might help with my healing abilities. Charge King, Windbell, and Arson were all aquatic creatures mutation and Rain's primary mutation was the Scaly Dragon, which was not suitable. Armin was an air unit, and it was unknown whether this fire element would help her. Should he send an ordinary crew member instead? Rain thought for a moment, then suddenly looked at a person in the crowd who had been keeping their head down. Hey Tick you go! Huh? Tick was surprised and raised his head. Yes, this time it's you, White, Tiger King, and two more crew members. Don't worry, I can guarantee your safety. Give it a try. 202 Inexplicable adoration. Rain pulled Tick into the strengthening room, and he looked a little nervous. It took Rain some effort to calm him down. Avril helped Tick with his treatment almost every day. After so many years, he was almost well enough. And with the system monitoring them, Rain believed that Tick wouldn't be harmed. After arranging the enhanced crew, Rain and the others split into two groups. Shobe took the governor's seal that Rain had given him, and went to collect tolls at Misty Island and Java Island on the new ship. Rain, Avril, and Armin stayed at the governor's mansion. Half a month later, these days at the governor's mansion were particularly comfortable, and Rain noticed that the residents were becoming more and more accepting of him as the new governor. Although he didn't do anything except collect money, everyone surprisingly said that the new governor was particularly friendly. He didn't know what was going on. On this day, Rain finished his training and took fancy for a stroll on the island. Since his evolution, Rain's appearance had changed slightly. He was no longer an 11 or 12 year old boy but had grown to be around 15 or 16. Meanwhile, Fancy's appearance remained at 18. Rain was now about 1.75 meters tall, even taller than Fancy. The two of them walked on the street and looked a bit like siblings and a bit like a young couple. Fancy didn't mind at all, linking her arm with Rain's and pulling him around. Hey, there are so many people watching. Stop pulling me all the time. Rain frowned. Fancy chuckled. Captain, what are you afraid of? I even helped you change your diapers before. You were so naughty back then, and I just pinched your little birdie, and then you behaved. Rain almost spat out a mouthful of blood. He was going to break down. Oh my god! Don't bring up that kind of thing, okay? 
He hadn't fully taken over the body of the sea god's son at that time, and couldn't control himself. Big sister, actually this body isn't, and that thing you pinched isn't. Well, forget it. Do whatever you want. Rain lost his temper all of a sudden, and let Fancy link her arm with his. As Rain and Fancy walked, the merchants on both sides of the street came out. Governor Rain, good day. Good day, Madam Governor. Governor, are you out for a walk again? Madam looks especially beautiful today. Rain didn't understand why the local residents seemed to love him so much. They call you Madam? Who said you were my wife? Rain asked. Fancy grinned. I guess they think we're a good match. Whatever, let them call me that. We won't be here for long anyway. The two of them sat down in a bar. It was crowded, but when people saw Rain and Fancy, they gradually quieted down. That's the new governor. Really? He's the new governor of Eastern Don Island? They defeated Charles? Yes, I saw them entering the port with the ship Terra King. He's just a kid. Looks like he's not even accompanied by any guards. Should we? A big man whispered to his companion. Don't. If you dare touch them, the people on Eastern Dawn Island will tear you apart. It is said that he is an extremely rare good governor. Is it true? Let's wait and see. The bar owner was a charming woman, very beautiful with a voluptuous figure, and dressed very generously. She exposed what should be exposed, and even some things that should not be exposed. Your Excellency and Madam. The bar owner personally brought a bottle of champagne to them and poured a small cup for them. Welcome to my little tavern. I represent the residents of Eastern Dawn Island to toast you both. The bar owner finished her cup of wine. Rain looked at the bar owner strangely. Madam, if you're not busy, why don't you sit down and chat with us? I'm not busy at all. That would be my honor. The bar owner was very excited, and she sat next to them, looking a bit cramped. Madam, was it a hard life for you here before? Rain smiled and asked. Well, the bar owner looked embarrassed. She looked around and seemed hesitant to speak. Speak up. Don't be afraid. I have already killed Charles. If anyone here dares to make trouble for you, I will kill them. The surroundings fell silent. Occasionally, a glass in someone's hand fell to the ground and shattered, but it did not attract anyone's attention. He really killed Charles? Is the rumor true? Oh my God! The bar owner looked at Rain, her face gradually turning slightly red. Whether it was due to the effect of alcohol, or because of his dominant words just now that made her feel a little fluttery. Which woman does not like strong men? Especially in the King Class C area, not to mention that Rain was now a governor. Your Excellency, it's not really a secret. Before, someone was caught to the governor's mansion every month, and then, they were never seen again, the bar owner said. Rain nodded. Besides that, we used to have to pay 90% of our profits to the government, but now we only have to pay 30%. We can finally save some money. Rain thought for a moment and realized that he had left the matter of taxation to Armin to handle. Previously, 90% of the profits had to be paid to the government, and even with other expenses taken into account, they could only barely make ends meet. Although the 30% tax was still high, it was much more humane compared to the past. Not just us, but the surrounding businesses as well, they have more and more confidence in future operations. Everyone has been working hard recently, Fancy said. Rain nodded. Although he needed money desperately, he didn't want to squeeze the residents to death. As a result, the residents were so grateful to him that there was no opposition to his governorship. Your Excellency, there used to be terror fleet sailors who would bully and take advantage of us, doing all sorts of bad things. We, everyone has been bullied by them, but we dare not speak up. Your people have never oppressed us, and there were two sailors who even taught a group of troublemakers a lesson who caused the disturbance in my tavern. From the landlady's reddened eyes and choked voice, Rain seemed to know that the Terra King fleet had not spared this pretty and sexy woman. Fancy leaned over and added in Rain's ear, It's one bear and two bear. Rain frowned slightly. Those two guys should focus on their cultivation and not meddle in outside affairs. The landlady adjusted her emotions as if she wanted to forget about the unpleasant past. Your Excellency, in any case, everything has changed since you took office. Everyone likes you very much. Rain's frown deepened. These things seem to have nothing to do with him, but now, he felt a little embarrassed. Your Excellency, you will stay here with us forever, right? The landlady nervously looked at Rain with her peach blossom eyes, but her gaze was not seductive, but rather a kind of expectation, with a hint of prayer. Rain glanced at the landlady and the many people in the bar. They all seemed to be waiting for his answer. Among these people were sailors who had docked here from afar and local residents who came to have a few drinks. 
especially the local residents, their eyes were so hot, making it difficult for Rain to say the words on the tip of his tongue. In the past, they had been assassinated, oppressed, and squeezed to the point of being treated as non-human. Now they had placed all their hopes on Rain. Rain picked up his glass and took a sip, then coughed from the taste of champagne. It seemed that the body of the son of the sea god was not used to alcohol. Um, well, I will stay. Rain had to reply to the landlady in this way. 203. Aircraft Carrier Formation Rain always felt that Fancy had some ulterior motives in pulling him out. Now it seemed that this girl wanted him to deeply understand the situation of the local residents. Back at the governor's mansion, Rain had some thoughts about what he had seen and heard on the island that day. The next day, Rain had Armin make a flag with the emblem of the dad, and he had it replace the Terror King's flag in front of the presidential palace. It had been almost half a month, and he still hadn't taken down the Terror King's flag. He really didn't want to stay here for long, and of course, he was too lazy to change it. A month later, Avril brought in the income for the first month. The island's tax revenue, plus the passage fees and berthing fees of the previous fleet, amounted to more than 21,000 pearls. Of course, the pearls in the King Class C area referred to gold pearls, which were already equivalent to the income of a non-main battleship's treasure chest from the Terra King. In addition, Shobe and Charge King collected 13,700 pearls and 12,300 pearls respectively on Misty Island and Java Island. Rain's total income for the month was 47,000 pearls. Rain didn't care about destroyers or frigates. He had the best option, which was the optimized Yamato. Destroyers and frigates should each have their own strengths, but the optimized Yamato was currently the top in terms of speed, firepower, and anti-aircraft and anti-ship capabilities second only to aircraft carriers. Rain had no reason not to choose it. The ship's speed was fast enough, reaching 38 knots, and it had excellent anti-torpedo and anti-ship and anti-aircraft capabilities. But its anti-submarine capability was relatively poor. But the problem was, were there submarines in the King Class C area? Even if there were, there wouldn't be too many, and the anti-submarine rockets on the aircraft carrier should be enough to deal with them. In any case, in the aircraft carrier formation, the optimized Yamato would definitely occupy an important position. As the governor here, Rain enjoyed a 20% discount, and the income from the first month was enough to build the first frigate. Wow, this income is pretty good, Rain exclaimed excitedly. Although their tax revenue was much lower than that of the Terra King, the residents were living and working in peace and prosperity, making money, and everyone's enthusiasm was much higher, showing signs of economic recovery on the island. After handing over the pearls to Rain on the ship sent back by Shobe and Charge King, Old Bai and Tuward both approached Rain. Captain, both Shobe and Charge King have requested to recruit some crew locally. Whether it's buying slaves or directly recruiting, our manpower is too stretched right now, Old Bai said. Hmm, Rain furrowed his brows slightly and nodded. Indeed, we are short on manpower. Let them recruit, and they can decide the specifics. Report the expenses to Avril, and I'll have someone send the money over. Understood, Captain. While Lao Bai and Tuward were still there, Rain called a meeting with his core crew members. Everyone, after much consideration, I've made a decision, Rain said. Everyone looked at Rain eagerly. I've decided to make the Eastern Dawn Islands our base of operations in the King Class C. Fancy jumped up happily. Captain, I knew it. I knew you couldn't abandon the residents here. Rain shook his head. He was forced into this situation. Once the fleet was formed, he couldn't control all the ships alone. He needed to develop here for a while. True King, expand our manpower on the Eastern Dawn Island. Old Bai and Tuward, pass on a message to Charge King and Shogue to recruit more people locally. Establish a military force on the island to maintain order and absorb more crew members. There are many Stage 3 and 4 slaves here. Check their backgrounds and recruit them into our fleet. Yes, Captain. After the meeting, one bear and two bear quickly purchased materials and Rain built their first escort ship in the shipyard. It was docked next to the massive super battleship. Now, the banners of the dad were finally flying on two ships. I finally have my second warship. Great. Old Bai Tourward, you two can take this ship back. Wow, this is our original battleship. I've been wanting to take it out for a spin for a long time. Captain, we won't be polite then. Old Bai rubbed his hands together, looking eager. Old Bai, let me take it first. You can drive it when we get to Shobe's place. Sure, sure. I know you want to have some fun too. The two of them hooked their arms and led their people onto the ship, quickly departing from the port on the warship. In the second month, 
the income of the three islands increased by 10%, and Rain's total income reached 52,000 pearls. At the same time, the second optimized Yamato was completed. At this time, Rain had 19,000 pearls left. In the third month, due to Rain's purchase of a large number of materials, the income of the three islands increased by another 15%, reaching 60,000. With the previous income, the third and fourth optimized Yamato was built. In the fourth, fifth and sixth months, the economic development of the three islands gradually slowed down, maintaining an income of 63,000 pearls. Rain had built a total of eight optimized Yamatos and had savings of 23,000 pearls. As for the aircraft, the system currently provided six types, the Crusader Fighter, the Warning Aircraft, the Refueling Aircraft, the Jamming Aircraft, the Helicopter, and the Transport Aircraft. The most important one was the Fighter. Rain specifically checked the attributes of the Crusader Fighter. The Crusader Fighter was equipped with two Lightning 25mm light machine guns and could carry four missiles. Its practical ceiling was 18,000 meters, its speed was 1,000 kilometers per hour, and it could travel 1,200 kilometers without auxiliary fuel tanks, with a combat radius of 600 kilometers. There were three types of missiles suitable for the Crusader fighter, Hurricane Air-to-Air -air missiles, Hurricane Air-to-Ship missiles, and Hurricane Anti-Submarine missiles. Each aircraft could carry four missiles and could be freely combined. The performance of the Crusader fighter was about the level of a first-generation fighter, far from the top-level fighter strength known to Rain. However, Rain expected that in the King-class sea area, there were very few aircraft with combat capabilities, and the Crusader was sufficient. Because the fighter requires strict materials, all of them required the use of alloy materials. So even if the Crusader's technology level was only equivalent to a first-generation fighter, its cost was quite expensive requiring 24,000 pearls. Fortunately, the cost of other types of aircraft was cheap. In addition, the Crusader series of carrier-based aircraft and carrier formation could be directly connected to Rain's system, so Rain could control them actively or hand over control to the system or crew. This finally relieved Rain's worry. It was okay to let the crew control the ship, but it was better to let the system control the plane. Damn, it's so expensive. Rain's heart was bleeding. The fighter was so small and this carrier alone cost 5 million. The carrier is already burning money, and the carrier formation is even more expensive. Rain finally understood why previous great powers didn't dare to go all out and build aircraft carriers. It was because it was so expensive, like spending money as if it were flowing like water. Forget it, forget it. With the fighter jets, my strike capability is not weak at all. I have to build it no matter how expensive it is. Rain could only grit his teeth and continue to save money. Eight months later, the aircraft carrier was carrying 20 Crusader fighters, two warning planes, two refueling planes, two jamming planes, four helicopters, and transport planes. Rain didn't build everything, he saved as much money as possible. The aircraft carrier formation was already 80 to 90 percent complete, but it still lacked a submarine fleet. However, Rain didn't want to build it for now. According to local residents, Rain had confirmed that there were very few submarines in the King Class Sea. After all, the Azure era was not like the old days. The underwater environment in this era was too dangerous for humans. Fuck, I finally got my aircraft carrier formation done. Rain looked at the terrifying behemoth at the shipyard port. All eight optimized Yamato battleships were in Misty Island and Java Island. Only the soul of the aircraft carrier formation had been quietly parked in the shipyard all along. Although the ship was quietly parked here, the neatly arranged fighter jets on its deck were just like Rain's current mood eager to try. One Emperor, Nine Kings, are you ready? In the empty shipyard, only Rain's low voice could be heard. 204. Open low-level permissions. In the early morning, the brilliance of the rising sun illuminated the entire eastern Dawn Island. In June, the residents here got up early, and many were busy preparing to clean their boats and prepare for work at sea. On the mountain roads of the island, Hopeful people for the future had already opened their shops and were preparing to start their businesses. At this moment, someone shouted out, Oh my god, what kind of ship is that? People stopped in their tracks and looked toward the direction of the shipyard. A large ship slowly sailed out of the shipyard, with a very different appearance from other ships. If someone didn't know about it, they wouldn't even be able to find its firepower system. The deck of the ship was extremely flat, with no extra equipment only a command tower standing tall on the side of the ship. People stared in amazement at this different giant warship sailing out of the harbor. 
Is that our island's warship? Wait, what's parked on the deck of the ship? Drones? What drones? It's definitely not drones, that's... Oh my god, it's a fighter jet? Wow, it really is our ship. Look at the flag on the ship. It's the flag of dad. Look, it's Governor Rain. Is Governor Rain going to see? Bon voyage. After recruiting new soldiers for a period of time, Avril organized the 1,000-person island guard team. After Rain went to sea, these people were led by Bruce under Trucking's command and became the defensive force of the island. There were also 400 slaves who boarded the super battleship with Rain. Three days later, Shobe and Charge King met up with Rain with their own fleets. A total of eight optimized Yamato-class battleships formed a magnificent fleet, getting close to the aircraft carrier. Shobe and Charge King, together with the old sailors on their ships, boarded the aircraft carrier. Shobe patted Tick on the shoulder and said, Congratulations, Tick, on regaining your combat power. After being transformed by the Fire Heaven Crystal, Tick completely recovered his combat power. Not only that, but his current level was also at stage 4 level 8, one level higher than before. This news quickly spread to Shobe and the others, and everyone was happy for Tick. Tick laughed and said, Unfortunately, my level is still low, but I will work hard. I have studied training methods for so long, and I will definitely catch up with you. Ha ha ha, Tick, your competitiveness is back. That's great. This time, half of our old crew members have improved their strength by a large margin. If we encounter any one emperor or ten kings, we won't need the captain to take action. Wow, captain, are these fighter jets? I want to fly them. While chatting, Shob was still attracted by the fighter jets next to him. My dream since I was a child was to soar in the sky. Rain gave Shob a glare. Do you know smoking is prohibited on planes? Well, these planes don't need you guys to do anything for now. I will arrange it when the new crew members mature. In the crew position column, there was indeed an option for a pilot. But there weren't many planes for now, and the enemy's firepower wasn't too strong, since the system can control them autonomously. Rain decided to leave the planes to the system for now. Perhaps when there were more advanced planes in the future, or when facing stronger opponents or carrying out special missions, he would consider having someone control them. The carrier fleet was ready, and Rain gathered everyone to start reassigning their duties. Avril was designated as the vice captain of the super battleship and the deputy commander of the fleet. The eight optimized Yamato class ships were divided into two groups. The first group was the destroyer fleet, named ships two to five led by Shobe, with Tick, True Word, and Windbell as ship captains. The second group was the escort fleet, ships 6-9, led by Charge King, with Arson, Old Bai, and Armin as ship captains. In addition, 200 crew members were assigned to each ship. Most of the old crew members had been promoted to management positions. These people had experienced many battles with Rain and had become the backbone of the fleet. As for appointing ship captains, Rain only figured it out in the past half year. He couldn't control so many warships alone, let alone use the weapons on board to strike at the enemy. Rain was initially troubled by this, but by chance, he discovered that when a crew member is appointed as a ship captain or higher level position, they will receive some system permissions. Although they cannot upgrade or repair ships like Rain, they could control the power and weapon systems, which is enough to control the ships. I need to emphasize one thing. If any newcomers are not focused on the fleet, have questionable character, or are lazy, report it to me immediately. I don't want any of these people. Captain, don't worry, we know. Rain nodded. Now, each of you has the authority to accept missions on your own, and with your changed positions. You have level 2 and 4 command privileges over your ship's power and weapon systems. Avril has level 2 privileges and can control all ships. Shobe and Charge King have level 3 privileges and can control their respective fleets. The other captains have level 4 privileges can only control ship power systems and weapons systems. In principle, lower level privileges obey higher level privileges. I have made some radio equipment, and we can communicate directly between us. However, to prevent the equipment from being destroyed, each of you should wear a screw cap. Radio equipment? Captain, what is that? Charge King asked curiously. It's a device that allows us to communicate remotely, but the range is not very far up to 10 nautical miles at most. Rain took out 20 wireless walkie-talkies. These were treasures that Rain found in the manufacturing list. Most of the other fleets lacked such advanced communication equipment, and the Terra King fleet was sunk in large part due to their outdated communication devices, which caught them off guard. Rain's warship had already been upgraded to the aircraft carrier stage, 
and the wireless walkie-talkie had been unlocked as well. However, the consumables were too scarce and could not be purchased with money alone, so Rain had only made 20 units. Rain gave two units to each person. I've already tuned the channels. We have three channels. One is the destroyer fleet, which is Shob's internal channel. You four can tune into this channel for internal communication. The second is the escort fleet channel, which is used by Charge King. When fighting in a specific area, tune into this channel for easy communication. The last one is the bounty group channel, where you can chat with each other. Then, Rain demonstrated how to use the equipment. When you speak, press this button, and others can hear you. When you release the button, the sound won't go out. Try it. Hey, can you hear me? I can hear your voice. Can you hear me? Let's try another channel. Although this equipment was relatively primitive compared to modern warships, the lack of GPS in the Azure Blue made many technologies unusable, and the loss of scientific and technological civilization made everyone very curious about the wireless walkie-talkie. The group had a lot of fun playing with it. 205. Mountain King. After a dozen minutes, several people had become familiar with the use of the intercom. Okay, go back to your own ships and try controlling them. Soon, these people returned to their own ships, and next, the eight optimized Yamato ships began happily circling around the super battleship. Captain, oh I mean, Commander, I got it. This is so awesome. Shob's excited voice came through the intercom. Boom! The fourth battleship fired a shot toward the distant sea. Boom boom boom! The fifth, sixth and seventh battleships followed suit. So agile, so convenient. Commander, this control is so cool. Even the usually calm Armin was shouting into the intercom. The gun barrels on several ships moved flexibly, and before long, someone's unmanned drone took off. Rain turned his head, seeing the gun doors on the carrier's ship's side already open, with Avril happily playing around. These little idiots, I begin to regret giving them permissions. Rain shook his head, saying helplessly. After some organization, the dad team set sail, even though they didn't have sails now. Eight optimized Yamato ships and a carrier ship sailed mightily on the sea surface. Rain looked at the surrounding battleships and took a deep breath. Ha ha ha. Having a fleet is really different. This momentum is so frightening. Armin had now been promoted to captain. So Rain, Avril, and Fancy sat at the captain's table, studying the nautical chart. Captain. I mean, commander. I always get a little confused. Avril smiled and said. What captain or commander? Do I look like someone who cares about fame and fortune? Call me whatever, just be a little casual. Rain didn't care at all. Commander, Armin marked the positions of all the other enemies before. According to our previously planned route, the first one we will encounter is the King of the Mountain, Austin's fleet. Avril said, Austin's fleet is divided into five. But we heard from passing ships that after learning about the Terra King's fleet being wiped out, they seem to be operating together now. Fancy said the Mountain King has five fleets? That's even more powerful than the Terra King. There might be over 450 warships. Rain Chan, do you think we can win? Avril chuckled, Rain Chan. Fancy looked serious. Avril, it doesn't matter what we call him. He lets us be a little casual, right? Rain looked at Fancy with displeasure. He said be a little casual. But this is too casual. She was becoming more mischievous as she grew older. She used to be a cute little girl. Be a little casual my foot. If others hear this... Do I still have any dignity left? Call me big brother. You're not bigger than me and Avril. How am I not? If we go by age, you should call me. Never mind, being your boss is more than enough. Rain lived over 400 years ago, and his seniority was very high. If he were to be addressed properly, father would be too light, and at least great-great-great-grandfather would be appropriate. Fancy tilted her head and thought, Okay, boss it is. Rain held his forehead. They were supposed to be here to discuss tactics. Actually. There's nothing more to discuss. Although over 500 warships are very strong, Rain's optimized Yamato alone can take out at least 200 of them. The Mountain King's strength is no longer sufficient. Ahem, well I'm going out for a walk. Rain went out. Only Avril and Fancy were left in the room. The two women were having a heated conversation about something. While Rain was outside, feeling the cold wind blowing. Rain leaned on the railing and watched Black's huge figure appear and disappear in the water. He called out to Black. Blacka, when you return to your parents, please put in a good word for me. Blacka popped its head out of the water and happily sprayed water from its nostrils, splashing rain. Ha ha ha, don't be silly, Rain said. Rain was actually a little reluctant to let Blacka go back to its parents. But if Blacka would prefer to live with its parents, Rain wouldn't force it. 
Their speed was currently maintained at 30 knots, and they would enter the territory of the Mountain King, Austin, in about five days. Four days later, before the fleet officially entered Austin's jurisdiction, the system sounded the alarm. The system did not provide accurate data because this was data detected by the ship's radar, not directly by Rain's system. A large number of ships were detected 50 kilometers away from them. Rain frowned slightly and immediately ordered, All ships, reduce speed and prepare for battle, the Mountain King is only 50 kilometers ahead. 206. Conservative Tactic The eight captains, upon hearing Rain's command, rushed to the radar control room as if infused with renewed energy. Upon the radar screen, Ships could be seen densely packed in a neat formation, numbering at a staggering 514. Rain, holding a radio transmitter, spoke with an air of authority. This marks our first group battle, and I have decided to adopt a conservative tactic. Shobe, wearing a look of confusion, attempted to clarify, Captain, may I inquire what exactly is meant by a conservative tactic? Four destroyers engage. The crew waited in anticipation for a response. Until Charge King's voice broke the silence, Captain, is that all? Yes. That is the conservative tactic? Oh? Do you think there are too many ships deployed? How about three then? The radio was silent once again. Four ships against 500 plus vessels? This was the conservative tactic of the captain. Indeed very conservative. Captain, no, that's not what I meant. Your tactical arrangement is very reasonable and requires no further modification. Charge King hastily interjected. Rain nodded in satisfaction. Very well then, Shobe, it's up to you now. Shobe broke out in a cold sweat. He and Charge King had both served in the Navy and had held command roles before, but they had never encountered a situation where four ships were facing off against 514. The tension was palpable. At this moment, everyone saw ten fighter planes take off from the aircraft carrier. Upon seeing these ten hurricane fighters, Shobe finally breathed a sigh of relief. The captain was indeed taking a cautious approach. With these ten weapons at their disposal, there was really nothing to worry about. Roger that, Captain. Destroyer fleet, please switch to destroyer frequency and acknowledge receipt. Number three, tick, received. Number four, true word, received. Number five, wind bell, received. Very well, all ships accelerate. Maintain a speed of 33 knots. With the second ship in the lead, the fifth ship at the rear, and the third and fourth ships on either flank. Maintain formation and proceed forward. All defensive shields on. Machine gunners prepare. Shobe commanded with great skill. Prepare to launch torpedoes. Aye, sir. Meanwhile, the ten hurricane fighters had taken off, zooming quickly overhead. Shobe led his fleet and broke away from the main force, rushing towards the king of the mountain fleet ahead. Soon, the sound of intense gunfire could be heard in the distance. What's that? Fighter jets. Are you kidding me? Why are there fighter jets in a King-class sea area? Where are the anti-aircraft guns? Quick, load, and aim. Captain, the planes are out of range. Damn it, where did these planes come from? At that moment, a large number of ship's hulls were hit by torpedoes around them. Captain, our ship has been hit by torpedoes. We don't know what type of torpedoes they are, but they are incredibly destructive and cannot be repaired. Captain, another batch of torpedoes is coming. Our torpedo boats have all been sunk. Captain, the planes above U.S. seem to have dropped something. Captain, enemy ships spotted. They are firing. Austin was at a loss. Just a moment ago everything was calm, but suddenly, his fleet was under multiple attacks. In the blink of an eye, 80 to 90 ships were already silent, and the planes hovering above them were even more terrifying. What they dropped was obviously not Christmas presents. An armored battleship had been blown to pieces by one shell. What the hell is going on? Which fleet has such a powerful attack? Quick, organize a counterattack. Damn it, are they only four ships? Austin couldn't believe his eyes. After confirming through his telescope, Austin roared in anger. All ships, hit them hard. You think you can take me down with only four ships? You're delusional. The enemy warships had already appeared, but there were only four ships. This not only made Austin think he had the upper hand but also made him even more furious because of the enemy's contempt. However, the nightmare was just beginning. The king of the mountain fleet began to move quickly. It seemed that they didn't care about any action that Austin's fleet was taking. Explosions erupted from all four enemy warships at the same time, producing terrifying flames. A large number of shells came whistling in with the roar of the guns. Boom 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 boom. A true carpet bombing. 
The king of the mountain fleet couldn't even break through the enemy's blockade of firepower. The planes in the sky began to drop air-to-ship missiles. These planes were flying at a much higher altitude than drones, and their anti-aircraft guns posed no threat to the enemy. It was a continuous barrage, a carpet bombing that covered the entire area. The sky, the sea and even torpedoes from under the sea bombarded the Mountain King fleet multiple times, creating a terrifying scene of flames covering the entire sea. Even the crew members of the Mountain King fleet, including one of the Ten Kings, were scared to death in the face of such terrifying firepower. Help me! Somebody save me! My God, who are they? No, they are not human! I have never seen such a terrifying attack before. This is too terrifying! We haven't even seen their faces and we are already about to be destroyed. We have no chance. We must escape now. The most frustrated one was naturally the Mountain King, Austin. He could only lower his head and avoid the terrifying bombardment from all directions. Why are they attacking us? They didn't even ask us. Who is this psycho? Did they come back from the Dragon Class C area? Unfortunately, no one could answer him. Faced with such insane and all-round bombardment, other warships had already started sinking without even having the chance to fight back. These more than 500 warships, which were once imposing, were now engulfed in flames, sinking or burning, and the crew members were either wailing, escaping from one ship to another, or jumping into the sea to save their lives. The three hours of fighting became a demonstration of the four Yamato-class battleships' firepower, and after three hours, only one ship and warship remained. Rain was now watching the entire process of the battle with Fancy and Avril sitting in a helicopter. Seeing the Mountain King fleet being completely wiped out in one go, Fancy and Avril were speechless. This is too strong. They are one of the ten kings in the King Class C area, and we only sent four ships to wipe them out without any damage. Captain, are we really this fierce? Rain snorted coldly, of course. The more modern the warfare is, the larger the gap in technology between the two sides. Ah, if only we had sent three ships. Look at those four ships. They are firing so many bullets like they are free. Fancy looked at Rain. After fighting to this point, the captain was still not satisfied. Avril knew Rain better. This guy was a black pro pincher. 207. Abundant loot. Austin was still in a state of confusion. The enemy's four battleships had the effect of 400 warships. Under the firepower of the enemy, he had no ability to fight back and only had his flagship left. Wait a minute. Wasn't he one of the ten kings of the King Class C? How could he be beaten like this? They are so strong. Who are they? Are they deaths? Austin's eyes were full of horror, and the enemy's strength had exceeded his knowledge. As he watched the four super warships slowly move towards him, Austin became increasingly nervous. At this moment, something even more terrifying happened. More warships appeared in the distance, and their appearance was exactly the same as the four Death God warships. They still have warships that haven't been deployed. Austin's subordinates were shocked, which meant that the enemy hadn't even used all their strength. Wait, what kind of warship is that? There are planes on the deck? Finally, Austin saw the most terrifying existence a larger battleship than the four death battleships. The shape of the warship was completely different from that of a typical battleship, and more planes were parked on the deck, with completed missions landing on it from time to time. Although there were no cannons visible on the ship, under the protection of the four death battleships, this huge beast showed an unshakable king-like status. Without any introduction needed, Austin was already sure that it was the leader of this entire fleet of steel ships, the big boss. Soon, several helicopters brought the people from those ships to the king of the mountain. Rain and his crew landed. The weapons system of the king of the mountain was severely damaged, but Shobe and his team did not completely sink the ship, and there were still several hundred crew members on board. They stood behind Austin, watching Rain and his team as if they were facing a great enemy. Rain calmly walked up to Austin with White by his side. You're Austin, right? He asked. Austin was on high alert. Yes, and who are you guys? Why did you suddenly attack us? This is a violation of the joint declaration on sea battles by major forces in the King Class C. Rain shook his head. Do I have to tell you before I attack you? And as for that joint declaration, I'm not a major force in the King Class C. So why should I follow that thing? Austin was momentarily speechless. Rain didn't intend to waste any more words on him and got straight to the point. You have two choices in front of you now. The first is to fight us with all the people and power you have here. If you win, you'll turn the tables. However, I have to warn you about something. If you choose to fight, you can refer to what happened to the Swamp King's crew. I don't leave many survivors. 
The second choice is to give me what I want, and I'll leave this ship to you. You have 10 seconds to decide. If you take too long, it means you choose the first option by default. Rain was extremely dissatisfied with the system forcing him to choose a gift, and now he could finally let someone else experience this feeling. 10 9 8 at this point, thousands of fuck were running wild in Austin's heart. This guy was too arrogant. How could he negotiate like this? He had to make a decision within 10 seconds. Was this gambling? This was a matter of destiny. 3, 2, 1. I choose. Austin shouted, the second option. Obviously, Austin didn't have much choice. This team of this death fleet must be the same group that took down the Swamp King. Austin's strength was not much different from Charles's and his advantage lay in the strength of his fleet. But now, his fleet no longer existed. If they could easily take down the Swamp King, they could easily take down Austin's crew too. Of course, Rain's confidence and strength during the negotiation also made Austin uncertain. With such a powerful fleet, it was unlikely that their crew was weak. If they were really weak, their fleet would have been taken over by others long ago. It could only be said that Austin's judgment was correct. Fortunately, they didn't choose to resist. Rain nodded. Not completely stupid. One bear and two bear immediately led their men to search the captain's cabin for treasure. Soon, they found the treasure chest. Captain, we also found the map. Two bear reported to Rain as he brought the treasure chest to him. As one bear was returning, he suddenly stopped and frowned at the crew. Hey, hand over all the pearls you have on you. One bear, the professional looter, lived up to his name. And now, since all of the crew members were alive, he wouldn't let them go easily. Two crew members followed one bear, carrying a bag, and the crew of the Mountain King reluctantly threw their money bags into it. This was quite a decent income. There weren't too many pearls in the treasure chest, only around 70 to 80 thousand, so Rain only glanced at them before picking up a small wooden box from the chest. Inside were several skill books and some other treasure maps. On top of it all, there was an open cowhide envelope containing a map of the Mirage area. Rain scanned it with his system. Unfortunately, the Mountain King's map location couldn't be directly connected to the Swamp King's map. It seemed that they would have to find more maps. Anyway, they had already obtained the Hill King's treasure map. Austin quickly asked, We gave you everything. Can you let us go now? Rain glanced at Austin and replied, Although your reputation is pretty crappy, it's not bad compared to the Ten Kings. So, you can go, but it's best not to let me see you again. If you dare to be my enemy again, I won't go easy on you. After Rain and his crew left, the Mountain King's ship quickly fled. But Rain didn't fully trust them. He dispatched an early warning aircraft with two extra fuel tanks to secretly track the Mountain King's ship. If they dared to play any tricks, Rain wouldn't let them get away with it. Next, the most important thing was undoubtedly to salvage the treasure chests. They now had nine ships, each with at least 200 crew members, all of whom were mutants. This salvage speed was nothing short of terrifying. After more than three hours, they found a total of 377 treasure chests, as well as a large number of materials such as metal and gunpowder. Rain left the work of counting the loot to Avril, and he himself quickly replenished the ammunition for the four destroyers. In the evening, everyone rested on the sea surface, gathering in the command tower of the aircraft carrier. Captain, this time we obtained a total of 2.3 million pearls, as well as 48 low-level skill books, 20 intermediate level skill books, and 3 high level skill books. We also got 18 intermediate level treasure maps of the King Class C area. We also got 50 rare metal ingots, a design for a water based hoverboard, and a bank book from the Gold Foot Merchant Bank, worth 3.2 million. We also got a pass for the major powers in the King Class C area and an invitation card for Pandora Island's annual meeting. Oh, and this? This is an invitation letter for the legendary Lieutenant General Trajan's granddaughters. Contest for marriage? Avril was a bit confused about what this invitation was. It seems to be in a month. You mean Lieutenant General Trajan? Shob and Charge King exclaimed in unison. From their expressions, it seemed that they were very familiar with this legendary admiral. 208. Trajan the legendary captain. Fancy asked curiously, who is Trajan? He is my idol. Charge King exclaimed, a truly righteous and legendary captain. When talking about his idol, Charge King became excited. I've researched his life. Although his mutation ability is extremely powerful, he voluntarily started as an ordinary naval officer in the unmanned area trading market. Shob nodded and said yes, many naval officers are willing to start in the unmanned area. Many of them are inspired by General Trajan. 
He only took eight months to go from private to sergeant, corporal, sergeant, master sergeant, and two years later, he was promoted to lieutenant. During his term, within a range of 500 nautical miles around the trading market in his jurisdiction, no sea monster or pirate dared to approach. Later, he moved to the human class sea area, and it only took him four years to defeat 120 pirate groups and kill more than 30 sea monsters. In the beast class sea area, he defeated the blood roar pirates, the king of beasts fleet at the time, and forced the other two kings of beasts, azure blood and wilderness overlord pirates, into the sea of despair, where they did not dare to step into the area under his jurisdiction for ten years. He defeated the top elite level E10 sea monster giant Octopus Alice, which had ravaged the beast class sea area for twenty years. He defeated countless other sea monsters. Twenty years ago, he came to the king class sea area, and he became famous by killing the strongest sea monster in the king class sea area, the Hell Mermaid King. At that time, he was the strongest king in the entire king class sea area and no one dared to compete with him. The reason why Pandora could become the only neutral island in the King-class sea area was that General Trajan was stationed there. It has remained unshakable for so many years. Shob also knew Trajan's past well and could recount it in detail. It was evident that he also greatly admired the naval lieutenant general. Charge King took a deep breath. Later, one year after General Trajan went to the Dragon-class sea area, he was dissatisfied with the Navy's style and wanted to leave the Navy. However, the Navy refused to let him go, but General Trajan was stubborn and led his fleet back to the King-class sea area. In theory, disobeying orders and leaving one's post in the Navy should result in military law enforcement. However, because General Trajan's reputation was too great, the Navy's high-level executives eventually compromised, allowing him to remain stationed on Pandora Island. Rain frowned slightly. Having listened to the life story of this legendary naval captain, he couldn't help but feel a hint of admiration. Rain couldn't help but exclaim, I never thought that in this era, there would still be people who could live their whole lives with integrity. Captain, should we go and check out this tournament for marriage? Even if we don't participate in the matchmaking, we could at least see General Trajan with our own eyes, and maybe even get his autograph. Charge King looked excitedly towards Rain, his eyes full of anticipation. Rain thought for a moment, we still have time, it's not a bad idea to go and see. I've never seen this kind of scene before. Austin's leisure life was so rich, much more comfortable than me. Rain shook his head, it's always year-end meetings and tournaments, and nobody ever invites me. Armand couldn't help but laugh, Captain, of course no one invites you. You just arrived in the King Class Sea area and wiped out all the fleets you encountered. Rain thought about it, it seemed like that was true. He had only encountered three fleets so far, the one blocking him in the Satan Abyss, Swamp King's fleet, and Mountain King's fleet, and he had wiped them all out. He wondered if the King Class C area was unfriendly to him, or if he was unfriendly to the King Class C area. Well then, since the opportunity is rare, let's just go to Pandora Island directly, and maybe we can increase our bounty group's level while we're at it. Rain shook his head, maybe we can even take on some higher level missions in the future. After all, we need more options to make money. Rain and his team decided to go to the tournament to broaden their horizons, but they still needed to clear out the spoils from Mountain King S fleet first. Apart from the things on the ship, Austin's most valuable assets were clearly his islands. Mountain King had four islands under his jurisdiction, but this guy's luck didn't seem to be good. The easternmost island, East Para Island, had already sunk, similar to Swamp King's East Sulphur Island. Speaking of which, East Para Island and East Sulphur Island seem to have some similarities in location, both being in the Far East. The fact that both islands sunk at the same time made one wonder if there was some connection between them. Unfortunately, if there were only two islands with similar situations, even Armin couldn't determine if there was a connection between them. More reference cases were needed to make a judgment. The resources on East Para Island had already been salvaged by the returning Austin, so Rain didn't bother scavenging there. His target was the remaining three islands. Time was not on their side, so Rain divided the fleet into three squadrons. Shob and Charge King went to the furthest Aryan Island and the middle Fuji Island, respectively, while Rain's carrier, which had the slowest speed, went to the prosperous Booming Island with Armin and Arson. Upon arriving at Booming Island, Rain discovered that Austin's rule was no different from Charles's. The tax on the island was even higher, reaching 92% of profits. The island's residents were completely treated as free slaves by Austin, working day and night. 
If they couldn't make a profit, they would even be expelled from the island. For these ordinary residents, being expelled from the island was almost equivalent to a death sentence. Divorce and separation were too common on the island, and the residents dared not speak out, living in terror every day. However, the reason why Rain didn't kill Austin and his crew, apart from their voluntary surrender, was that this guy, although he didn't regard the residents as human beings, at least didn't have the quirks of Charles, he didn't eat people. Not eating people is already a good moral character, Rain shook his head. His standards were getting lower and lower. Avril and the others were already experienced in managing islands. After arriving on the island, they quickly seized the governor's office, changed the flag, and took the deposit of the Mountain King fleet from the Gold Foot Pearl Bank. They then announced a new tax system, recruited a self-defense force on the island, purchased high-level slaves, and supplemented the bounty group's power. Half a month later, after leaving some old sailors to guard the islands, the Dad fleet converged in the western waters of Fuji Island. Shobe and Charge King moved the pearls onto the carrier, and now they had 5.5 million pearls in savings. This large sum of money could expand a large number of fleets, but Rain was not in a hurry. First, there weren't too many suitable candidates to be captains, so he had to ensure that each ship had enough crew combat power and not let all the elderly crew become captains. Secondly, Rain thought his fleet's current strength was temporary enough to roam the King Class C, so he would save up some money. After all, he still needed to level up himself. Too bare, this young man has a good character. He's a rare shark-toothed dragon mutation and has great potential. I've arranged for him to be part of the strength in this time. True Word walked up to Too Bear with a young man. Rain had not forgotten about the strength of the crew members. Almost all the elderly crew members who were suitable for strengthening had already been reinforced. Rain had left the quota to the various captains to recommend candidates, and the task of arranging was also left to Too Bear. After handling these trivial matters, everyone stood behind Rain. Captain, are you planning to participate in the matchmaking competition this time? Show Bast with a cigarette in his mouth. Me? I can't possibly participate. Which one of you wants to try? The invitation says there are five spots available, Rain said indifferently, his eyes full of disdain. Matchmaking competition? What a joke. What if it was an ugly woman? Wouldn't that ruin his happiness? This kind of thing was definitely not a joke. If you're not going, Captain, then let me try, One Bear said anxiously. I'm already 30 years old and still don't have a girlfriend. One bear, I'm older than you, and I don't have one either. Captain, let me go. If I win, General Trajan will be my father-in-law. Just thinking about it makes me excited, another crew member said. Uh, Captain, I'm single too, Shobe stuttered. 209, Pandora Island. The dad fleet sailed westward, heading straight for Pandora Island. When they were 50 nautical miles away from Pandora Island, a waterborne dock appeared on the sea surface resembling a trading market in a no-man's land. This kind of artificial dock on the sea is rarely seen except in calm and desolate areas. The planks of the trading area in the no-man's land were suspended on the sea surface without any foundation. They were only tied to the bottom to prevent them from being washed away by the wind and waves. However, Rain had already seen the metal base of these sea planks, which were actually anchored in the underwater rocks. The artificial dock here was at least several kilometers long. This project required a lot of metal and most importantly, building such a large-scale artificial dock was extremely difficult and required a lot of sea-type mutants to work underwater. No wonder he's a legendary captain, he's really bold. Rain couldn't help but marvel. He was certain that he couldn't build such an artificial dock around an island. Many ships were docked in front of the dock, including the fleets that had several hundred. However, no matter how large the fleet was, all ships would be parked at the dock. While Rain was hesitating about whether he should stop here, Two figures plunged from the sky and landed smoothly on Rain's aircraft carrier. These two people were wearing the uniform of a naval lieutenant, white military uniforms with blue outerwear, and a pair of wings on their backs. After landing, the two men looked around at the surrounding aircraft, and were somewhat surprised. However, they did not stay long and walked up to Rain and the others with great professionalism. Excuse me, which one of you is the leader of this fleet? I am Rain said. And who are you two? Huh? Ethan? Evan, Shobe exclaimed in surprise among the people behind Rain. Shobe? What are you doing here? The two men also saw the tall Shobe and were surprised. Ha ha ha, I'm one of the captains of the dad now. Come on, let me introduce you to the commander. Captain, they are my former comrades. After some introduction, 
Rain learned that the two men had worked with Sho before and had a good relationship due to their similar temperament. Unexpectedly, they were now working under General Trajan. After hearing each other's stories, Shobe and the brothers couldn't help but sigh. Ten years had passed, and the three of them who had once shared the same dream were now in different positions. One had become the captain of a bounty fleet, while the other two had followed General Trajan and were living a somewhat reclusive life. Oh, by the way, Captain Rain, Ethan brought the topic back. Are you guys also here for the tournament? Rain nodded. His crew members were eager to go, so he had no intention of stopping them. This is the invitation we snatched. I don't know if it's valid. Ethan took the invitation from Rain and quickly glanced at it. Oh, this is no problem. The invitations we sent out don't have names on them. As long as you have an invitation, it's fine. However, your invitation is a sea level one, so you only have five spots. You need to park your fleet here and take our small boat to Pandora Island. You can bring a maximum of ten people. Rain couldn't help but be surprised. After all, Austin was one of the ten kings of the King Class C, and he only got a sea level invitation. It didn't seem very prestigious, but Rain didn't dwell on it. He was only here to watch the show. So how does this tournament work? Shobe asked. Ethan and Evan were old friends with Shobe, and they had nothing to hide from him. Oh, we will choose three candidates, and these three will have to fight our young lady. If they can defeat her, they will have the chance to stay until the end. What if all three candidates defeat your young lady? Shobe asked. Ethan and his brother smiled at each other. Shobe, General Trajan doesn't allow us to reveal too much, but let's just say, don't underestimate our young lady. It seemed that the two were very confident in their young lady's abilities. As government officials, Ethan and Evan were responsible for managing the docking of ships here, so they were very busy. After a brief chat, they got down to business. Captain Rain, you need to choose ten people. What do you think? Rain nodded. His ship was parked here, and even though the Xian brothers promised that no one would touch it, he was still a little worried. In the end, based on everyone's strong desires, a total of ten people followed Rain to Pandora Island. Rain, Fancy, Armin, Shobe, One Bear, Two Bear, Charge King, True Word, Shane, and a newcomer named Lindy, who had recently shown impressive performance. Due to Shobe's relationship, Rain also managed to get White on board. The Pandora was a passenger ship that could accommodate 40 to 50 people. Rain and his group waited until enough people had gathered to fill the ship before setting off to the island. As the ship sailed on the sea, the people on board were excited, looking forward to the competition. I heard that the one emperor and the ten kings will all be coming this time. General Trajan really has a big face, someone said. Of course, General Trajan is a legendary captain in the King Class C, and even the Ice Emperor would not dare to call himself a legendary captain. Being able to marry into General Trajan's family is like reaching the sky in one step, another person replied. By the way, has anyone seen General Trajan's granddaughter? I haven't. But to be honest, the last time I came to Pandora Island, I saw General Trajan. Although he has an impressive presence, he doesn't seem to be very good looking. Maybe his granddaughter isn't that pretty either. Hey, pretty or not doesn't matter. There are few beautiful women at sea. The key is status. That is an unimaginable status. Rain secretly listened to their conversation and agreed with them to some extent. There weren't many beautiful women at sea, and there weren't many on his ship. Fancy was undeniably beautiful, like a girl who had walked out of an anime, but the problem was that she was a bit, hmm, thick. Avril was quite pretty, but she had freckles on her face, which didn't affect her overall appearance too much but detracted from her perfect skin tone. Armin was relatively quiet, but she seemed to like holding a book all day which made her a bit less lively. Arson had a perfect body proportions, but she was a bit too tall at 1.8 meters, which was a bit intimidating. Rain still wasn't sure what True Queen looked like. She always dressed like her brother, hiding in a black robe, and her figure couldn't be seen. Windbell didn't like to dress up, and she had a bad temper. It seemed like all the women who followed True King had a bad temper. Rain held this opinion, but as people around him discussed more and more, their eyes fell upon Fancy and Armin. A few whispered under their breaths. Wow, that girl is so beautiful. I've never seen a girl so beautiful before. She's beautiful indeed. If General Trajan's granddaughter looked like her, I would definitely give it a try. The other woman is beautiful as well. She's my type. My god, she's my goddess. I really like her. What fleet are they from? Let me check when I get back. Rain was indifferent to the hushed whispers of these people. If they dared to provoke him, they would only be asking for trouble. Soon, 
A small passenger ship docked, and Rain and his people were the first to disembark. Sir, please show your invitation and confirm the participant for the tournament. Rain handed over the invitation and turned to the crew. Who wants to go? One bear, two word, Shane, and Lindy signed up. Hmm? Two bear, aren't you going? Captain, it's not appropriate for me to compete with my brother. I'll just skip it. I'll cheer for my brother, Two Bear said regretfully. All right. Shob, what about you? Didn't you say you were going to participate? You're not exactly young anymore. Captain, Ethan said I'm past the age limit, Shob said, holding a cigar and shaking his head. What's wrong with being 35? Can't I pursue happiness at 35? Shob, let it go. You're like me, just here to see our idol, Charge King said, stopping Shob by the shoulder. You guys. I should have asked someone else to come, Rain grumbled. Well, then it's just the four of us. We'll take four spots, Rain said, turning to the staff with an indifferent expression. 210. The rules of the contest for marriage. Did you only register four people? That's a waste of a spot, the staff member exclaimed, looking at Rain and his group in astonishment as if he had witnessed something unimaginable. So far, no one has ever wasted such a valuable opportunity. Rain didn't mind. He had heard the story of Trajan, and he admired the Admiral. However, he admired the Admiral himself, not his granddaughter. Yes, only four, Rain said confidently. Okay, the staff member shook his head and made a note before counting out ten keys from a drawer and placing them on a map. He then handed them to Rain. You will be in rooms 205 to 215 in the fourth dormitory building. Please keep the interior clean and the equipment in good condition. If there is any damage, you will have to compensate accordingly. Just return the keys after the competition. Rain took the keys and led the group toward the island. As they entered the island's protective wall, the legendary island gradually appeared before them. The island was planned similarly to Rain's base island, but it was much larger, at least seven or eight times larger than several of Rain's base islands combined. The island was divided into various functional areas, such as residential areas, trading areas, manufacturing areas, activity areas, etc each of which was divided by green belts or food crop belts. The transportation on the island was well connected, and although the streets were not wide, they were very clean. The shops along the street were bustling, and the island's residents had an extremely rare sense of comfort and happiness on their faces. If it weren't for the fact that the buildings here were relatively short, the houses were densely packed, and there were no modern transportation vehicles on the street, there would be almost no difference between this place and a small island in the civilization era. General Trajan's island is indeed different, Charge King exclaimed. Armin also said, I have read about this island in many books. People call it the Paradise Island of the King Class C area. Those who are lucky enough to live here are chosen by God. There is also the most comprehensive library in the entire Azure era here. Armin's eyes lit up as she spoke. It was because of this library that Avril gave up her spot to Armin. But for now, Rain led the group to the dormitory first. The residential area had rows of three-story small buildings. In this era, due to frequent geology changes and the complicated geological structure of the island, it was very rare to have a building with three floors. These houses should have been built with deep foundations, Shob said. The most important thing is General Trajan's courage. Most islands don't build such buildings because they're not even sure they can defend their own islands. Only people with the great courage of General Trajan dare to build such a large-scale residential area. After admiring the layout of the residential area, Rain and the others found their own rooms to settle in. The rooms weren't very large, but they weren't furnished with much either. They were simple and spacious, enough for one person to live in comfortably. As soon as they settled in, Armin wanted to go to the library. Since everyone wanted to go out for a walk, Rain went out with them. Five days later, the contest for marriage began. Rain and the others went to the naval training ground where the arena was set up. Captain, look, there are so many people in groups here. There must be at least three or four thousand people here. With so many people, the top fleets in the King Class C area have probably gathered here. Surprisingly, Rain and the others had a good spot. They were in the front row, perhaps because it was associated with the Austin, one of the ten kings. They had ten seats together, five in the first row and five in the second row, with a great view. Come to think of it, this was Rain's first time participating in a contest for marriage. This kind of thing only happened in ancient times but he never thought he would encounter it in the Azure era. Rain was also a bit excited. The design of the competition arena was very unique. It was about half the size of a soccer field, and it was about three meters above the ground. 
The arena had irregularly shaped pieces of ground, some large, some small, some connected, and some independent. The other parts were all water. Interestingly, if Rain looked at the water surface from above, the color was dark and the visibility was low. But if he looked through the tempered glass on the side of the arena, you could see the underwater part clearly. Rain thought for a moment. This should be a place where underwater mutants fight. They simulated the situation of sea surface battles, so people in the arena couldn't see the underwater situation clearly. However, the referees had to judge the underwater situation, so they could see the situation inside from the side. It looks like they're going to have a big melee on both water and underwater, Rain murmured. The audience seats quickly filled up. Rain turned around and looked. Were these people all members of the King-class Sierra fleets? Rain wondered who the one emperor and ten kings were. In any case, it was impossible to distinguish now. Among the people present, about half of them were probably going to participate in the competition, and people's discussions could be heard around them. Has General Trajan come out yet? I'm a bit nervous. What are the rules again? I still don't know the rules. All I know is that the top three will compete against Miss Olivia. Nervous my ass. Just one word, fight. Of course, you don't know the rules yet. To ensure that no one cheats, General Trajan said that the rules will be announced on site during the competition. Has General Trajan's granddaughter come out yet? I want to see what she looks like first. The person craned their neck and looked toward the president's platform behind the arena. At this moment, six or seven people walked up to the platform on the east side of the arena, causing a stir in the audience. Wow, that's General Trajan, my idol. He's a legendary captain with only three defeats in his entire life. Super powerful. Look the girl with the mask. Could she be Trajan's niece? Rain also looked towards the platform. Among the seven people, there were five men and two women, all dressed in naval uniforms and wearing naval caps. The man standing in the middle was an old man. Although he was old, his physique was exceptionally burly, not inferior to the four sturdy men beside him. The old man had a resolute face and a spirit ten times better than many young people. Rain frowned slightly. This was the legendary captain, Trajan. He indeed had an extraordinary bearing. The girl next to the old man was about 1.7 meters tall, wearing a white silk shirt with rolled up sleeves, revealing a fair half arm, and white naval pants. However, she wore a white cap mask on her face, showing a pair of bright eyes and slightly downturned pink lips. From her facial shape, features, and figure, it was hard to find any flaws, making people feel the urge to take off her mask. A staff member brought a microphone over, and Trajan took it and spoke. First of all, I would like to thank everyone for giving me respect and coming to Pandora Island from afar to participate in my granddaughter's contest for marriage. Since everyone is here for it, I'll cut to the chase. The rules of the competition are that each person will show their abilities, and I hope everyone will stop at a certain point. This is my granddaughter's happy day, and I don't want any unpleasant incidents to happen. If the situation is a tie, I will make a fair judgment. However, if anyone intentionally injures their opponent, or even causes death, I will not only disqualify them but also punish them. I believe there aren't many people who can deceive me. The audience below was silent. Twenty-five people will compete in each round. The loser is the one who falls off the arena or voluntarily surrenders until we have one winner. Now Scout, you announce the first round's list. Trajan handed the microphone to his assistant. Everyone present became nervous because the scout had already taken out the list and started calling names. The first match was about to begin. 2-11. All eliminated. One bear actually appeared in the first match. He was really unlucky. One bear was a little nervous, and everyone quickly cheered him on. Bro, don't be scared. Just go for it. Bring back a sister-in-law for me. One bear, you're really strong. Beat them all. Come on, teach them a lesson. One bear didn't feel any better but rather felt even more pressure. The 25 people in the first match had all entered the arena, standing evenly spaced apart from each other. Scout counted the number of people and then said, You all understand the rules. This is a friendly match. Don't be too vicious. If the fight is too close to call, we will make a decision. We just want to see your best performance. All right, the match. Begin. The promise friendly was instantly gone after the start. Immediately, seven or eight people jumped into the water. Apparently they were underwater mutants. On land, more than 10 people chose to transform immediately. In a moment, various mutated forms such as wolves, bears, tigers, and lions filled the arena. One bear also completed his transformation and locked onto the guy next to him who had not yet transformed. According to one bear's inference, this guy might be an underwater mutant but didn't want to reveal himself too early. 
pretending to be mysterious. Looking for me? Stupid bear, you're looking for death. Transform. Giant tusk mammoth elephant. One bear's heart skipped a beat when he heard this. This guy was actually so strong. He was pretending to be weak. But apart from mutation, level was also important in determining strength. And one bear was currently at stage 4 level 9, which was not low. So what if you're a mammoth elephant? Taste my meteor hammer. One bear jumped high and leaped from a rock towards the opponent, swinging his meteor hammer. The opponent was also strong and took out a shield from behind. The two weapons collided, making a loud bang. One bear, do it! Fancy shouted louder than anyone else. Just as everyone was nervously watching one bear, suddenly a huge figure leaped out of the water next to the rock. This guy had obvious orca traits. With a black and white two-color mutation and his feet merged into a fish tail. He crashed into one bear and the mammoth who were in a stalemate, sending both of them into the water. Rain slapped her forehead, one bear, one bear, I told you to poly its safety. Why are you in such a hurry? You just let others take advantage of you. Two mutated land animals in the water were no match for others. Soon, one bear and the mammoth were eliminated from the competition. After more than 20 minutes of fierce competition and wits, it was the mutated iron-headed orca who won the first match. As the first place winner left the field, he glanced at Rain and her team. Sit in such a good position? What a waste. He sneered and walked towards his own team. What did you say? Say it again if you dare. Fancy stood up angrily. But Two Bear held her back. Fancy, we can't pick a fight here. Rain turned back to look at the guy, who had a smug look on his face. The competition was still intense. Later Rain's new recruit, Lindy, also participated in the competition, but unfortunately, Lindy's combat experience was even not as good as One Bear's, and he was quickly defeated. The 20 matches of the first day ended, and both of Rain's crew members who participated were eliminated. Captain I, Lindy felt a little embarrassed. I'm sorry, I didn't bring the win. Rain smiled, don't mention it. Just work harder in the future. Yes, Captain. This new recruit was still a little afraid of Rain. Based on his performance today, he had great potential for development. On the third day, True Word made his appearance. At the start of, True Word's strength was considered top tier within the fleet. However, he had been hoping to obtain the Earth Heaven Crystal Enhancement. True King had already undergone the Fire Heaven Crystal Enhancement and had surpassed True Word by more than one level. Nowadays, True Word was stage 5 level 1, which was quite well within his group. Unfortunately, perhaps due to others feeling threatened by his strength, True Word was ultimately eliminated when two underwater mutants worked together to pull him into the water. Once True Word get into the water, it was equivalent to a loss, and he was eliminated from the competition as expected. Damn it, they actually teamed up. True Word was furious upon his elimination. Shobe shook his head and said, What a shame, True Word. At this point, Rain's team was left with only Shane as their last hope. On the fourth day, Shane finally made his appearance. During his time in the slave arena, Shane's strength was on par with Shobe's level. He and Bolton were both kept in the same cell. This guy was a mutated aquatic dragon, and over the years, Rain had gradually come to trust him more and more. If nothing unexpected happened, he and Bolton would become the next batch of captains. However, like True Word, Shane's weakness was that he had not undergone the Fire Heaven Crystal Enhancement. His Stage 5 Level 2 strength had been top tier on the ship, but now he was surpassed by many others. Shane was not very lucky, as there were two stage 6 mutants in his group, one on land and one underwater, and he was unfortunately eliminated. Ah, uh, Shane, your luck was just too bad this time. To think that there were two stage 6 powerhouses. Shane shook his head and replied, it's alright. Even if I had passed this round, I would have still encountered those powerhouses later. It seems like I won't be able to become General Trajan's son-in-law. Captain, I'm sorry. None of us were able to make it past the first round. It's a bit embarrassing. Rain smiled slightly and said, It's just a competition. No need to take it so seriously. Although all of Rain's crew had been eliminated, the competition was still very exciting. Rain and his crew had great seats and naturally wouldn't leave easily. Watching other people's tactics and strategies was also very interesting. Just as Rain and his crew were enjoying the competition, a staff member bowed and whispered a few words to Trajan and Scout by the VIP stand. What? Trajan quickly pulled the staff member and Scout aside. Scout, check the list. Has someone given up their spot? Scout immediately checked the list and said, General Trajan, I'm sorry. We had originally allocated exactly 80 contests, but now it appears that the final round is one person short. 
I only just realized it. Trajan sneakily glanced at his granddaughter, who was engrossed in the competition. When he turned back, his expression was somewhat complicated. He didn't care about this sort of thing, as the competition was based on voluntary participation. The key is my proud granddaughter. If she finds out, she'll definitely get angry. It's obvious that she would have think she's not good enough for the man, so the man would rather give up the spot than compete with her. Seeing the troubled look on Trajan's face, Scout became nervous. General Trajan was good in every aspect, except when it came to his granddaughter. She was like his precious baby, his pearl in his palm. Miss Olivia had always been arrogant. If she knew that someone would rather give up their spot than participate in her contest for marriage, she would definitely be unhappy. Find out which fleet it is and make sure they send someone to participate, Trajan said. Geronel, leave it to me. I'll take care of it. Scout finished speaking and hurried off the stage with the staff. Damn it, who do they think they are? Not giving face to Miss and not giving face to Geronel Trajan? Scout said angrily. Captain, it's a bounty group called Dad. See, those few people sitting over there watching the competition? The kid is their captain. Rain was focused on the competition when he suddenly felt four resentful gazes aimed at him. He followed the gaze and saw Scout and the staff member. Those eyes were full of resentment. What are those two doing? It was like I owe them money. Rain was confused. 212. The Ancient King's Conspiracy. Soon, Scout approached Rain's side and said, Captain Rain, do you have a moment? I want to talk to you alone. Rain furrowed his brow slightly and asked, What do you want with me? I have something to discuss with you. Please follow me, Scout said without waiting for Rain's answer, and walked straight out of the arena. Scout's appearance drew everyone's attention to Rain. Who are those people? They look unfamiliar. Why would the captain of Scout come to them personally? They, they are just a bunch of newbies with poor skills. Several of their team members were eliminated in the previous matches. Why do they have such a good position? The first row is reserved for big shots. How did they get such good tickets? Feeling uncomfortable under the scrutinizing gazes of the people around him, Rain thought for a moment, and then followed another staff member to the exit. Captain, do you want me to accompany you? Shob asked warily. No, I can handle it, Rain said, getting up and leaving. At the end of the corridor, Scout was waiting for him. As soon as Rain arrived, Scout frowned and asked, Captain Rain, I want to ask you, why did you give up your team's place? What? Isn't that voluntary? Rain asked. It is voluntary. But in the entire King Class C area, whoever doesn't give face to General Trajan, even the ten spots allocated to the Ice Emperor are already full. Do your crew members think it's shameful to become General Trajan's son-in-law? No, it's just that some of them exceeded the age limit, so we didn't have enough people, Rain explained truthfully. After thinking for a moment, Scout realized that Rain wasn't intentionally causing trouble. Captain Rain, you don't know our Mrs. Temperament. If she finds out that you gave up the spot, she will want to kill you. Rain blinked. Was that woman really that fierce? Actually, we are all easy to talk to. As men, we don't care about small things. General Trajan is also a reasonable person, but our little girl has a strong sense of self-esteem. Can you try to come up with another spot? Even if you pretend, it's fine. Rain furrowed his brow, but Scout was actually quite polite. Besides, he admired General Trajan, and this was just a small matter that wasn't worth mentioning. All right, I'll find someone else, Rain said thinking of Two Bear, who was of the right age. Oh, thank you so much. Ha ha ha, that's great. Rain, you're such a straightforward man. I just found out that Shob and Charge King are also on your ship. I know them both. After the competition is over, I'll treat you guys to a meal. It's not a big deal. My crew and I admire General Trajan very much. It would be great if we could meet him. That's not a problem. I'll arrange it for you. In just a few minutes, this was solved and the two of them became good friends. After they happily reached a decision, Rain returned to his seat to arrange, but suddenly felt someone calling his name. Avril? Rain asked in surprise as it seemed like the guy had urgent business with him. Rain thought for a moment and said to Shob and Shane, You two watch over here. I'll go back to the ship. Shob and Shane immediately became alert and stood close to Rain, but in an instant, Rain's consciousness had returned to the aircraft carrier. Captain? I need to talk to you. Avril shouted loudly at the wall of the control tower. Rain said, Avril, what do you want from me? Captain, you finally came back. Just now, several ships were wandering near our fleet, so I sent a warning plane to investigate, and I already know who it is. Avril said urgently, Who is it? It's the ship of the King of the Ancient. The King of the Ancient? That name sounds awesome. Are they investigating us? 
Yes, Rain nodded. There were still things to arrange on the side of the son of Poseidon. So he said raise the alert here, I'll go back first. Rain returned to body and scanned the entire room, noticing that several people sitting opposite him in the front row were intentionally or unintentionally looking his way. Could it be them? Armin, see what they're saying. Armin's eyes quickly became our eyes, and he read the lips of these people across several hundred meters. On the opposite side of the audience, a middle-aged man with a beard slightly narrowed his eyes. The appearance of Scout just now caught his attention to the group of people across from him. After a brief investigation, they not only knew why the Scout was looking for him, but also the identities of the people across from them. They killed Charles and Austin? The man slightly narrowed his eyes. What great ambition! It is said that their ship is extremely advanced. Let's see if we can get it. Boss, I have an idea. Their few people who were sent out don't seem to have much strength, probably to conserve their energy. A charming woman beside the man said, they agreed to add another spot for the scout. This is a good opportunity for us. It is said that their captain is very protective of his crew. Let's see if we can provoke him and make Trajan deal with him. What if he can hold back? The man asked. Pressing harder, he couldn't resist any longer. The woman raised her eyebrows. Will Trajan allow such a thing to happen? Let's make it look like an accident. It would be best if we could make him lose control, and then no one would know who is right or wrong. All right, let's inform the Ocean King Seleucus, the Grassland King Park, and don't forget to notify Miss Olivia too. The man nodded during the final match. Let Iron Armor deal with them properly. Also, have the warships outside prepared. As long as that guy disrupts the order, Trajan will not protect their fleet, and then we will team up with Seleucus, Park, and take the opportunity to take them down. Armin leaned over to Rain's ear and repeated the conversation. Rain narrowed his eyes slightly. These three kings were actually trying to make a preemptive strike first. Very well, let's wait and see. By evening, the final match had finally begun. Rain didn't let Tuber take the stage. His own name appeared on the roster for the last match. Tuber's strength was insufficient to deal with the opponent's planned conspiracy, so now only Rain could take the stage. As soon as Rain appeared, he suddenly noticed a sharp gaze from the presiding platform staring at him. Following the gaze, Rain was surprised to find that it was Trajan's granddaughter, Miss Olivia, who was the protagonist of this contest for marriage, staring at him furiously. What are you looking at me for? What did I do? Do you really think I want to marry you? Well, a headache. Whatever, Rain didn't care anymore. Now he had to crush the opponent's plan first, and then play casually. He could just get eliminated in the next round. With a signal, the match began. Shob and the others nervously watched the match on the stage. They also knew about enemy's plan and couldn't help but worry for Rain. Be careful, Captain. 213. Guerrilla Tactic. At first, Rain didn't transform and snorted disdainfully at the 24 enemies around him. In this kind of melee, Rain was experienced, and the essence of it was summed up in one sentence. Play it safety. At the beginning of the match, Rain could be seen darting around on the stone surface keeping his distance from any places where fighting broke out. Seeing this, Olivia couldn't take it anymore. Grandpa, how can this trash participate in my contest for marriage? Although the young lady knew that this guy was just there to make up numbers, she kept it to herself for the sake of her grandfather's face. But Rain's performance was far from professional. Well, uh, this is, cough, a kind of effective tactic. Trajan forcibly found an excuse for Rain. You're talking nonsense. This is cowardice, Olivia retorted. No, this is, uh, famous. What tactic was it? Trajan sought help from Scout. Scout racked his brains and said, Oh, it's guerrilla warfare. Yes, guerrilla warfare. It used to be a very powerful tactic, almost unbeatable. But Olivia didn't buy it. She was her grandfather's pride and joy since childhood, and she was already very talented. Who wouldn't want to become her grandfather's son-in-law in this King Class C area? Yet there was someone who was so careless and hasty in dealing with her contest for marriage. It was simply disrespectful to her and her grandfather. She was about to explode with anger. Not only was Miss Olivia unhappy, but Rain's sleazy behavior also caused ridicule from the crowd. Currently, Rain reached stage for level 10, which was completely different from other individuals at the same rank due to his base attributes having already reached 280 points. If he were to use Tiger's Fong without transforming, his base attributes could reach up to 840 points. If he transforms underwater, his attributes would scare those around him. Perhaps the captain doesn't want to marry Miss Olivia, Shane whispered. So, he deliberately hides his strength. Shobe nodded. Shane, you are partially right. 
He doesn't want to appear too powerful. Besides not wanting to get married, he wants to lure the other party to make a move. Fancy placed her hands over her heart. Rain's strength was beyond doubt, but it would still be quite difficult to foil the opponent's conspiracy without exposing his true strength. At this moment, the competition on the field had already entered its final stages after only a few short minutes. The three powerhouses of this group, one at stage 6 and two at stage 5, quickly dispatched all the others. Currently, there were only four people left on the field, including Rain. Two were on the stone, and two were in the water. Rain slightly narrowed his eyes. It was obvious that the three individuals had cooperated earlier, never laying a hand on each other, nor did they bother Rain. They first dealt with the others together. It seemed that it was just these three people left. It was a critical moment now. Sure enough, when only Rain and another white-spotted cheetah mutant of stage 5 were left on the stone, the guy suddenly rushed towards Rain. Rain checked the system radar and found that the two guys underwater were shooting toward him from both sides of the stone surface under his feet. In a one-on-one -on -one situation, one cannot seriously injure the opponent, but it was uncertain in a three-on-one -on -one situation. You've calculated it well. Rain sneered at the white-spotted cheetah. Kid, you're still being arrogant, huh? I'll make you regret it. The white-spotted cheetah rushed over and fiercely swung its paw toward Rain. At the same time, two figures emerged from the water on both sides of Rain. From their forms, one was a shark mutant, and the other was some kind of highly aggressive underwater monster mutant, whose hands had turned into sharp blades. If Rain retreated further, he would fall off the ring. What? Scout stood up in shock. This is not good. Something's going to happen. How could Rain defend himself against three opponents? Based on his previous performance, besides his evasion ability, he has always been weak in other areas. Scout, save that kid as soon as possible, Trajan said in a deep voice. As a seasoned person, Trajan could see that the three people had joined forces. Although he knew this was the case, it would be difficult to prove, and if they denied it, there would be little that others could do. It was just that Rain had been used and framed for the small matter of promising to attend the contest, which made Trajan feel a little guilty. Only Miss Olivia coldly snorted, now all three paths are blocked, and you can't transform, so you have nowhere to run. Someone like you wants to marry me? Dream on you. Shob and the others' hearts were in their throats, and Armin and Fancy covered their mouths, afraid that their hearts would jump out of their mouths. Captain? At this moment, Rain showed a hint of a smile. He was waiting for this opportunity. Tiger's fawn. Vortex strangling. Rain shouted. Even though Rain had not transformed, these two stage 5 level 7 mutants and one stage 6 level 1 mutant were completely outmatched by Rain's attributes. Moreover, Rain's sense and reaction time were much higher than theirs. Vortex strangling was a water skill that Rain had already mastered. Although he couldn't create a spiral in the air, which allowed him to hit three enemies at the same time. The two titanium daggers spun quickly with Rain's body, and the daggers had left deep marks on all three opponents with two rotations. Almost in the blink of an eye, all four people landed at the same time. The two water mutants were too weak to jump back into the water and fell on the stone surface, bleeding heavily from their chests. The white-spotted cheetah crossed paths with Rain, but the deep wound on his chest rendered him unable to control his own body, causing him to plummet off the edge of the arena and lie motionless on the ground. The incident happened so quickly that onlookers could barely discern what had occurred. Only one person remained standing in the arena. 2.14. Poor acting. Scout had been ready to go and rescue Rain, but at this moment, his body which had just stood up was petrified, and his entire expression became rigid. Is this, just my imagination? Trajan slowly stood up. It can't be. Could it be that he deliberately lured the enemy just now? The most shocked was not these two people, but Miss Olivia beside them. Her whole body was motionless as if frozen, and her mind was in chaos. This guy was the same trash that she was talking about just now. A piece of trash that easily killed three top masters? If his reaction just now was even a little slower in the air, it would definitely not be the outcome now. Also, why was his body so flexible without transformation? And why is his attack power so terrifying? Shob's cigar fell to the ground again. Damn it, the captain has become stronger again. Is there any fair? Charge King shook his head. My goodness, if the captain dives into the water. Shob quickly stopped Charge King and signaled him not to reveal anything. The captain was obviously hiding his true strength, and they couldn't expose him now. But although Charge King didn't say anything, everyone couldn't help but imagine. 840 combat power, and then an increase of 4 times after diving into the water, 
what was the difference between that and a sea monster? Facing the silence of the 4,000 people in the audience, Rain skillfully rotated his dagger and inserted it into his waist. Then, as if suddenly realizing something, he looked shocked, covered his mouth, and asked carefully, Oops, are you guys okay? The ancient king next door almost spat out blood. His acting was still so perfunctory. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. When you all rushed out at once earlier, you scared me. I, I was just acting out of self-defense instinct. I didn't expect to hurt you all so badly. Rain looked apologetic. Look at your chest. Why is there so much blood? Does it hurt? The guy on the ground had fresh blood streaming from his mouth. Maybe was angered by Rain. When Rain turned around, the guy behind him spat out blood and fainted, seemingly rejecting Rain's comfort. Oh bro, how did you fall down? Scout couldn't hold back and burst out laughing. People with their level of strength could naturally see that Rain was faking it, and doing a terrible job at it. Of course, they also knew that those three people had secretly conspired beforehand, and combined with their guilt towards Rain. They didn't feel any anger towards Rain injuring them, but instead found it satisfying. Trying to take advantage of the rules to do a sneak attack on someone else? It ended up being broken by this guy's move. Cough, cough. Scout used a dry cough to cover up his earlier loss of composure. He turned his head and saw Trajan, who was struggling with pain and had turned red in the face. After all, Trajan was Trajan. He could really hold back. It seemed he was still not sophisticated enough. Cough, cough, um, Scout, go and take a look. Trajan kept using strange expressions to disguise the smile on his face. This guy's acting was really too perfunctory. Scout obeyed and made a face, then came up to the stage. Well, 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 what's going on? You're not supposed to seriously injure your opponents. Scout furrowed his brows, but he still couldn't quite fake being angry. Rain shrugged innocently. Boss, I really didn't mean it. You saw it too. They all just rushed at me together. In this kind of melee situation, how could something like this be so coincidental? With only four people left, they didn't even discuss it and just came after me together. This is too much of a coincidence. It was just my instinctive reaction. Scout found that asking about the situation was simply a mistake. Watching Rain's exaggerated performance, he was holding back his discomfort. Rain repeatedly emphasized that this was a coincidence, and this explanation was originally what Ancient King's group should have said, why the three of them injured Rain. It is a coincidence. But now, everything had become Rain's coincidence. Okay, okay, I understand. Just now, we also saw that it was indeed a coincidence. Captain King... Captain Seleucus, Captain Park, do you acknowledge that it was an accident caused by coincidence? The three commanders' faces turned pale. Could they say it wasn't a coincidence? After a long time, the three commanders stood up one by one, gritting their teeth and saying, it was indeed a coincidence. Rain was relieved as if he had been granted amnesty. Captain Scout, you see, they also admit that it was a coincidence. This, it has nothing to do with me, right? I understand. I'll go call the military doctor to take care of the wounded, and Captain Rain can continue the match, Scout said and hurriedly left. Outside the arena, Scout finally didn't have to hold back anymore. Ha ha ha, ha ha ha, I swear, ha ha ha, this guy, ha ha ha, this guy cracks me up. Thinking of the three commanders still speaking up for Rain, Scout couldn't help laughing out loud. He only had a slight fondness for Rain. If Rain's friends saw this scene, they would be even more delighted. To slap someone's face and still have them say thank you was really amazing. Trajan finally controlled his emotions. As he looked at the boy again, his gaze had completely changed from before. This boy is really good. He's brave, strategic, and powerful. Oh, by the way, he's still young and already a commander. He has his own fleet. Hey, Olivia, what do you think of this boy? Trajan looked at his granddaughter. What, what do I think? Well, he's just okay. Those three guys weren't very powerful. I could have taken on three of them myself. Olivia, don't play dumb with Grandpa. You should know that his handling of this matter was textbook level. Confidence, strength, and strategy are all top-notch. It reminds me of myself when I was younger. What textbook? I don't see it, Trajan's granddaughter pouted. Grandpa, why are you praising him? I think he can't even last until the end. Olivia's words reminded Trajan that this boy's mind did not seem to be on the contest at all. If he let him run away... It would seem a bit of a pity. How about you take off your mask and let him see you? I don't want to. I hate those superficial men who only care about appearances. I like men with real strength and integrity. If they don't meet my requirements, I'll eliminate them all in the end. 
Trajan raised his eyebrows and shook his head helplessly. His granddaughter was really arrogant. 215. Second round final. After the intense first round of competition, there were originally 2,000 people participating in the contest for marriage, but now only 80 remain. The second round was to determine the final three strongest contestants. There was a small detail. Since 80 people cannot be divided equally into three groups, Trajan would arrange for one of his subordinates to participate in the next round to make up the total to 81. Of course, this subordinate would not enter the final three-person list. Generally speaking, it would only play a supporting role and occasionally make some moves. His key role was to balance the number of people in the three groups. In selecting the participants, Scout was racking his brain, as General Trajan had just given him a life-or-death order to ensure that Rain enters the final three-person list. Although it was a contest for marriage, General Trajan was extremely fond of his granddaughter and hoped she marries well. When he saw a young and promising man, he naturally wanted to use some means. Meanwhile, Fancy dragged Rain to buy clothes. Rain had no idea that he had been plotted against again. Hey, how would I look in this outfit? Fancy gestured to a set of Caribbean pirate-style women's clothes. Wait, let me try it on. Soon, Fancy came out of the fitting room. Rain sat there scrutinizing her. He had to admit that Fancy had really grown up. Tall and well-proportioned, mischievous but still had the elegant temperament of a princess. Not bad, but aren't two pearls a bit too expensive? Is there any discount? Two pearls meant gold pearls. And this price was too expensive, Rain thought. This Juliet seemed to be a famous luxury brand. The princess's taste was truly incomprehensible to ordinary people. Rain didn't care about two pearls. But he thought the price was a bit too high. Two pearls could buy a lot of daily necessities and it was a bit wasteful to spend them on one outfit. The waiter immediately said courteously, Oh, it's like this. We have a 20% discount for the captains from one emperor and ten kings. Rain rubbed his chin. Unfortunately, I'm not one of the ten kings. I just took out two of them. What? Sir? The waiter thought he had misheard. Nothing. Just help me wrap it up. After the first round of competition, they took a day off and immediately began the second round of competition. The second round had only three matches, with 27 people in each match. Rain was scheduled to be in the last match. This was already the final match, and each person was chosen as the strongest from among the 25 contests, with solid skills and strategies. Everyone was particularly motivated in this round, and the first two matches were played spectacularly and excitingly. Finally, in the first match, the 29-year-old man Helmo from the Ice Emperor fleet took the lead. In the second match, the 30-year-old man Carrie from the Ice Emperor fleet came out on top. Finally, it was the third match. Shobe nudged Rain with his shoulder and joked, Captain, are you really going to marry Miss Olivia? Rain chuckled, I haven't even reached the Sky Class C yet. How can I get married? Don't be silly, I'll be down soon. One bear laughed, How do you plan to commit suicide, Captain? Just find someone to pretend. Is that too much to ask your wise and brave Captain for such a small matter? Fancy looked happy and said, Then come back soon and let's go to the Navy to register our ranks early. No problem. Rain stood up, waved to the crew members, and walked up to the arena. Twenty-seven people stepped onto the arena one after another. As everyone chose their position, Rain noticed someone was following him. When he turned to look, the guy quickly looked away. But when Rain changed his position, the guy followed him again. What's going on? Why is he following me? Rain was confused. On the platform, Trajan leaned in next to Scout and whispered, You put that kid up? General, we can't do that without Arthur. Rain has no intention of fighting well. Except for Arthur, no one can do that. Trajan thought for a moment. It seemed to make sense. Although Arthur was their secret weapon and never shown to anyone easily, he had to take risks for Olivia's lifelong happiness. Well, with Arthur here, I can rest assured. In the final selection match of the contest for marriage, the curtain was opened with a bell. At the beginning of the competition, Rain only used the second change of the scaly dragon transformation, and only partially activated it to cover the weak parts of his body with scales to avoid being hurt too much. He didn't rush into the crowd and let himself be focused fire resulting in an elimination. Winning the championship was not that simple, but it was easy to court death. Come on, coward! Rain shouted loudly and aggressively to someone. The opponent also noticed Rain and instantly displayed some characteristics of a triceratops. This guy was also strong and an ancient creature mutant. He coldly snorted, Your number is up. At that moment, a white figure suddenly flashed behind Rain. 
Striking first, the person punched the Triceratops out of the ring and quickly distanced themselves from Rain after succeeding. When Rain charged over, he only to find that his opponent was gone. Shob and the others were shocked. The team leader failed to kill himself. What the? Rain looked in amazement at the Triceratops man who had been thrown out of the ring. What's going on? 216. Accidental advancement. However, Rain's nightmare had only just begun. The competitors were constantly being cleared out of the field, the white figure moving like a ghost. Wherever it went, it left a trail of devastation. Oh my god, that guy is so strong. Could he be stage 7? What kind of mutation is he? His speed. Is he even human? Is he a material or biological type? His speed is too fast. Those underwater mutants are caught as soon as they surface. While everyone was marveling at the mysterious person's identity, no one could understand Rain's pain. It was supposed to be easy to be eliminated, and he was supposed to step down immediately. But why was he still on stage now? He hoped that the powerful person would throw him out. But it seemed that he was too busy, not paying any attention to him. As he watched only four or five people left on the stage, Rain became really anxious. He rushed towards a man who was stunned by the white figure and said, Brother, there's no time to explain. Hurry up and hit me. Help me out. Knock me down. I won't fight back. The man was already scared, and now seeing Rain, he was even more bewildered. What was even more terrifying was Rain's urgent, sincere, and even pleading expression on his face, which short-circuited his brain. Suddenly, there was a ridiculously strong person appearing, and now there was a masochist? Were these two crazy together? The man hadn't even had a chance to speak before the terrifying white figure appeared again. No, don't. Rain cried out in terror. But the white-clad person ignored his plea and kicked the stunned man off the stage. At the moment when he was kicked down, the stunned man suddenly laughed. He was finally free. Soon, there were only two people left on the stage. The white-clad man covered in sweat and rain, who looked completely defeated. Buddy, what's your name? Rain asked weakly. He had been looking for death all the way. But this guy intercepted it more than ten times. Arthur, the white-clad man was still gasping for breath. It seemed that he was exhausted from running around the field just now, but his answer was still precise. Brother Arthur, very good, you are very strong. Rain raised his thumb. Uh, I've thought about it. I definitely can't beat you, and I don't want to suffer any physical pain, so I've decided. Referee, I am physically exhausted. I withdraw from the competition. Arthur raised his hand to report to the referee, his voice loud, and his pronunciation clear and distinct. Rain was completely shocked. He stared at Arthur in disbelief. This guy had been fighting for so long, but in the end, he surrendered before Rain? Okay, in this match, the winner is Rain, the leader of Dad the Bounty Group. The referee made the decision as quickly as possible. Rain almost spurted out a mouthful of blood. Now, I invite the three winners to come to the podium. The referee walked up to Rain and whispered, Rain, come on. Rain frowned and looked unwilling, but he thought about it. Now that things had come to this point, it wouldn't be good if he didn't go up on stage. Besides, he still had to fight against that rich girl later. He could just surrender then. With this in mind, Rain gritted his teeth and followed the referee to the stage with the other two winners. Now, the audience below was completely chaotic. What happened just now? Did he forfeit on his own? He said he had exhausted his stamina, which is possible. But facing the last person, why not try again? If he won, he could stand out. Isn't that take advantage for that kid? He didn't defeat anyone and made it to the next round like this. That kid seemed harmless from the beginning and didn't transform. If it were me, I would choose to take out the person who posed a threat to me first. It's just that the guy in the white clothes at the back suddenly surrendered. Even if he was tired, he should still try. King the Ancient King narrowed his eyes slightly and said to the woman behind him, Go check the background of that guy in the white clothes. There is something fishy about this. Yes, leader. On the other side, Shob's group was lively. I can't believe it. The leader made it to the next round? Is that possible? What kind of luck does our captain have? It's amazing. Shob, did that guy in the white clothes really exhaust himself? Shob smoked a cigar and shook his head. Even if he's strong, it's really difficult to defeat so many people in such a short time, and somewhere under the water. The difficulty was indeed high, but I think he could have persevered. Why did it end up like this? How come the captain advanced? Fancy pouted unhappily and complained to Armin, Rain has such good luck. Armin shook his head. I don't think it's luck. I guess that guy might have known the captain's true strength, so he surrendered. Everyone had their own speculation, but so far, 
No one had recognized Arthur's true identity, so they couldn't judge his motive. This was Rain's first close-up view of the legendary General Trajan. The old man had more wrinkles than when viewed from afar, but his presence was still strong. General Trajan personally shook hands with the three winners one by one. Congratulations to the three of you for entering the final stage. In this stage, my granddaughter Olivia will fight each of you one by one. For safety reasons, we'll change the rules a bit. Within three minutes, whoever can take off Olivia's mask will win, otherwise it will be considered a failure. The winner will have the right to marry my granddaughter according to the rules. The first group has the longest rest time, so let's go in order. Olivia was staring intently at Rain while the others listened attentively. But this guy was shaking his head constantly as if very unwilling. He seemed quite reluctant. Rain was very depressed. He still had to go and register his bounty group's rank in the navy. But now he had to become the last one to leave. When a person is unlucky, even drinking water can get stuck in their teeth. The first to take the stage was Helmo from the Ice Emperor fleet. He was very fit, tall and straight, with a height of 1.85 meters, and had a somewhat noble demeanor. After the match started, Helmo did not immediately make a move. Instead, he bowed politely to Olivia. I have long admired Miss Olivia. It is my honor to compete with you. Cut the crap. Let's see what you've got. Olivia grew up with her grandfather and was pungent. She didn't buy it. Come on if you have balls. If you can make me move half a step, then I'll consider it a defeat. Helmo smiled slightly. It seems that Miss Olivia is very satisfied with me, so she has lowered her standards. Disgusting. You're pretty full of yourself. Unless Ice Emperor personally comes, no one in your Ice Emperor fleet can touch me. Stop talking nonsense. Time is running out. Helmo was not angry and still spoke like a gentleman. Thank you for considering me, Miss Olivia. I'm sorry if I offended you. As soon as Helmo finished speaking, he suddenly made a lightning fast move, grabbing towards Olivia's mask. However, Olivia slightly turned her face and Helmo actually missed. Huh? So fast. Helmo was not willing to give up and made another grab. Olivia had her hands behind her back and her feet did not leave the ground. She simply dodged with her upper body. Even if Helmo transformed and enhanced the attributes, she still avoided him easily. Three minutes later, Helmo had spent a minute chatting and flirting and then made several attempts to grab Olivia. But he didn't touch her at all. Ding! The match time was up. What the? Helmo looked at Olivia in horror. Although this was just a playful competition, if the two sides really fought to the death, and he couldn't even touch his opponent, wouldn't he be at the mercy of the other party? Olivia couldn't be bothered with him. Next. 217. I can't marry you. The second contestant to appear was still from the Ice Emperor fleet, and his name was Carrie. If Helmo was the epitome of aristocracy, then Carrie exuded the air of a prince. His eyes were a deep shade of blue, and there was a subtle melancholy about him that added to his charm. Standing at 1.8 meters tall, he didn't possess the frivolous demeanor of a playboy. After bowing slightly to Olivia, Carrie spoke with a serious tone, Miss Olivia, I won't hold back during our match. Olivia glanced at Carrie, finding him quite presentable and respectable. He didn't come across as slick or oily. As for the position, working under the Ice Emperor was an achievement to be proud of. Grandpa said I must get married soon. If I don't pick someone soon, he will get angry. Just then, Olivia caught a glimpse of Rain who looked impatient and fidgety. His behavior was quite irritating. Carrie looked good but only average. The real problem was that Olivia wanted to teach Rain a lesson and make him look bad. Carrie's skills were on par with Helmo's. Despite he said he wouldn't hold back, he was still eliminated by Olivia in the end. I lost fair and square. Your skills are undeniable, Carrie politely remarked to Olivia. Olivia gave him a polite nod in response. After a long wait, Rain finally got his turn. Compared to the two aristocratic princes who came before him, Rain, at 175 centimeters tall, lacked a certain aura of refinement. He had a slight baby face, which was less about his own youth and more about the fact that he was still in the process of growing. Rain wasn't particularly handsome, but his appearance was pleasing enough. Despite his unremarkable appearance, he was the only one who received the special treatment of Olivia initiating a conversation with him. Are you Rain? The cute little cat mask hid a pair of cold eyes that stared at Rain. Yep, Rain answered. Olivia was almost driven to internal injuries by his nonchalant answer. He was clearly pretending to be clueless, with a face that showed no concern. She really wanted to teach him a lesson. This topic couldn't be discussed any further, so Olivia changed the subject. Do you think you can take off my mask? 
No, I can't, Rain said seriously. Olivia's blood pressure skyrocketed. This guy was not going the usual route. He blocked all the humiliating words she had prepared for him. You can't take it off and you still went on stage? I, Rain remembered what Scout had said. This little girl had a strong sense of self-esteem, so he had to pretend. In order to satisfy his friend, Rain didn't mention being forced to go on stage. So when the words were about to come out, he changed his tune. I, I can't help it. My strength doesn't allow me to be Loki. Olivia suffered another heavy blow. This guy's skin was too thick. Everyone saw how he advanced, and he shamelessly said strength. Okay, if you have strength, then someone like you with strength. I definitely can't just stand there and do nothing. Fists and feet have no eyes. It's not my fault if you get hurt. Hey hi he, do you have any misunderstandings about the rules? It should be me to get your mask. You just need to protect it. Why would you hurt me? I'm willing. Now Olivia had nothing to fear. This man would definitely not come to take off her mask. Someone had told him that he reluctantly participated in the competition at the urging of Scout. Looking at his performance on the field, except for the first round where he crushed other people's plots, the second round was just for show. This further confirmed that Rain definitely didn't want to grab her mask. Since that was the case, there was no need for the defense at all, just attacking. If she really ended up hurting him, just say the best defense is the offense. With Grandpa backing her up, no one would say anything. Rain found this woman to be unreasonable. A bell rang, and the match began. In the instant the match started, Olivia struck towards Rain's chest with both palms. Rain didn't expect this woman to attack so fiercely, and he was about to be unable to dodge in time. But he suddenly thought of a way. He didn't know why the woman had such a big grudge against him. In that case, she definitely wouldn't want him to marry her. So she would definitely do everything to protect her mask. Since that's the case, he could ease her attack on him by pretending to go for her mask. Rain didn't defend himself but instead grabbed towards Olivia's mask. You. Olivia almost went crazy. Why didn't this guy defend against her attack and suddenly try to remove her mask? However, in order to protect himself, Rain had already activated his tiger's fang. His basic attributes had reached 840. While improving his resistance to being struck, his speed was also not to be underestimated. Olivia wanted to protect her mask with all her might, but Rain's hands were already on her face. Olivia instinctively moved backward, but instead of avoiding Rain's hands, she accidentally pulled the knot behind the mask, and it came off. At this moment, the whole arena fell silent. Everyone's mouths were wide open, looking at this scene in disbelief. That guy was holding Olivia's mask in his hands. Oh my god, really? He took it off. It hasn't even been five seconds yet. Do these two have a secret relationship? Look, Miss Olivia didn't even defend herself, obviously waiting for him to take off her mask. Now that you mention it, that's probably what happened. Miss Olivia only needed to defend, but she suddenly attacked in this match, and she didn't even hit him in the end. She was probably just putting on a show. Everyone seemed to have discovered a great secret. Trajan stood up excitedly and asked the scout, did he take it off? Scout took a look and nodded in confirmation. He did it. Trajan breathed a sigh of relief. He never thought that it would actually work. The two most shocked people in the arena were undoubtedly the two people involved. Rain still had his hands raised in front of him, with a look of shock on his face. Why do I have a mask on my hands? Is that girl stupid? I told her to protect her mask properly. Why did she have to attack? If you're going to attack, at least protect your mask. Why didn't you take any defensive measures and just attack recklessly? How much do you hate me to abandon all defense and just hope for a fatal blow? Olivia stared with her eyes wide open. She couldn't understand why this person would abandon his defense to remove her mask. If you didn't want to marry me, why did you risk your life just to take off my mask? Are you crazy? Outside the arena, Fancy jumped into Armin's arms. Armin, men are all liars. He clearly said he wouldn't marry her. But look at him now, this big liar. After a few moments of silence, Olivia finally spoke up. She felt very wrong right now as if this was God's greatest punishment to her. But with so many people around, her grandfather's reputation could not be defamed by others. So she had to accept this outcome. Rain, you won. She said tears the size of beans falling from her eyes. Rain put down the mask and saw Olivia's face. This was an unexpectedly beautiful woman. Even in her current state of distress, made people feel compassion. But unfortunately, Rain, who was always vulgar, was not impressed by her beauty. I'm sorry, this was a misunderstanding. I can't marry you, 
Rain said in a low voice. Olivia looked up at Rain in surprise. At this moment, the boy's face was devoid of any jokes, teasing, or mockery. He was very serious. What did you say? Olivia couldn't believe her ears. Could a man who saw her like this still say such a thing? Money, wealth, beauty, status. It could be said that everything that people in the King Class C dream of was now right in front of Rain. Rain handed the kitten mask to Olivia. I said I can't marry you. Why not? Because I won't stop my footsteps here, Rain said firmly. 218. Rain's record. After making his bold statement, Rain and his crew were immediately invited by Trajan to have tea. Upon entering Trajan's reception room, Shob, Charge King, one bear and two bear appeared nervous in front of the legendary captain. Fortunately, Trajan wasn't looking for trouble with them. He was only looking to speak with Rain. Rain, let's talk in private with the doors closed. No need for formalities, Trajan said solemnly. Oh, Scout, have these friends sit and offer them some tea. Now, with only Rain's crew, Trajan, Scout, and Olivia in the room, they were truly having a private conversation. Rain, you're smart, so you should be able to understand that I only have one granddaughter, Olivia. Although this island belongs to the Navy on the surface, it's now my fiefdom. I'm getting old and will need to pass it down eventually, Trajan said. Pandora Island is one of the best in the King Class C, as you may have experienced. We earn several hundred thousand pearls per month. Rain was secretly surprised. His three islands, Eastern Dawn Island, Misty Island, and Java Island, only earned just over 60,000 per month. In comparison, Pandora Island earned several hundred thousand per month. The difference in income was staggering. And not to boast, but Olivia's appearance is unparalleled. No one in the entire King Class C can. Trajan unintentionally noticed Fancy, one of Rain's crew members, who was quite exquisite, and almost as pretty as Olivia. Over her, Fancy had delicate features that were flawless, but whether she was prettier than Olivia was up for debate. Rain took a sip of his tea. It was also luxurious to drink tea in the Azure era. General Trajan, that's not what I meant. My goal isn't to live an easy life in the King Class C. I want to go to a wider world, Rain said. Olivia, sitting next to her grandfather, glanced at Rain. This guy was a bit different from what she had imagined. Trajan chuckled. Having ambition is good, young man. But as I was like you once, with a heart as high as the sky. However, after I entered the wider world, I realized how weak people's strength really is. We cannot fight against the real powers, those terrifying guys, or even the world. Unless you are stronger than I was back then, I advise you to stay here. Of course, I'm not asking you to be my son-in-law. I can train you as my successor. Upon hearing this condition, one bear and the others were stunned. To become the successor of General Trajan? That was something that could save them decades of hard work. At that moment, someone knocked on the door. A captain entered the room and handed Trajan a stack of documents before glancing at Rain and leaving. Trajan confidently took the documents and said, These are the records of your bounty group. Let's see if you have the ability to reach higher seas. I just speak my mind, so don't mind me. Trajan leisurely flipped through the records of Rain's bounty group. A bounty group was registered in the uninhabited sea, handled by Hades. At that time, there was only one ship. That doesn't meet the requirements. Oh, I see the records below. You passed the Navy's simulation test. Hmm, it's good that one ship passed the simulation test. After that, you entered the human class C and defeated. Dracula. Trajan suddenly sat up and stared at Rain's record. Elite G9 Sea Monster Dracula. He continued, you eliminated beheading pirates, and heavy iron pirates, and foiled the holy pirates plot to occupy Solomon Island. In total, you destroyed 535 pirate groups. Scout couldn't sit still and approached Trajan to confirm the information. After seeing that Trajan wasn't mistaken, he looked at Rain in shock. Entered the Beast Class C and released thousands of slave gladiators. Defeated Rex's pirate group, and defeated 412 pirate groups in the Beast Class C. Captured a new island with just one ship in the thousand ship struggle? Olivia covered her mouth in horror. An island was the most precious resource in any sea, especially in the Beast Class Sea where the powers were not as fixed as in the King Class Sea, and it was a place where various factions vied for dominance. One ship could capture an island among thousands of warships in a great battle. Trajan stared wide-eyed at Rain, looking at him like a monster. Courageous and resourceful, Captain Rain, you really impressed me. I apologize for underestimating you earlier. Rain smiled faintly, it's okay. After all, I look young. Captain Rain, may I ask what your next step is? Trajan suddenly became interested. Oh, 
I plan to clean up the entire King Class C area. Puff, Scout next to them sprayed tea everywhere. Ahem, ahem, wait, Captain Rain, did you just say something? Clean up the entire King Class C area? Olivia also stared with wide eyes, eagerly waiting for Rain's next words. Yeah, mainly to make money. If I take down all one emperor and ten kings, their islands will be mine, Rain said naturally. 219. Enjoyable conversation. Trajan widened his eyes in astonishment as he gazed upon the young teenager before him. Was he really planning to conquer a king-level sea area? Yet Trajan didn't think Rain was joking. This person seemed to be indifferent to everything. No, only cared about money. However, with Trajan's experience and insight, he knew that Rain was not as lack self-knowledge as he appeared on the surface. Rain's previous actions had already proven this point. Surprisingly, Rain's thoughts were so similar to Trajan's own when he was young. Perhaps there was a slight difference, as Trajan had always talked about his ideals, whereas this lad was the opposite. He seemed to dislike showing his true thoughts to others. Trajan felt a sense of empathy towards Rain. Trajan did not mock Rain. Instead, he thought for a moment and asked, Rain, let me ask you a question. Do you know the strength of Dia the Ice Emperor? Rain was stunned for a moment. I'm not very clear. But he should be slightly stronger than the Ten Kings, right? Trajan shook his head. Not slightly stronger. The Ten Kings of the King Class Sierra change every few years. And the Terror King and the Swamp King you defeated had only just entered the Ten Kings five or six years ago. But Dia, he has held the position of the One Emperor for twenty years without any changes. When I returned to the King Class Sierra, he was the Emperor and now he still is. Rain frowned slightly. The King Class C area was full of fierce competition, yet Daya had always remained firmly on his throne for a reason his strength was indeed unparalleled. General Trajan, what exactly is Daya's strength? Do you mean his fleet or him as an individual? I want to know both. His fleet is the strongest in the entire King Class C area. They can launch all-round attacks on enemy ships in the air, on the surface, and underwater. Among them, their three main ships, the Ice God 1, 2, and 3, have the strength of the Dragon Class C area. Rain took a deep breath. The power level of a Dragon Class C area, what level was that? Trajan continued, I don't even know Daya's true strength. When I was young I almost fought him, but we never really fought. Looking back now, it's also a regret. Besides Daya, I believe you already know that there are some alliances within the Ten Kings. For example, the Ancient King, Grassland King, Ocean King. The three of them have a close relationship, and you should have noticed that during the competition. Rain nodded. The three of them had teamed up to deal with him. Seeing Rain in deep thought, Trajan smiled slightly and asked, So Rain, do you still want to deal with them? Rain replied calmly, Thank you for telling me this, General Trajan. But I won't change my plan, although I will be more cautious. Why? Just for money? Isn't a comfortable life good enough? Trajan frowned and asked, Also, why is your bounty group called the Dad? Who is the man in your flag? Well, it's nothing. Rain scratched his head. I just think it's fun. Okay, let's change the subject. By the way, can you take me to see your fleet? I'm really curious about what's so special about your ship that it's so powerful. Of course. Then what are we waiting for? Let's go. Oh, and tell me how you defeated the Terra King and the Mountain King. General Trajan, actually I'm more interested in hearing your stories. Can you tell me how you defeated the King of the Hellish Mermaid? who is said to be the strongest sea monster in the king-level sea area? What does it look like? As the conversation went on, Trajan and Rain felt a strong bond, and they forgot that they were originally discussing Rain and Olivia's marriage. After the friendly and enthusiastic conversation, the visit to Rain's fleet was postponed until tomorrow. After Rain and his team left, a scout discovered that Trajan was still sitting there lost in thought. General? Scout called out to him in a low voice. Oh, haha. Talking with Rain for so long made me think of the past. It's true that heroes come from young people and waves push the ones before. Olivia rarely saw her grandfather so excited to talk about his legendary experiences from the past. When he talked with Rain, there seemed to be some kind of resonance between them, and they talked for more than three hours. Grandpa, you're not old at all now. You're only in your fifties. As a mutant, he naturally had a longer lifespan than ordinary people and being in his fifties was still considered a prime age. Otherwise, Pandora Island would not still be so strong. As long as you're willing, you can definitely make a comeback. But Scout shook his head. Miss, it's not that General Trajan is unwilling to make a comeback, it's that the Navy has stopped providing technological upgrades for General Trajan's fleet. 
Our fleet can't withstand the combat intensity of Dragon-class waters. At this point, Olivia lowered her head. Why did her grandfather retreat to the king-level waters when he was at his most energetic? How could she, as his granddaughter, not know? Since her grandfather was no longer willing to carry out tasks for the navy, the navy stopped supplying him. But Dragon-class waters couldn't be navigated just with commanding ability. Trajan's fleet couldn't keep up with the pace in front of the powerful fleets and crew members. Never mind. It's all in the past. Speaking of which, I'm looking forward to going to Rain's ship tomorrow, Trajan said with a slight smile. Scout suddenly frowned and asked, General Trajan, what about Mrs. Contest for marriage? How do we explain it to outsiders? Olivia also became nervous all of a sudden. Trajan thought for a moment and said, let's put it on hold for now. Scout agreed for the time being and secretly glanced at Trajan's expression. From Trajan's appearance, it seemed that a seed buried deep in his heart was stirring restlessly. As Trajan's confidant, Scout was the first to think that Trajan might want to make a comeback. 220. Great Ambition The next morning, Rain and the crew went to the naval base to register. The fleet rank system above the King Class C area was completely re-established. All bounty groups and pirate groups had a chance to change their fleet attributes at this time but Rain did not make any changes. They remained a bounty group, but now his bounty group had been upgraded to a D-class. Defeating three pirate groups of the same level can upgrade after registration. Damn, aren't we at a disadvantage? Rain complained. They had previously defeated a D-class pirate group and two C2-class pirate groups, but these were all before they registered and couldn't be counted towards their points for the bounty group. Forget it. Let's fight again later. Let's go, back to the ship. Armin bought many books, filling up an entire box, while Fancy bought a lot of clothes, some for herself and some for Avril and others, filling up two boxes. In addition, Charge King and other crew had purchased a large amount of living supplies, so they had to hire a transport ship. Trajan, Olivia, and Scout also arrived in time and joined them on the ship. This is your battleship? From a distance, Trajan stood up when he saw the uniquely shaped warship. As the planes were all parked in the hangar, the aircraft carrier looked a bit strange and seemed to lack firepower points. You only have nine ships in total? Olivia frowned. You relied on these nine ships to defeat Charles and Austin? Rain smiled and took everyone on board for a visit. Rain specifically showed several hurricane fighters, and when they saw the fighters, the three of them were shocked. T this is the carrier-based fighter? And there are early warning planes, helicopters, and refueling planes, oh my god. Trajan completely forgot his identity as a legendary captain, his hands trembling with excitement as he touched the planes. These were not unmanned reconnaissance planes, but true fighter jets. No wonder you could take down two kings. Scout's excitement was no less than Trajan's. As soon as he saw these fighter jets, he felt his blood boil. There are two machine guns on board, and what's hanging underneath, are those missiles? Rain admired Trajan's character and didn't hide anything. Yes, those four are two air-to-sea missiles and two air-to-air -air missiles. Scout took a deep breath. General Trajan, their warships are too strong, he exclaimed. Trajan was also excited. Great, that's great. Your battleship is fully capable of fighting against Ice God 1, 2, and 3. However, Rain was somewhat disappointed. He didn't just want the ability to fight, he wanted to crush them. It seemed that the Ice Emperor was a formidable opponent. In addition to his fleet, his strength was also a headache. At that moment, an early warning aircraft hovered in the air for a few laps before landing on the runway. Rain looked at Avril curiously. Avril looked at Trajan and his team, hesitant to speak. It's okay. I trust Trajan and his team's character. Just say it, Rain said. Well, Captain, you asked me to keep an eye on the ancient king and his team's movements. The early warning aircraft has detected them assembling their fleet 300 nautical miles away. There are a total of 833 warships, most of which should be their main battleships, Avril said seriously. Rain frowned slightly. It seemed that the three kings weren't too stupid and knew that he would come after them next. So, they took the initiative to act. Since they're in such a hurry to die, everyone should prepare. Let's wipe out all three of them, Rain said decisively. Let's attack them directly. Trajan looked surprised at Rain. Rain, are you going to face them head on? Rain shook his head, sighed and said seriously, there's no other way. They have too many warships, and this is their main fleet, the joint fleet of the three great kings. I can't take it lightly. I have to be steady and careful. This time, I can only go all out. What? Trajan's mind couldn't keep up. 
He originally wanted to ask Rain if it was crazy for their nine warships to face 833 warships head on. Didn't they need to use some flanking tactics or guerrilla warfare? Did he think sending nine warships was already steady enough? TSK, boasting, Olivia wrinkled her brow. Her impression of Rain had just improved yesterday, but today he was bragging again. With these nine ships, they'll blow you up in minutes. Scout also had a hesitant expression, Captain Rain, it's not that I doubt your abilities, but choosing to engage in frontal combat doesn't seem like a cautious decision. Rain blinked, did he misunderstand just now? Were they afraid they couldn't beat them? I'm already being cautious. General, do you also think I can't win? Rain looked at his friend with whom he had a good chat yesterday. Why didn't he believe in him today? Rain, don't ask my grandfather. Anyone with common sense wouldn't do it. You're brave but reckless, Olivia protested. Avril frowned at Olivia. Hey, little girl, I've followed the captain for over a decade. He's definitely not a reckless person. Nine ships against 800. And you still want to fight head on? Even if you have fighters, it's still reckless, Olivia argued. Rain had been looking at Trajan all this time, as he valued Trajan's opinion more. General, what do you think? Trajan shrugged. Rain, Olivia was a bit direct. But to be honest, I can't think of a way for you to win against the Three Kings Alliance in a frontal assault. Rain smiled slightly. General, you only looked at my one ship. You didn't see the other ships. Let's make a bet. I'll take down the Three Kings Alliance without expending any troops. Impossible. Scout didn't believe it this time. It's simply impossible to win. I've followed General Trajan for over 20 years. It's absolutely impossible. Trajan had been assessing Rain with his gaze, trying to figure out his intentions. But Rain just smiled back at him. This kid seems to be completely confident. But the problem is, how is it possible to win? And without expending any troops. General, what, are you afraid to bet? Rain's temper flared up when he heard this. All right. Let me raise the stakes now. If I achieve what I said, I hope Trajan will return to the world with me and we'll conquer the Azure Era together. What? This time, not only Trajan himself was surprised, but everyone on the ship was shocked and looked at Rain in disbelief. This wager, the ambition was too great. Asking a legendary captain to come out and assist him. Ordinary people wouldn't dare to say it out loud. But Rain just smiled confidently. General, you said that any condition is acceptable, right? 221. Relax during a battle. Scout's blood was suddenly reignited with excitement. He didn't say a word, just nervously looked at Trajan. He had just had a feeling yesterday after the conversation between the leader and Rain, which had rekindled his passion from the past. He didn't expect Rain to propose such an ambitious bet right away. Could that guy have been trying to get General Trajan's attention all along? Was he participating in the contest for marriage to get closer to General Trajan? Although it sounded a bit bizarre, most people would not let such an opportunity pass. But this also indicated that Rain's thoughts were not on women, but on the fleet. Trajan was also stunned. Since he became famous, no one had dared to propose such a condition to him. It was a bit unbelievable that a teenager had such courage. To be honest, Shob and the others were worried that Trajan would be angry and feel insulted to be recruited by a child. Especially for a legendary captain who had been famous for a long time. Rain, what did you say? How dare you try to recruit my grandfather? Olivia was angry. But at this moment, Trajan suddenly waved his hand and laughed heartily. Ha ha ha, interesting, interesting. Olivia, it's all right. Rain, what if you lose? Trajan asked. Rain smiled slightly. If I lose, I'm afraid I won't have anything to offer you. They probably won't let me go. Trajan nodded in appreciation. Rain's words indirectly revealed his stance. The ship was with the crew. If the ship was lost, the crew was lost. Of course, Trajan did not know that Rain was this ship. If the ship was lost, he would not be able to run away. Good. I'll bet with you. Trajan held out his hand. If you can win, I, Trajan, will follow you. With a slap, Rain grabbed Trajan's hand. It's a deal. Trajan did not leave Rain's battleship. He was confident that he could ensure the safety of Scout and Olivia, and they might not even need his protection. On board, he could see more clearly how Rain commanded. All captains returned to their own ships and prepare for battle. Rain commanded and Shob and the others quickly got into position. Eight optimized Yamato ships and an aircraft carrier slowly sailed out of the artificial harbor, based on the latest intelligence brought back by reconnaissance aircraft, indicating that the enemy had already assembled and was sailing towards them. The two sides were approaching each other, and would meet in about several hours. Trajan saw Rain and his team processing intelligence, 
and couldn't help nodding his head in admiration. They have done an excellent job of gathering intelligence and are constantly monitoring the enemy's movements. General, we didn't have reconnaissance or early warning aircraft at the beginning, Scout said. Well, that is indeed their advantage, but they need to make full use of their advantage to turn it into a winning position, Trajan replied. When the two sides were only 100 nautical miles apart, the carrier's elevators began to rise, and a series of fighters took off. This is to seize air supremacy and gain control and suppression advantage. Trajan narrowed his eyes slightly. As an excellent captain, every decision must have its own purpose, and they must also accurately speculate the enemy captain's intentions to win. Hmm? Wait, their planes are carrying anti-ship missiles. Trajan suddenly noticed this detail from a distance. How could they not equip air-to-air -air missiles when competing for air supremacy? After a brief thought, Trajan slapped his forehead. Oh, their fighter jets are actually targeting the enemy torpedo ships. At this time, 80 unmanned aircraft on the eight optimized Yamato ships took off. Right, fighter jets are not commonly seen in the King Level C area. Using fighter jets to deal with the opponent's unmanned aircraft is obviously too wasteful. Those unmanned aircraft are the ones used to compete for air supremacy. However, although fighter jets fly much higher than shipborne unmanned aircraft, they must also lower their altitude when firing which will inevitably increase the possibility of being shot down. Is Rain really confident that his planes won't be shot down? Olivia frowned on the side. Grandpa, I suddenly remembered, why aren't there any pilots on their fighter jets? Trajan and Scout were both stunned. They only paid attention to the weapons carried by aircraft and forgot about this detail. Now that the fleet was under Rain's control and Avril was idle, she came to pour water for the three guests but was immediately surrounded by them. Ms. Avril, did we make a mistake just now? Why is there no pilot on your fighters? Scout asked eagerly. This discovery was too shocking. Oh, Captain is controlling those fighters. Avril smiled faintly. What? How is that possible? Combat drones? Scout exclaimed in shock. Yes, Avril confirmed. Olivia covered her mouth. This was too amazing. Trajan's expression froze. Combat drones, what level of technology was this? Even the Dragon Class C might not have it. No wonder Rain was so confident in saying that they wouldn't lose a single crew member. This guy didn't say that it was the combat drone when he introduced the planes just now. The sound of gunfire had already come from ahead, and the Rain fleet was moving at full speed. Half an hour later, the enemy warship had entered their radar's monitoring range, and at this time, the carrier's firepower system had been raised and was operational. The five anti-ship six-tube launchers were adjusted to the correct angle, but they did not fire. Rain seemed to be waiting for something. T they still have missiles on their ship. What is the range of their missiles? Is it not long enough? Scout asked in doubt. Trajan thought for a moment and shook his head. I have encountered missile attacks in the Dragon Class C before. The power of missiles is indeed great. The range is far and the accuracy is high. But if a single missile is launched, it may be intercepted by the enemy. It is best to coordinate with another firepower cover to maximize the power of the missile. The previous gunfire was not that intense, and none of their fighters returned. I think, perhaps the previous gunfire was just an attempt by the enemy to shoot down their drones. At the same time, the eight optimized Yamato battleships had completed their formation, and Rain issued the second combat order. Launch torpedoes. Swish, swish, swish. A large number of torpedoes rushed out, and at the same time, the Typhoon anti-ship missiles were also launched. The Typhoon anti-ship missile had a range of 18.5 kilometers and a single attack power of 10,000. When the enemy ship entered the radar monitoring range, it had already entered the effective range. Swish, swish, swish. 30 Typhoon anti-ship missiles with long tails shot out fiercely. Trajan quickly picked up the telescope on the table and could see the enemy fleet. Dozens of missiles fell from the sky, causing the enemy's front line to be engulfed in flames. This was followed by hundreds of torpedoes that hit many enemy ships, causing them to tilt. However, this was only the beginning. At this moment, the cannons from eight optimized Yamato fired in unison. Boom, 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 boom. The orderly firing of the cannons created deafening explosions. A few seconds later, the enemy's sea was instantly swept by dense gunfire, engulfing the sea in flames. Rain asked Avril to make some coffee for the three distinguished guests. Avril walked into the room with the coffee and politely asked, Would you like some coffee? Just as the three people were feeling nervous, they were suddenly interrupted and couldn't help but turn their heads slowly from the window. Miss Avril, do you always stay so relaxed during a battle? 
Scout asked with shock. Well, we don't really have anything else to do. If you're feeling bored, I can ask someone to bring a deck of cards, Avril replied. The three of them were even more speechless. 222. Your crew members are trash. Rain also had a Trinity Strike ability just like the Ice Emperor. With 100 planes harassing and bombing the enemy's ships, a large number of powerful torpedoes attacking from under the sea, and the lightning two cannons from the eight optimized Yamato battleships carpet bombing the enemy ships, the onslaught was overwhelming. If that wasn't enough, Rain's most powerful hurricane anti-ship missile would unleash all its attack effects to the extreme. On this sea surface, the enemy ships had not even fired yet, but they had already suffered unprecedented intense firepower, leaving them overwhelmed. What the fuck is going on? Where are our torpedo ships? Charge forward and launch torpedoes. Seleucus. The Ocean King roared, where's the damn squad? Get up there and fight. Captain, most of our torpedo boats have been destroyed by the enemy's planes. Captain, the enemy's cannon power is too strong. The suicide squad can't withstand their shells. Seleucus urgently looked towards his allies, the Ancient King and the Grassland King. Their warships were not faring well either. The battlefield was completely on their side. Although they had shot down many drones, even a few fighter jets, it did not solve the problem. Now, the main firepower of the enemy was those few battleships. At this moment, ten or so people jumped over from the Ancient King's warship. Seleucus, our ships were not their match. Give the order quickly. Let the crew board their ships. They have machine guns on their ships. You lead us to go underwater and attack from below. King angrily said, fuck the ships, give them up. I will tear them apart. Being unable to hit their enemies and being treated as targets themselves was really frustrating. Yes, these ships don't matter. Let's seize their battleships and split them evenly. We can go back and quickly build new ones. Park also said. Good. Shark King, take King and Park's people over. Yes, Captain. At this point, they could only make a desperate move. If they suffered a setback on their three kings' allied warships, they would win back from the crew. Trajan, Olivia, and Scout were speechless. The repeated shocks had continuously refreshed their understanding of Rain's bounty group. Nine ships had suppressed the firepower of 833 ships. Thinking back to when Rain had captured a new island in the Beast-class sea with just one ship, it was definitely not just because of his strategies. They clashed head-on with the Black Hell. This is unbelievable. If I hadn't seen it with my own eyes or been on this ship, I wouldn't believe it. Scout shook his head incredulously. Olivia stood frozen. This was the true strength of Rain and his fleet. The unreliable Rain? It could only be described as terrifying. Trajan was stunned. As a legendary captain, he was shocked by Rain's tactics and was like a newbie. This battle even made him feel like he was back in the Dragon Class Sea. With long-range attacks, all-round land, sea, and air combat, intense naval and aerial battles, and even underwater battles that made one's blood boil. That sea, where he had just entered and was forced to withdraw, had the most unimaginable but blood-boiling battles. They may really have a chance to enter the Dragon-class sea, Trajan murmured. The battle gradually came to an end under the bombardment, and Rain's system radar sounded an alarm. About 30 people were rapidly moving towards them underwater. It looks like it's time for close combat, Rain snorted. These people were too small a target, making it difficult to hit them with torpedoes. At this point, the crew members who came to board their ship were probably their strongest, and they must all be very powerful. Rain did not let Little Black take the risk of intercepting them. Firstly, there were too many of them, and Little Black's strength was unknown. Rain was afraid of hurting him. Secondly, Rain had not yet obtained what he was looking for, and he needed to leave them alive, preferably allowing them to board their ship. Shob, come aboard the main ship. We have guests, Rain said into the intercom. Several warships gradually approached, and the core crew members jumped from ships that were 200 to 300 meters apart onto the main ship. Seeing this, Trajan walked out with Olivia and Scout. They have crew members coming over? Scout asked Shob in surprise. Shob, who was holding a cigar, nodded and said, yeah, it's their only chance to turn the tables. Why don't you fire at the surface of the water, or at least intercept them? Scout asked puzzledly. Charge King said, the captain has a question for them. If we stop them, they won't have a chance to board the ship. Olivia stood beside her grandfather, secretly watching the man standing at the forefront of the crowd. At this moment, that guy was calm and composed, waiting silently for the other party to board the ship, looking very confident. Speaking of which, was that guy really that strong? All their crew members were eliminated in the contest, and he himself, 
also took advantage of Arthur. The other party was the three kings. How could they let them board so easily? If it were before, such behavior would undoubtedly have been seen as extremely arrogant in Olivia's eyes. However, after experiencing one scare after another, Olivia increasingly realized that she actually couldn't see through this guy at all. Soon, 34 people jumped out of the water and suddenly leaped onto the deck. Originally, they thought they would encounter resistance, so they acted very quickly, aiming to take them by surprise. However, when they boarded the ship, they found a group of people waiting for them. The three kings saw Trajan as soon as they got on board and were immediately shocked. Trajan, General Trajan, what are you doing here? King's mind was a little short-circuited. If Trajan was here, then the situation was not good. Rain helped Trajan answer. Oh, General Trajan, Miss Olivia, and Captain Scout came to visit my battleship. You can rest assured that they won't make a move. King looked at Trajan as if asking him for confirmation. Trajan nodded Captain King. As Rain Captain said, your fight has nothing to do with our Pandora Island, we won't make a move. With Trajan's personal confirmation, the three kings finally breathed a sigh of relief. If they established another strong enemy at this time, the result would be hard to say. Now King's confidence suddenly increased, he sneered at Rain, you little bastard, dare to destroy my fleet. Now that I'm finally on your ship, watch me kill you. Seleucus held a steel fork tightly and stared at Rain. You still dare to act arrogant here, huh? We know the strength of your crew members in the contest. They are just a bunch of trash. Now that we are here, there is no hope for you. Park's mouth curled up slightly. TSK TSK TSK. It doesn't matter how amazing your ships were before. Your crew members are trash. Rain. With just over 30 of us, we can sweep your entire fleet. At this moment, even Trajan was a little worried about Rain's side. Their crew's performance in the contest was indeed worrying. Rain frowned slightly, turned to one bear, True Word, Shane, and Lindy, and said with some difficulty, Hey, look, now we're in trouble, being called trash. The four of them were full of anger. Avril. One bear signaled to Avril. Avril was also very smart, and immediately guessed what had happened. These four people must have lost in the contest for marriage, and were now being called trash. Okay, okay, I'll take care of you four later. With Avril around, those four would be different at all. After Avril's upgrade, she could affect 45% of the attributes in 10 seconds. That meant a total of 90% attribute influence. Avril truly lived up to her title as the strongest mutant on Rain's ship. One bear interlaced his fingers, pulled his arms forward, and twisted his neck, moving his shoulders before turning to the others and saying, I heard someone call me Trash Hub. You'll regret it. 2.23 Leviathan Whale Mutant From the Three Kings lineup, a muscular man stepped forward and looked disdainfully at one bear. Look at your arrogant appearance. It's really hilarious. Oh, by the way, how long did you last in the match? 10 seconds or 15 seconds? Your group doesn't even have a stage 6 member. And yet you only lasted for such a short time. You're truly the trash among the trash. The waste among the waste. I bet the people on your boat are only at this level. One bear snorted and placed his meteor hammer at his feet. Is that so? Then you must be really strong. Alright, let me fight you without using any weapons. If you want to die so badly, I'll grant your wish. I'm gonna knock you out with one punch. The man growled and shouted, Ironclad Dragon, second stage transformation. The man's body instantly swelled up, covered with a layer of hard armor. His arms, in particular, became exceptionally thick and strong, with obvious mutations in the bones and skin. Although he looked down on one bear, he had no intention of giving him any chance directly transforming into the second stage. One bear snorted, giant bear transformation. Indeed, you are trash, not even capable of transforming into the second stage. The man had already rushed to one bear in an instant. As long as he could knock one bear out with one punch, the morale of the three king's strong men would soar, and they would undoubtedly win the battle. Both of them attacked at the same time. With a loud bang, their fists, each the size of a sandbag, collided head-on. After holding out for three seconds, the expression on Ironclad Dragon's face gradually changed. He looked at one bear incredulously, his face full of disbelief. W what despicable means did you use? One bear smiled slightly, don't you know? That's our true strength. As soon as one bear finished speaking, crackling sounds came from Ironclad Dragon's thick arms, until the entire arm hung limply by his side. One bear had experienced many battles and naturally wouldn't give his opponent a chance to catch his breath. He took a step forward and delivered another punch, heavily landing on Ironclad Dragon's chest. With a loud bang, 
ironclad dragon's huge body of over two meters flew backward like a cannonball for more than ten meters, crashing heavily into the railing. Then his head drooped. No one knew whether dead or unconscious. The many strong men of the three kings were petrified on the spot. They all knew ironclad dragon's strength. Stage 5 level 9. Although he wasn't the strongest among them, the key was that his opponent's level would definitely not exceed stage 6. Under the circumstances of overwhelming opponents in both level and mutation type, the result, Ironclad Dragon was killed instantly. The opponent only used two punches. Was this still the trash who was knocked off the stage in 10 seconds during the matchmaking battle? It was too difficult for people to understand. Everyone on Rain's side was used to it, making Trajan's expression of confusion all the more apparent. They didn't know the relationship between One Bear and Rain, but what they knew was that One Bear wasn't even a captain, and in Rain's team, he might just be an ordinary crew member. And yet this not-so-strong guy knocked out one of the super-strong members of the Three Kings army with just two punches. He worked hard during the contest, so why did he seem like a different person once he got on the ship? The power gap was too great. Olivia looked at her grandfather and Scout, both of whom were also shocked. It seemed that their feelings were the same as hers. One bear shouted, remember, you can insult me, but if you insult my friend, that's asking for death. Come on. Rain smiled lazily and said, One Bear, you're wrong. Not only you, even the most insignificant crew member, but they also can't afford to mess with. The captain spoke, and One Bear's momentum suddenly decreased by half, rubbing his head and silly laughing, Oh, the captain is right, you're all finished. Shobe walked out and said, True word, Shane, Lindy, what are you waiting for? If you don't take action now, One Bear will steal all the thunder. Hurry up. The three of them couldn't wait any longer and rushed into the enemy ranks. Damn it, I'll kill you all. Olivia was confused. Were these crew members on drugs? Why were they so fierce? The opponent was the strongest of the three kings, and yet they didn't seem to be at a disadvantage. A fleet of only nine ships and less than two thousand people. Could their elite crew members compete with the three kings fleet? How carefully selected were the crew members on this warship? Wasn't it said that most of Rain's crew were slaves? Seleucus snorted, do you really think you're invincible? Let me teach you a lesson. Copper horned giant heavy foot rhino, second transformation. The king of the grasslands, Park, mutated into a copper horned giant heavy foot rhino. The heavy foot rhino not only had terrifying strength, but the most critical thing was the two huge sharp horns on its head, shaped like a rhinoceros, with great attacking power. Combined with its thick skin and the combination of strength, defense, and attack, it was absolutely the most difficult type to deal with in biological mutations. And Park's heavy foot rhino had two prefixes, one was copper horned, and the other was giant, indicating that in the heavy foot rhino, his source of mutation was also the strongest king. The three kings took action, and Shobe took the lead to stand in front of Park. After transforming, Seleucus's height soared to 2.23 meters. His skin became rougher and darker, and the horns on his rhinoceros forehead were transferred to his fists. Two bone spurs extended from his fists and stabbed toward Shobe. Shobe blew a smoke ring and said, It's the king of heavyfoot rhinoceros. Not bad. It's considered the top creature among the ancient creatures. But unfortunately, you've met me. Exploding smoke. Scout saw Shobe suddenly disappear and be engulfed in flames, staring wide-eyed. How did Shobe's smoke change? Shobe had some reputation in the navy, and Scout had heard of him. But based on the current situation, the information he had obtained about Shobe seemed inaccurate. The real Shobe was stronger than the rumors. On the other side, both groups of underwater mutants wanted to drag some people into the water. But protecting the land mutants from falling into the water was the most basic combat skill. After a round of mutual support and mutual restraint, the two groups of underwater mutants had already engaged in fierce battles underwater. The strongest of them was undoubtedly Seleucus the Ocean King. His mutation type was the Dunkleistus Torelli. This kind of seabed creature not only had an ugly appearance, but also had extremely strong attack power. Its biting force was more terrifying than that of a Tyrannosaurus Rex, and it was undoubtedly the king of the sea. His opponent was Arson and Windbell, both of whom were sea monster mutants. But because Avril couldn't see the underwater situation, it was difficult to coordinate with them to launch skills, so the two of them were temporarily struggling to restrain Seleucus. The battle on the deck was in Rain's absolute advantage but the underwater battle was in a disadvantage. At this moment, the ancient king suddenly sneered, thought you were so powerful. It seems that your weakness is underwater. Then I won't be polite. 
After speaking, the ancient king jumped into the sea. Rain frowned slightly. Was this guy also an underwater mutant? Oh no, the ancient king has gone underwater. If your underwater combat power is weak, I'm afraid there will be heavy casualties, Trajan suddenly said. Rain looked at him in surprise. General Trajan, what kind of mutation does he have? He is a prehistoric leviathan whale mutant. Prehistoric leviathan whale? A prehistoric giant whale? Then it might be dangerous. Rain then walked towards the side of the ship. White, you watch the battle above. I'm gonna go meet those two kings below. 224. Ruthless. Olivia's eyebrows were almost furrowed together. Was Rain about to take action? But the problem was, he was actually going to dive into the water. During the contest for marriage, Rain never went into the water, especially when he defeated three opponents on land in the battle against the ancient king's conspiracy. It was obvious that he was a land-type mutant. How could he possibly go into the water? Trajan also had this question and asked Armin next to him urgently. Excuse me, miss, may I ask what kind of mutant your leader is? Isn't he a land-type mutant? Armin thought for a moment and replied, he's an underwater mutant. Scout almost spewed out a mouthful of blood. An underwater mutant? How is that possible? He's clearly a land-type mutant. Otherwise how could he have defeated those three people? Wait. Trajan suddenly said thoughtfully, that day, he seemed to really not have transformed. Scout felt as if he had been struck by lightning in his mind. General, that's impossible. He must have transformed. Maybe his transformation was just more subtle. Trajan shook his head. I can't be sure about that. But at least from his appearance, there's a good chance he didn't transform. If Rain really didn't transform at that time, then it was completely plausible for him an underwater mutant. But if he didn't transform, then he was able to defeat three strong opponents at the fifth rank or above, who were all in a transformed state. It was terrifying to think about it. But now, these circumstances were unclear, and the best course of action was to wait for the final result. Two minutes later, several bodies floated up to the surface of the sea, all of them sailors from the Three Kings' army. Ten minutes later, Rain had jumped onto the ship, followed by Arson and Windbell carrying two people who were barely alive and covered in wounds. When Arson and Windbell threw the two people onto the deck, Scout's jaw almost hit the ground. These two people were none other than the Ocean King and the Ancient King. He turned his head slowly and saw Rain wiping his hair with a towel as if nothing had happened. Shobe, hurry up, Rain said. Got it, boss. Uncle Scout, that guy. Olivia tugged on Scout's clothes. He took down two kings so quickly. How is that possible? What kind of mutation is he? Scout was just as surprised as Olivia but he could only shake his head in confusion. I don't know. It's just... I can't figure it out either. Meanwhile, the battle was coming to an end. Park was completely suppressed in his mutation when facing Shobe and couldn't use his full strength. As a heavy rhinoceros, his strength, defense, and attack were top-notch, but he was too slow to keep up with Shobe's elusive movements and couldn't even touch his real body. Especially after seeing his allies being taken out, Park felt even more helpless. A few minutes later, with burns all over his body, he collapsed to the ground. Without any hope left, the other members of the Three Kings army were like scattered sand, defeated and wiped out in an instant. Rain counted the number of people and found that there were some injuries on their side. But with more people, they could quickly rescue the wounded. Plus, with Avril's overall control, no one died in battle. Biological mutations are still a bit lacking, Rain shook his head. Ironically, the Swamp King... One of Terra King's subordinates was the most difficult to deal with among the ten kings. That guy was really pitiful. He happened to get a swamp mutation in the Azure era. He was afraid of water, but there was water everywhere here. If it weren't for Frank's limited for maneuver, it would have been really difficult to deal with him. The Ancient King and the Ocean King were actually very strong. If Rain hadn't his third stage, they would have definitely suffered a great loss in the underwater battlefield. Of course, if it weren't for Rain's third stage, he wouldn't have been so confident in facing these three kings. The crew skillfully cleaned up the battlefield, throwing the dead enemies into the sea, where another terrifying creature was waiting to be fed. One bear tied up the three kings, and Rain walked up to the ancient king. Hey, stop pretending to be dead. Be honest if you want to live. The ancient king gasped for breath and looked at Rain weakly. You. You're a scaly dragon mutation. But even if you're a scaly dragon mutation, you can't be that strong. What level are you? Trajan was stunned. Rain was a scaly dragon mutation. It turned out to be an underwater mutation. Rain shook his head. What's your problem? 
It should be you answer my questions. I'm asking you, where is the map to the mysterious stone? You want the map? King narrowed his eyes slightly. I won't tell you. You'll never get the map from me. Rain's eyes suddenly turned cold. He looked at Seleucus and Park, and from their eye contact with King, it seemed that they had reached some kind of agreement with King, and Rain vaguely guessed what they were thinking. They were going to conceal the location of the map together. Rain shook his head, pulled out a titanium alloy dagger from his waist, and said I'm curious, why do you think I won't kill you? King, I'm asking you again, I hope your answer won't disappoint me this time. Ha! Huh? I said I won't tell you. Go ahead and kill me if you dare. Then you'll never find the map. Rain narrowed his eyes and walked up to King. Suddenly, Rain turned the dagger around and stabbed King in the throat. The whole room fell silent in surprise. Olivia covered her mouth. She couldn't believe that the carefree guy would become so ruthless in this moment. Wasn't it said that he never harmed the locals in his jurisdiction? Wasn't it said that he reduced the tax rate on the island and won the support of the residents? Wasn't it said that even the most ordinary residents could chat with the governor without any pressure? Based on the intelligence they obtained, Rain gave people the feeling that he wouldn't kill easily. In battle, that was another matter. Accidents could happen in the heat of battle. But now, they had already won. Besides, wasn't he afraid of not finding the map? Olivia didn't know Rain well. Those who did know Rain knew that their leader was definitely not a soft-hearted guy. Under his command, pirates were not spared. His kindness and affability were only for certain people. But for enemies, he had never shown mercy. All right, it's your turn. I'm only asking once, where is the map? Rain looked at Seleucus. Seleucus looked at King lying on the ground in horror. The overlord of the King-class sea area had fallen in a pool of blood. Seleucus wouldn't receive any special treatment compared to King. When he withdrew his horrified gaze and looked at Rain again, a sudden chill rose in his heart. This teenager was scarier than the Ice Emperor. Aye, aye, I'll tell you. 225. Precious Gifts. Seleucus and Park were scared and admitted that they had both maps on their ship. This guy is insane, not giving anyone a second chance. King's the best example. According to tradition, it was time to harvest the spoils of war. Now Rain had nine ships and nearly 2,000 crew members, making their efficiency ten times higher than before, and everyone started to get busy. These things didn't need Rain's personal attention anymore. They could be left to one bear and two bear to handle. Avril was busy treating the wounded, while everyone else was busy on the deck. Rain was chatting with Trajan and the others in the control tower. The room was quiet. Scout looked at Trajan and saw him make a gesture at him, so Scout finally spoke up. Rain, my brother, what level are you really? Rain put down his coffee, looked at the three of them, and said, Let's not be in a hurry to find out. Trajan, about our previous bet, what do you say? Trajan smiled slightly, there's nothing to say. I'm willing to bet and lose. Rain couldn't help but be overjoyed. If Trajan was willing to join his fleet, it would be a great help to him. Trajan would be an SSR ranked character in the game. He was definitely rare and hard to come by. That's great. Rain slapped the table and stood up. Now we are family, and I can answer your previous question. My body is different from ordinary people. I can evolve multiple times, and each time I evolve, my attributes will accumulate and grow. So even though I am only a stage for level 10, my basic attributes are much higher than the average mutant. Olivia looked at Rain incredulously. Multiple mutations? Impossible. All books say that a human body can only withstand one mutation. Rain smiled slightly. The books are not wrong. Huh. Olivia was even more confused. Trajan pondered for a long time, then suddenly looked shocked at Rain. Rain, did you? Did you fuse with the body of the son of the sea god? Rain shook his head. I am the son of the sea god. Countless questions in Trajan's mind were finally answered at that moment. Why did Rain look like he was only 15 years old? Why was he so strong even when he didn't transform? Why was his stage for level 10 much stronger than others? The son of the sea god was a treasure that was born for this era. Even the strong man in the sky class sea would be jealous of it. Also, didn't you notice my vice captain? Rain continued, she is the key to our victory in battle. You mean Ms. Avril? Scout asked, I did notice that she seemed to be using some kind of skill earlier. Yes, she can change the activity ability of cells by 45%, which can enhance the combat effectiveness of our own crew and reduce that of the enemy. However, it seems that her influence can only affect biological type mutants. 45% cell activity. That's too terrifying. Is she a support type mutant? Trajan widened his eyes. Yes. No wonder. Too strong. The crew on your warship, just like your fleet, 
has amazed me. Trajan shook his head. Rain laughed, actually. There are still many secrets on my ship for you to discover in the future. Trajan nodded Rain. No, I should call you captain now. How do you plan to receive my people? I must declare in advance that I only promise to personally join your fleet. If the conditions you offer cannot impress the several thousand people under my command, they may not merge with your bounty group. Rain had obviously planned it all out and said last time, I heard you mention that you have three Dragon-class combat power battleships, so I plan to build one or two more aircraft carrier fleets. The configuration of an aircraft carrier fleet is roughly equivalent to my current one, and I plan to let you command that fleet, so you can take about 2,000 to 3,000 people with you. The rest of the people, I plan to let them help me manage the islands I currently have. By defeating the Three Kings Coalition this time, I can control 10 more islands, in addition to my original 6, for a total of 16. I have studied the planning of Pandora Island, which is very scientific and well managed. I believe there are many talented people in this area. I hope you can assign them to my various islands to assist in management. After I defeat the Ice Emperor and clear out the pirate groups here, no fleet in the King Class Sea will be able to pose a threat to me. Then I will clean up the nearby sea monsters and open up stable routes between the islands. At that time, even if I only collect 20 points of taxes, I believe the income will be much higher than it is now. Excessive taxation is not good. Only when residents have greater profit margins can they better develop their businesses. If the economy of the entire King Class C can be activated, then with so many islands, we can definitely make a fortune. Rain became more and more excited as he spoke. There was no way around it. He needed 100 million pearls to level up to the next level. But he could only get a few million pearls from defeating a 10 kings. He had to find a way to earn more money. Trajan was stunned. Wait, wait, slow down. You're saying you want to sweep all the pirate groups in the King Class C, clean up sea monsters, and then establish routes between all the islands? Then you want to further reduce taxes by 10 points? Why are you doing this? Rain frowned and naturally said, only by maintaining long-term stability can we obtain greater economic benefits. My goodness. Trajan didn't pay attention to Rain's money-oriented goals. He only saw a young leader who cared about the residents of the King Class C area. Trajan stood up slowly, with a very serious expression. Scout and Olivia also stood up, making Rain a little puzzled. Trajan said in a deep voice, Captain Rain, I am very sorry that I underestimated your ambitions and vision before. I didn't expect you to be such a broad-minded leader. What Captain Rain wants to do is something that I, Trajan, dare to think but not do. Here, on behalf of all residents of the King Class C area, I salute Captain Rain. After speaking, Trajan bowed to Rain first, and Scout and Olivia followed suit. Rain was quite depressed. Did he not make his goals clear enough? Why were they only concerned about reducing taxes? They didn't even grasp the key point. Trajan, Scout, Olivia, what are you doing? Get up. Trajan took a deep breath. Being able to follow Captain Rain is our honor. I and my 7,800 former Navy officers and soldiers are willing to follow the captain. Since we have left the Navy, I also do not want to manage Pandora Island for them. I occupied and built the island, and they have no right to take it back. We have also saved some money over the years, but we have spent a lot on island construction and disaster response. Now there is not much left, about 20 million. These funds will be handed over to Captain Rain to manage. Captain, I hope to see a different King Class C area. Rain was shocked. 20 million pearls plus a Pandora Island. Trajan actually turned them all over. This reward was too great. For such a valuable gift, Rain chose to accept it. Trajan, you can rest assured that I will do it. Rain affirmed. 226. The second aircraft carrier. After two busy days in the nearby waters, the crew found most of the treasure chests. In total, they obtained 5.44 million pearls and 5.5 million in savings. Armin was currently organizing the skill books, diagrams, and various other items they obtained, which would take some time. As Scout watched piles of pearls being poured into boxes and then carried into the captain's quarters, he couldn't help but feel his mouth water. So many pearls. General, this is already half of our savings from the past 20 years. Trajan couldn't help but sigh. They made money quickly but not everyone can defeat the Three Kings army. Rain's focus had now shifted more towards the mysterious stone map, with pearls and other treasures becoming less important. They recovered Seleucus and Park's maps, but King's map was still missing. In the room, Rain placed the four maps together. Since the maps were hand-drawn by each fleet, and not a complete piece, 
It was impossible to complete the puzzle based on texture alone. They had to try and piece them together based on the graphics depicted on each map, which was difficult. Captain, it seems like there are still many missing pieces, and it's hard to put them together. Armin tilted her head and struggled to recognize each map's position. Plus, the maps depict a mirage and without any coordinates, it's difficult to determine their order. Rain frowned, surprised that even with all four maps, he still couldn't piece together the puzzle. Furthermore, even though so many people witnessed the mirage at the time, they couldn't determine its location. It was evident that even if they were to obtain all the maps, it still wouldn't necessarily lead them to their destination. However, this could be considered good news since if it were easy to find, others would have already taken the mysterious stone. With his radar advantage, his chances of finding it were greater than others. For now, let's focus on finding all the maps and then search slowly. Oh, and let's go search the islands controlled by King to see if we can find the map. Yes, Captain. Rain and his group returned to Pandora Island. Last time Rain was here as a guest, but two days later he returned as the new owner of the island. For years, Trajan had only held a position in the Navy, responsible for registering the fleet information in the King Class Sea. The Navy needed him to set an example, and he did not refuse, just considering it a way to repay the Navy for recognizing his abilities. He had not severed ties with the Navy completely, but Trajan had lost his taste for war and intended to spend his retirement on Pandora Island. This delicate balance was shattered when Rain appeared. The two sides had fundamental differences, and Trajan had been enduring the Navy for twenty years. Now that he had joined forces with Rain, he no longer had to endure. Upon returning to Pandora Island, Trajan transformed the island's flag into Dad's, while Rain officially occupied the governor's mansion. The handover was a big task, and Scout, Shobe, and others were busy with it. Meanwhile, Rain began working on building his second aircraft carrier fleet. Pandora Island was economically prosperous, and materials were relatively abundant, but it could not withstand Rain's massive purchases. However, during the battle with the Three Kings Coalition, Rain did not destroy their three main ships in order to obtain the map. After bringing them back, they could be decomposed into a large amount of materials, which slightly eased Rain's resource crisis. For other resources, they had to rely on Shobe and the Navy personnel who went to work on various islands to bring them back together. Three months later, on this day, Rain and Avril specifically brought Trajan and Olivia to the shipyard. After this period of preparation, all the materials he needed had been prepared. Olivia looked strangely at the empty shipyard and asked, Rain, where are the shipyard workers? I sent them back. Back? Then how are you going to build the ship? You brought so many materials here. After getting to know Rain over this period of time, Olivia's attitude towards him changed a lot. Although she had objections to Rain's interference in her contest for marriage, his way of doing things impressed Olivia. At least Rain was not a bad person. Avril chuckled. Our captain doesn't need workers to build ships. How is that possible? Trajan asked. Trajan, you'll see it for yourself when the time comes. Avril didn't explain it in detail. Even if she told Trajan and Olivia, they probably wouldn't believe it. They had to see it with their own eyes. The four of them stood at the port, looking at the mountain of materials. Trajan couldn't believe that Rain could build a ship out of them. Until. Build a small aircraft carrier, Rain said, and the materials began to cut and assemble themselves automatically. Trajan and Olivia were stunned. Is this magic? This is unbelievable. My goodness, what did you do, Rain? Rain and Avril just smiled slightly. They had seen this scene many times. Whenever a new batch of crew members arrived, they would be stunned. In three days, a huge ship identical to the super battleship appeared on the sea after a large amount of materials were rapidly assembled. During these three days, Trajan and Olivia didn't leave, except for a few trips to the restroom. I don't know what to say anymore, Trajan shook his head. It's a miracle, really a miracle. Captain Rain, your ability has exceeded my understanding. This is even more unbelievable than the son of the sea god. The son of the sea god was rare, but there was still more than one of them. Trajan had never been to the sky class sea. He could be sure that only Rain could do this under the sun. Olivia said Rain, I finally understand why you are so relaxed, yet your crew members are devoted to you. You showed them unlimited possibilities. Avril interrupted Olivia. That's only one aspect of it, but you still don't understand Caption. Actually, we follow him more because of other reasons. Oh? Avril, what are the other reasons? Olivia asked. Avril thought for a moment and said, He always treats us like family, and we trust him 100%. Rain, 
who was listening in front of them, was a little surprised. It seemed that his image among the crew members was quite positive. Should he be stricter with himself in the future, maybe he could become a legendary captain. In any case, after three months of settling in Pandora Island, the second aircraft carrier of the Pandora shipyard was completed. To differentiate it from the first aircraft carrier, Rain named it Super Battleship No. 2. Afterward, Rain began to expand the fleet of this aircraft carrier, including carrier-based planes, frigates, destroyers, and so on. Now, they had plenty of funds, and they were just waiting for Shobe and the others to bring more materials. Shobe and the others should hurry up. With another carrier fleet, my carrier battle group will be complete. Rain stood on the high wall of the island, staring into the distance. This time, he wasn't as relaxed as before. Two words were constantly hovering in his mind. Ice Emperor. 227. Completion of the Carrier Battle Group. Rain now owned 17 islands in the King Class Sea, including Pandora Island. Trajan's subordinates were actively involved in the management of the major islands, helping Rain to refurbish them. Due to frequent pirate and sea monster activity in the current shipping lanes, commercial exchanges between the 17 islands were still limited to a few effective routes. However, trade between the various islands remained more active than before, and residents have clearly felt the huge policy changes, working harder to develop their own industries. Starting from the third month, the tax revenue of the 17 islands increased to 580,000, Pandora Island reached a total income of 520,000, and Rain's monthly income reached 1.1 million. In the two years it took to build the carrier battle group, Rain had already earned 25 million in tax revenue alone, in addition to his savings of 35 million. Even after deducting the 15 million consumed by the two new fleets, he still saved 45 million. He had saved nearly half of the 1 billion gold pearls needed for the next level upgrade, even with the significant expansion of his fleet strength. Rain's carrier battle group had finally been completed, which meant Rain would need to conduct a large-scale appointment and dismissal. The carrier battle group consisted of three carrier formations, divided into the first formation, second formation, and third formation. Rain served as the leader of the bounty group. Trajan serves as the fleet captain of the second formation and for the third formation. Rain chose Charge King to serve as fleet captain. Charge King was once the leader of the King Kong Guard, and also an outstanding old Navy officer. His command ability even surpassed Shobes. The two fleet captains of the first formation were Shobe and Avril, who served as both vice leader and part-time fleet captain. The two fleet captains of the second formation are all Trajan's old subordinates, Scout and Lieutenant Colonel Leiden. The two fleet captains of the third formation are True King and Como, Trajan's subordinate lieutenant colonel. In addition, Rain promoted many old members to become captains, including Shane, Bolton, and the core members under Charge King. Although one bear and two bear had been following Rain for a long time, they preferred to stay on Rain's ship. After all, their captain was on board, as well as Fancy, whom they needed to protect. At this point, Rain already had a total of 27 battleships including three small aircraft carriers, 120 fighter jets. And the bounty group had one leader, one deputy leader, two fleet commanders, six squadron commanders, 18 ship captains, and 6,500 crew members, according to the crew list in his system, which spans several pages. In terms of system permissions, Rain had the highest level and could manage any ship. Avril had the second level of permission, followed by Trajan and Charge King, who had the third level of permission. The fleet captains had the fourth level of permission, and the ship captains had the fifth level of permission, which meant they could only control their own battleships. During Rain's preparations for the carrier battle group, Trajan had already fallen in love with his third level permission and spent his days training with his subordinates in distant seas. This was good, as Trajan's subordinates had not seen how Rain operated in combat, and it was necessary for them to become more familiar with their operations. After everything was ready, Rain decided to use several battles to hone the coordination of the fleet, especially to increase the practical experience of the newcomers. His target was other fleets and sea monsters in the vicinity of Seventeen Island. Half a year later, in a raging storm, a steel fleet rode the winds and raced through the storm. One of the three carrier fleets suddenly turned and headed towards the other side, apparently going to clear out some enemies. Rain sat in the captain's room knowing the fleet's movements like the back of his hand, but he didn't continue to pay attention. He knew Trajan and Charge King's command abilities very well, and those two guys were not much worse than him. Charge King sought stability, 
which was similar to Reign's style, while Trajan was more aggressive and combined with his rich combat experience, could be a sharp knife for the fleet. With such an excellent technical system at his disposal, Trajan was like a fish in water, and he wouldn't be comfortable unless he fought a few more battles. With Trajan in action, Rain had nothing to worry about. He opened the crew's information list and saw that Trajan had brought many strong individuals, including 28 members above stage 6, which was more than the top-tier fighters of the Three Kings Army. Moreover, there were also many strong individuals of stage 5 and stage 4. Without exaggeration, Trajan's addition has multiplied the strength of Rain's crew. Of course, Rain was still cautious at the beginning. He admired Trajan's character, but he did not know the people under Trajan, so he did not strengthen them. After two and a half years of being together, Rain's guard was slightly lowered, and he began to consider strengthening some of the new crew members. Trajan had become a member of Rain's crew, but it was frustrating that Rain couldn't see Trajan's mutation status. Name, Trajan. Position, level 3 authorized captain. Mutation type, host level is not high enough to view. Mutation stage, host level is not high enough to view. Although Trajan told Rain that his level was at stage 7 level, he only said that his mutation type was material based, and then teased that they would have to rely on him to deal with the Ice Emperor. There were some things that Rain didn't say to Trajan face to face. Trajan hadn't competed at sea for 20 years after all. Could he still be a match for the Ice Emperor after 20 years of neglect? Trajan was now very motivated, and Rain didn't want to say anything directly to him. The best way was to learn about Trajan's strength through the system and prepare accordingly. Again, it says my level is not high enough. Fancy and white are the same. Why is my level not high enough? Rain was very frustrated. When he was at level 2 or 3, it was understandable that his level was not high enough. But now he's at level 4 to 10. Fancy clearly hadn't upgraded, yet Rain still couldn't see. Rain had always wanted White to level up, but since he couldn't see the guy's specific situation, he had no idea how to cultivate him. What level does the system refer to? Is it my ship's level, or my own mutation level? No, I can appoint their positions, which most likely means it's not a battleship level problem. Rain racked his brains, using all his experience playing games. It could be my mutation level. Or it could be that my mutation type level is not high enough. Oh yeah, Tick said that stage 5 is a bottleneck for mutants. I'm at stage 4 level 10, so let's mutate again and see if I can see their status. Damn it, I have 17 islands but I still haven't found a rare sea god fruit in two and a half years. Why am I so unlucky? I should level up again, or I'll be overtaken by these guys again. Rain frowned. Just then, his intercom rang, and Armin's voice came through. Captain just received news that a group of mysterious merchants arrived at Eastern Dawn Island. They want to see you and said they have something good that you might be interested in. What good thing? I don't know if what they're saying is true, but they said they have a legendary sea god fruit. Rain immediately stood up from his seat. Go to Eastern Dawn Island right away. 228. Naga. The bounty group was still performing the cleaning mission at sea, while Rain piloted the super battleship back to Eastern Dawn Island on his own. Upon arriving at the island, Rain headed straight to the governor's mansion. The guards on the island knew Rain, so there was no unnecessary trouble as they went directly into the mansion. Governor, you're back, one of the staff exclaimed happily. Rain nodded. What about those merchants? Oh, you asked us to keep them here. They're resting in the reception area now, the staff hesitated, then continued, Governor, they're all a bit strange. They checked in last night, but I've never seen them take off their coats. Rain frowned and thought for a moment. What was so strange about not taking off their coats? Whatever, he could see them now and discover any oddities. Call them over. Let's meet in the reception area. Yes, Governor. I'll do that right away. Shortly after, seven tall people in robes appeared at the entrance of the reception area. Rain invited them in. These people looked very strange. They were all over 1.95 meters tall, and from the hunched cloaks they wore, they seemed to be all hunchbacks. They would all be over two meters tall if they stood up straight. Even if they were mutants, this should be their untransformed state. It was rare to see seven people all over two meters tall. All seven of them hid under their cloaks, with their hoods pulled down low. Rain could barely see their mouths, and especially after seeing Rain, they didn't take off their hoods but instead pulled them down even lower. Hello, please have a seat. Rain withdrew his gaze and spoke first. I heard you have something you want to show me. Thank you, Governor Rain we're fine standing. The other party didn't make a move. 
The man at the front of the group spoke, and a chill ran down Rain's spine at the sound of his voice. His voice was extremely unpleasant as if his vocal cords were rubbing against each other in his throat, making Rain's whole body break out in goosebumps. As soon as one bear and two bears saw these people, they couldn't help standing up. They stood by Rain and Fancy, ready to defend at any moment. We have a sea god fruit here, which is a very rare quality. I wonder if Governor Rain is interested. Rain scrutinized the person and asked, Why do you have to come to me? Why not just go to the auction house, or find other governors to buy it? The reputation of ten kings and one emperor should be much louder than me a newcomer. Governor Rain, we know that you have almost occupied half of the king-class sea area. From the way you manage the islands, we think that you may be different from ordinary people. A slight grin on the person's mouth, revealing a row of sharp teeth. Rain frowned but didn't interrupt, listening to them continue. How could someone who even exploits their own people show mercy to underlings of a different race? The person said I'm afraid that as soon as we show up, they will kill us. As he spoke, the person took off his hood first. After seeing this, the other six also took off their hoods. Seeing the appearance of this person, Rain, Fancy, One Bear, and Two Bear were all stunned. These people didn't look like humans at all. Their backs were curved, covered with spikes and scales. Their skin was green and their faces were definitely not the faces that humans should have. They looked more like Naga. One bear and two bear immediately transformed. Giant bear transformation. What are you doing? Why are you transforming here? One bear shouted. Rain raised his hand to stop one bear. They don't seem to be in their transformation state. The leader smiled. As expected of Governor Rain, you can even see that. Not bad. We didn't transform. This is our original form. We are Naga. Rain wasn't too afraid of them. After all, when the mutants transformed, they were almost not in human form. Seeing the Naga, he didn't feel too much. On the contrary, he had a skill called the Naga's gaze, so to speak, he had a little connection with the Naga. Naga, okay, you don't have to be afraid. As long as you don't pose a threat to me or my island, I won't indiscriminately kill innocent people. Rain tried to make his tone sound calm. Thank you, Governor Rain. The Nage named Salada said, since we can communicate happily. Continuing with your question, the most critical point is that other people don't have what we want. Rain furrowed his brows. It seemed that they didn't want pearls. They didn't come to sell Sigad fruit but to exchange it. What do you want? We want a promise from you, Salada said without hesitation. A promise? What promise? To kill the Ice Emperor and save our people. The seven Naga all looked at Rain, obviously more nervous than before. Why? Rain didn't agree immediately. Governor, who doesn't know throughout the King Class C area that you have been preparing to fight the Ice Emperor? In that case, why not take the opportunity to agree to us and ask so many questions? Rain smiled slightly. Who said I have to fight the Ice Emperor to the death? My relationship with the Ice Emperor has nothing to do with our transaction. If you want to do business with me, please show some sincerity. If you're being evasive, I'm sorry, I don't want to be used as a tool by anyone. Salada hesitated a bit, and turned to talk to his companions in another language. Yuri Yuri SCRCH La Jigua. GRBG Shiwa, Jili Gua. Jigu Jigu, Pa La Shimi Gua. Rain was speechless. After much discussion, Salada turned to Rain and said Governor, Okay, I'll tell you the truth, but you must promise to keep it a secret. Millions of years ago, the Naga clan, a branch of humans, began to live underwater. They kept their distance from human society and rarely appeared in the human eye. However, the arrival of the Azure Era changed this situation completely. The changes on Earth have caused the current situation. Our territory overlaps with humans, sea monsters, and other creatures, and there are also two factions within our own clan. The Hawks advocate fighting for territory with other races, while the Doves advocate continuing to survive cautiously in the cracks. Twenty years ago, the strongest sea monster in the King-class waters, the Mermaid King, was actually not a real sea monster. He was a strong member of our hawk faction, Lusa. At that time, a navy defeated Lusa, and the Ice Emperor took advantage of this situation to raid our Naga clan's territory, seizing all our resources and then freezing hundreds of thousands of our clan members in the frigid sea. In fact, the so-called hawks were also forced to do so because our living space was getting smaller and smaller. They are also our clan members, and we cannot ignore them. The Ice Emperor's strength is stronger than the super strong person who defeated Lusa back then, especially after obtaining our Naga clan's advanced skills. His strength has increased dramatically. Therefore, we have to request Governor to help us rescue our clan members. 
Rain looked at Salada in surprise. Not only was he shocked by the Naga clan's past, but also by the fact that the Ice Emperor's personal strength was so strong. Even Trajan was no match for him. 229. Guardian Type Mutation. If even Trajan was not a match for the Ice Emperor, then this Sea God Fruit was of great significance to Rain. What kind of Sea God Fruit do you have? Rain asked. I want to see it first. We didn't bring it with us. If Governor Rain wants to see it, we will bring it to the designated location in the deep sea. Good. Without delay, Rain immediately left the governor's mansion with his men and the Naga. After waiting for two days at the designated location, the radar showed that the Naga had arrived. This was a blue sea god fruit, but unlike the usual green sea god fruit, it was surrounded by a faint blue light. Rain could already tell that this sea god fruit was extraordinary. This sea god fruit seemed to be in a different league compared to other rare sea god fruits. You give me the sea god fruit just like this? Aren't you afraid that I won't keep my promise? Rain asked. Governor Rain, we have been observing you since you entered the King's Sea, and we have done our research before deciding to trade with you, Salada said. There is nothing in this world that is 100% certain. We can only take a gamble now. I do intend to deal with the Ice Emperor, and I am not hiding that fact. But I am not sure if I can save your people. If you kill the Ice Emperor, his blockade will naturally be lifted. As for whether our people are still alive, that will be up to fate. Good, then there is no doubt. Rain extended his hand. Deal. Salada and Rain shook hands. Deal. The appearance of the Naga clan seemed to open a new door for Rain. The closer he got to the Corsi, the more unfamiliar this world became. If the Naga clan existed in this world, then would there be other races as well? What kind of opponents would he face in the future? The words of the archaeologist still echoed in Rain's ears. However, Rain was not afraid. Instead, he felt excited about exploring the unknown world. It's better not to let me encounter any mythical level things. I'll kick their ass if they happen to encounter me, Rain boasted. Anyway, let's take a look at the sea god fruit first. Whether we can defeat the ice emperor or not depends on you. Rain first put the sea god fruit into the strengthening room. But to everyone's surprise, this so-called legendary sea god fruit could not be strengthened. What the hell, isn't it the longer it holds on, the stronger it gets. Rain shook his head. Since the Fire Heaven Crystal could not strengthen it, Rain could only prepare to swallow it directly. Fancy, one bear, and two bears stood beside Rain, looking nervous. Captain, the Naga won't poison you, will they? Rain was taken aback for a moment. He thought about it, and the system had already confirmed that it was a sea god fruit and did not indicate any danger, so it should be fine. They won't, Rain said confidently, and then peeled off the outer skin of the sea god fruit and ate it in one bite. After five minutes, ten minutes, and thirty minutes, Rain felt that his body was undergoing some kind of rapid change. After forty-five minutes, Rain had completed the fusion. He immediately summoned the system. Rain, Captain. The body of the son of Poseidon. Stage 5 level 1 1 tenth. Basic attributes 156 times that of an ordinary person. Physical combat power 312. Each level in this stage increases by 32 points. Dot. Skills. Tiger's Fawn. 10 out of 10, within 10 seconds, speed increases by 200%, strength increases by 200%, sensing increases by 100%, and reaction speed increases by 50%. Cooldown time, 30 minutes. Mutation count 4. Detailed classification 1. Combat type biological mutation. Mutation ability. 3. Dragon transformation. First transformation. Level 31 attributes increase by 310% in water and decrease by 14% on land. Second transformation, level 31 a layer of dragon scales can be formed on the surface of the body, which can increase underwater movement speed by 200%, already at the limit, and increase defense by 155 points. Third transformation, level 31 obtain dragon skin and dragon bones, increase physical defense and hardness, Increase unarmed attack power by 155 points. And increase defense by 155 points. Detailed classification 2. Support type mutation. Naga's gaze primary 20 thirtieths can be breakthrough. Skill information. Under the current level. Gaze at the enemy unit for 1 second, causing their entire body to stiffen for 2 seconds. Detailed classification 3. Material type mutation. Flame transformation. November 20th the body can be transformed into a flame form. The basic attributes had become more and more abnormal. All the previous skill limits had been broken through, except for Naga's gaze, 
which requires additional practice to increase its level. All other skills are synchronized with Rain's level. Of course, the most important thing was the change after the fourth mutation. Detailed classification for Guardian type mutation. Guardian spirit, Naga god, modern mermaid god. What is a guardian type mutation? A new species? Rain wondered, mermaid god is mermaid god. Why add modern? Wouldn't the more ancient the god, the more powerful it is? Divine guardian, cannot be upgraded the user gains the Naga clan's divine spirit, the modern mermaid god, and can use the dragon slayer strike once within three months. Dragon slayer strike, attack power is 1000 times the user's basic attributes. Not affected by the environment, not affected by transformation, not affected by current combat power, and not affected by other skills of both sides. When used with a weapon, it can produce a sword energy attack. With just one sentence, Rain was stunned. As a result, this sea god fruit did not transform or enhance his attributes, but only gave him a skill, and a skill that cannot be upgraded. However, this skill was a bit too strong. What did attack power is 1000 times the user's basic attributes mean? If it was an ordinary stage 5 level 10 mutant, their basic attributes could reach 100 points. When multiplied by 1000, the attack power of Dragon Slayer Strike could reach 100,000 points. The attacking power of one Hurricane Anti-Ship Missile was 10,000 points. The force of this blow was equivalent to 10 Hurricane Anti-Ship Missiles. Even the Super Battleship itself cannot withstand 10 Hurricane Anti-Ship Missiles. If Rain's level was maxed out without using any skills, his basic attribute could reach 600 points. If he uses the Dragon Slayer Strike, the attack power could reach 600,000 points. Rain swallowed his saliva. Even if he could only use it once every three months, it didn't matter, one attack of 600,000 points was already enough. Holy God, I just want to upgrade my fleet well, why did you make me so strong? Rain was in a state of confusion. If he used this skill, it would truly be another cheating-like existence. 230. Destination IC. The group of seven Nagas stayed temporarily on Rain's ship. Since they were not Rain's crew, Rain was unable to see the data. With such an extraordinary skill at hand, with his personality, Rain would naturally practice until he reached the pinnacle before making its appearance. Meanwhile, Rain began to strengthen the crew under Trajan. Rain provided Trajan with five spots as the first batch of personnel to be strengthened under Trajan. Unfortunately, Trajan did not sign up himself after hearing about the effects of the Fire Heaven Crystal strengthening. It was unclear whether he had any concerns or whether his mutation was not suitable for Fire Attribute strengthening. One month later, the first batch of crew members was strengthened, and although they also lasted for more than 30 days, their level of promotion was not as obvious as Shob and Trukings, only improving by 3 or 4 levels. Considering that strengthening could be done synchronously while sailing, Rain planned to stock up on some spare materials on Pandora Island before setting off. In the process of collecting materials, Rain paid particular attention to special metals, as he wanted to make a weapon. For this reason, Rain also visited several famous blacksmiths on the island, but he still had not found the right material. Is there really a material that can withstand attacks from several hundred thousand battle power? Rain thought. All of this was seen by Salada and others. One day, Salada came uninvited to look for Rain. He went straight to the point and said, Captain Rain, are you looking for rare metals? Is it because of the sea god fruit? That sea god fruit belonged to the Naga clan, and it seemed like Salada knew something. Rain did not hide it, indeed, that's the case. I need an ultra high strength weapon. Salada nodded to his subordinates behind him, and they brought in an iron box. Salada said to Rain, I can lend you one, but you have to return it to us after you use it. Well, return? Yes, Salada said without hesitation, this is a weapon passed down by our Naga ancestors. Rain walked over and curiously looked at the box. Okay, then let's see what kind of weapon it is. A trident? Rain felt that the Naga's weapon should be that kind of shape. Salada shook his head and smiled, asking one of his men to open the box. There was actually a long sword lying inside in the box. The sword was similar to a samurai sword, with a long black iron blade that was only sharpened on one side, emitting a cold light. The sword was about one and a half meters long with a slight curve, and it was hard and lacked flexibility. When Rain tried to pick up the sword, he found that it was incredibly heavy weighing at least three to four hundred pounds. What a heavy sword, Rain said. Salada explained, this is made of mysterious iron extracted from a meteorite from outer space. Captain Rain, the Ice Emperor's strength is formidable, 
especially after obtaining our top level skill book. I hope you can defeat him with this sword and save our people, Salada continued. Rain remained noncommittal and asked, What kind of skill book did the Ice Emperor get that could increase his strength so much? The skill is called Icy Domain. No one in our tribe has mastered it because it needs to have an ice mutation to practice it. I only know how precious this skill book is, and it's as valuable as this Dragon Slayer Sword. Dragon Slayer Sword? Rain furrowed his eyebrows. From the name alone, it sounded like an incredible sword. Salada lent such a treasure to him just to let him defeat the Ice Emperor. How strong was the Ice Emperor's move? Why would there be such powerful people in a king-class sea area? After a month and a half, Rain finally led the fleet to the northeast region of the king-class sea area. Along the way, Rain did not encounter the fleets of the other five kings and the Ice Emperor. Rain found they even gave up the islands they were in charge of. After discussing among themselves, Everyone unanimously believed that the other side might have united after receiving the message of their approach. In other words, what we have to face might be a coalition of one emperor and five kings, Rain said. We don't need to waste time around here. We can head directly to the Ice Sea. Everyone's faces turned solemn. Their fleet was about to challenge half of a king-class sea area. Don't be nervous, believe in yourselves, believe in your warships, and believe in me. Rain looked resolutely at everyone. Even if it's the Ice Emperor, he cannot stop me. If he doesn't surrender, I will make him call me daddy. Avril nodded, Captain, we have never doubted you. Good, everyone, let's get pumped up. Our bounty group is unbeatable. Trajan nodded and said that's right. Pressure is a good thing. We don't need to belittle ourselves. To be honest, if it weren't for wanting to maintain the stability of the king-class sea area, I would have challenged the Ice Emperor already. Rain, Avril, and Trajan's words immediately ignited everyone's passion and the lack of confidence in the eyes of the captains and main crew members disappeared instantly. Avril is right, we are strong. If they're not afraid of us, why would they form an alliance? All right, let's take them out. Yeah, let's take them out. The aircraft carrier battle group charged towards the ice sea. During this period, rain had been leveling up, and even at stage 5, which was known as the first bottleneck period for mutants, he was still leveling up rapidly. Two months after leaving Pandora Island, Rain had reached stage 5 level 10. Trajan, who was a stage 7 warrior, still dominated everyone else on level. There were also many other former naval strongmen at stage 6 level 9. At this point, the number of people in Dad who were above stage 6 had reached 61. However, Rain's basic attributes still crushed everyone else. Late one night, the group slowed down its speed and advanced at 15 knots in the wind and rain. Taking advantage of the fact that most people were resting, Rain jumped into the sea and temporarily left the fleet, standing on Black's head. After leaving the fleet for 30 to 40 nautical miles, Rain patted Black and said, Black, stand behind me. I'm gonna test my skills. Black obediently stayed behind Rain, watching him curiously. In the dark and stormy night, Rain floated in midair with his wings, carefully drawing out the dragon slayer sword. He could only use it once every three months, which was enough time for him to recover from here to the ice sea but he could only experiment with it once. Therefore, he had to give it his all. Okay, let me see how powerful the Dragon Slayer Strike is. System, help me check the power of my next move. Rain looked at the thick darkness in front of him. The distant sea and sky had merged into one, a blackness that only occasionally flashed with lightning, momentarily blinding people. Rain held the sword in both hands, letting the rain hit him. He shouted, Dragon Slayer Strike! A green light instantly broke away from the dragon slayer sword, gradually lengthening, and the sword energy stood between the sky and the sea, shooting forward and slicing vertically. As the green light flashed by, a trench at least 10 meters deep was left on the sea surface. The water was split apart, causing the waves on both sides to surge and roll, creating waves dozens of meters high. At the moment the skill was activated, rain could no longer muster any strength falling from midair and losing his grip on the dragon slayer sword, which fell into the sea. Exhaustion. Unprecedented exhaustion overwhelmed Rain, causing his eyes to close. He could only see Blackie diving into the sea, perhaps to help him find the dragon slayer sword. Rain wasn't worried about Blackie not being able to find the sword. He lay on the sea surface, thinking of someone who had told him before. The top-level crew member in the king-class sea area can defeat a fleet alone. Rain didn't believe it at first, but now he believed it. 231. A battle that will go down in history. After three and a half months, the aircraft carrier battle group finally arrived in the ICC. 
If it looked at the previous world map, this place should be near the Arctic Ocean. Of course, it was not suitable for aircraft carriers to be stationed here before, but now it has become a vast expanse of water where large fleets can come and go freely. Is this the Ice Emperor's Lair? Rain surveyed the sea around him. It was surprisingly calm and sunny here, unlike the other parts of the King Level Sea area with harsh weather conditions. Exactly. This is the most stable climate area in the King Class Sea area, Salada said. The Ice Emperor chose this place for a reason. Where are your people? Salada looked towards the sea. They are down there. Soon, the reconnaissance aircraft reported back with the location of the enemy ships. Rain immediately notified the fleet and headed toward the enemy ships. The Azure era never lacked vast expanses of sea, and this place was no exception. The blue sky had white clouds drifting past, and the sea was a deep blue color with no wind. Occasionally, seagulls flew by in the distance. Two large fleets faced off against each other, with a distance of about 50,000 meters between them. It seemed that the Ice Emperor's Ice God flagship was not weaker than Rain's in terms of onboard radar. Rain had 27 warships, 120 fighter jets, and 240 drones. At the moment, all aircraft were preparing to take off. The enemy's warships were exaggeratedly spread out across the entire sea area, with an estimate of at least 1,500 ships. Rain's three aircraft carriers and the Ice Emperor's Ice God 1, 2, and 3 were all large battleships over 300 meters long. The calm sea surface was filled with an overwhelming sense of tension. Everyone knew that once the firing began, this battle would be recorded in history books. The other side did not fire, nor did they take any action. On Rain's side, the three aircraft carrier formations had already dispersed. At this moment, a small boat sailed out from the opposing formation and approached Rain's direction. The eyes of tens of thousands of people were fixed on this slowly advancing small wooden boat. There were only seven people on the boat, six rowing and one standing on the boat. Seeing this boat, Rain thought of his past self. The small boat arrived in front of Rain. This boat was as small as an ant compared to Rain's ship. But the person standing on the boat was not afraid at all. He shouted to Rain, Captain Rain, I Semperer asked me to give you a message. As long as you turn back now, we can give you two boats, and you can safely take 500 people away. Rain stood on the deck and sneered, Give me two boats. 500 people? Yes. Two boats. The rest of the boats and crew must stay behind. Rain was amused by Ice Emperor's offer. Then tell Ice Emperor I have a message for him too. Please speak. Ha! Rain laughed three times. Please speak. I'm done. Rain looked at the envoy playfully. It was only then that the envoy realized that the message Rain asked him to deliver was ha ha ha. The envoy was not stupid and had already figured out that there was nothing more to say, so he had the boat rowed back. How did it go? What did they say? On the front deck of Ice God No. 1, a burly man in a black cloak with his hands behind his back asked the envoy. The envoy's face looked a bit ugly, and he hesitantly said, He also asked me to deliver a message to you. What message? The envoy suddenly realized that Rain's message was a bit difficult to deliver. If he said such a thing to Ice Emperor, would he be killed? But he could only relay the message truthfully, ha ha. He imitated Rain's tone. What did he say? The burly man asked impatiently. Well, just ha ha ha, the envoy said with a stiff scalp. It took Ice Emperor a long time to react, and he looked toward the opposite fleet with a cold snort, you've got balls, kid, all fleets, prepare for battle. Fight until the bitter end. Anyone who fears death and attempts to flee from the battle will have their family held accountable. The calm sea was finally shattered by the sound of the Ice Emperor's charge horn. A massive fleet of all types of warships set sail and took to the skies with countless drones and fighter jets flying toward Rain's direction. Rain snorted coldly and spoke through the intercom, Brothers, prepare for battle. 120 fighter jets quickly took off, while more than 200 drones launched from the optimized Yamato. On the sea, Super Battleship No. 2 moved towards the left wing while Super Battleship No. 3 moved towards the right. With the launch of the Hurricane anti-ship missiles, the battle had begun in earnest. Boom, 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 boom. The sea was lit up with explosions as Super Battleship 2 and 3 launched a fierce attack. The aircraft carrier fleet still held the range advantage at the current distance. And except for Ice God 2 and 3, no other warships were able to cause damage to the fleet. However, the Ice Emperor's threat drove all the warships to fearlessly charge toward the aircraft carrier fleet, even if it meant being hit. With the cover of Ice God 2 and 3's firepower, they still charged forward. Underwater, countless torpedoes collided, 
creating water curtains dozens of meters high. With the use of offensive torpedoes, counter torpedoes, and torpedo nets, all warships displayed their unique abilities. Meanwhile, an unimaginable air battle was unfolding in the sky. The enemy fighter jets were piloted by humans, and they also had a large number of drones providing cover. The two sides engaged in a fierce fight in the air. Trajan stood on Super Battleship Number 2, observing the enemy's movements. Captain, some of the enemy warships appear to have been reinforced, a crew member reported, especially some of the heavy armor ramming warships. Trajan nodded, having already noticed this. He spoke into the intercom, prioritize attacking their death squads with armor-piercing shells and coordinate with torpedo attacks to ensure they are sunk. Yes, Captain. Pull the drone formation back to the furthest range of the machine guns and provide air support. At the same time, Trajan controlled the Hurricane anti-ship missiles on Super Battleship No. 2, sinking six heavy armor warships. All ships maintain formation, control the formation distance, and maintain a distance of 2,000 meters. The formation was centered on Super Battleship No. 2, with four escort ships on the inside and four destroyer ships on the outside. The enemy warships charged too fiercely and they had already made ample defensive preparations, with many warships abandoning their firepower systems and focusing solely on defense. Combined with the formidable firepower of Ice God 2, the enemy finally managed to enter their range. Fire and hit them hard. The captain on Ice God 2 roared Trajan, do you really think we're just gonna sit here and wait for death? I'm gonna personally take down you, the legendary captain. Before he could finish his sentence, a destroyer ship in Trajan's formation exploded. Seeing this, Trajan gave a quick order Ethan, control the battleship to retreat and exchange positions with Frigate 3. Aye, Captain. Trajan grunted, Destroyer 6 and Escort 3 set fire on Ice God 2. Cover Hurricane Anti-Ship Missiles. Hurricane Anti-Ship Missiles. Target Ice God 2. Fire. Boom 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 boom. The battle on the surface of the sea instantly went into a white heat. 232. Strength of the Ice Emperor. Though the configurations of Fleet 2 and 3 were identical to Rain's Fleet 1, they lack many functions, such as repairing, manufacturing ammunition, and the flame shield. Over the years, Rain had been preparing, but the Ice Emperor had been preparing too, significantly increasing the defense of the warships, strengthening the main warship's firepower range and power, purchasing combat aircraft and drones, and fully dividing the functions of the 1,500 warships. With Rain's battle data and such targeted preparations, they did not repeat the Three Kings Coalition's mistakes and successfully broke through the firepower blockade of Rain. As the enemy warships approached, the Trajan and Charge King fleets suffered increasingly intense attacks, constantly changing formations and transferring the injured warships. Rain kept his gaze fixed on the Ice God One, which remained motionless. Since all of the opponent's warships except the Ice God One had already been deployed, Rain no longer needed to hold back. Shob, you go support Charge King. Avril, you go support Trajan, Rain said into the intercom. Yes, Captain. Eight warships headed towards Fleet 2 and 3, quickly joining them and rapidly engaging in combat. Fleet 2 already had four warships out of commission, and Fleet 3 had five. After joining forces, they quickly reorganized and launched a coordinated counterattack against the opponent. This was the most intense, and longest battle of Rain's entire campaign. The entire ICC could hear the continuous sound of gunfire, and the sky was covered with swirling combat aircraft. With both sides exceptionally well prepared, they exchanged fire while moving at high speeds. In close combat, both Trajan and Charge King's fleets suffered varying degrees of losses. It wasn't until dusk that the fierce battle on the sea finally came to an end. The Ice Emperor's Ice God II was sunk, and the third ship was heavily damaged and unable to navigate. Super Battleship No. 2 and 3 were both damaged to varying degrees, with weapon systems malfunctioning. But all 1,500 warships of the Coalition had been sunk. Of the 12 warships in Super Battle Fleet 2's formation, 8 were sunk and 4 survived. Of the 12 warships in Super Fleet 3's formation, 10 were sunk and 2 survived. In terms of the Air Force, both sides suffered devastating losses. All of the Ice Emperor's aircraft was shot down, and there were few drones left. Rain lost over 80 fighter jets and 160 drones. Fortunately, Rain's ships were all operated by the captain with the assistance of crew members, and the warship's defensive performance was excellent. Even if a warship was sunk, it was after multiple attacks, and the crew had plenty of time to escape. After the battle, 
most of their crew members were rescued. Super Battleship No. 2 and 3 returned to Rain's side, and Trajan and Charge King were both exhausted. Captain, except for Ice God 1, all enemy ships have been destroyed or incapacitated. But our battleships... Trajan couldn't continue, feeling ashamed. Rain's voice came over the intercom. You all have performed excellently. Rain's voice was not loud and very calm, but Avril, who had followed Rain the longest, immediately noticed something was off. Their captain seemed a bit angry, because normally, Rain rarely speaks so calmly. Was it because of the large losses in their battleships? Avril looked around and suddenly understood. Several of the naval captains who had followed Rain for a long time were not on any battleship. Arson was not there, Armin was not there, Shane was not there, Old Bai was not there, Bolton was not there, Tick was not there, and Truqueen was not there. Most of the naval captains were not present. Trajan, Ice Emperor's last battleship may not fire. If they do, you come and block them, Rain said. Control of Super Battleship 1 is temporarily handed over to you. Captain, rest assured Ice Emperor is in my hands. Trajan stood at the bow of the ship, staring tightly at the huge battleship ahead. After Rain finished speaking, he jumped onto Shob's ship. Shob, go and help Trajan. I'll control this ship. Aye, Captain. Immediately, Rain drove this large ship and left the fleet. System search. Start rescue mission. Fast. Little Blackie, help find people. Ice Emperor's preparations were so adequate that it was difficult to imagine. In this life and death battle, he and the five kings armed their fleets to the extreme. Moreover, Ice Emperor had the courage to go all out making people have to take this king-level master of the sea seriously. At this time, the only two ships with complete firepower remaining were Ice God 1 and Super Battleship 1. Only Ice Emperor could have pushed Rain to this point. With the help of the system and Blackie, Rain's search and rescue speed was the fastest. He could not abandon his crew. Arson was holding Armin close to Rain, and Rain quickly found Shane, Old Bai, and the others. Shane and Scout were seriously injured, and Blackie rescued the two of them. At the same time, Trajan, Olivia, Arthur, Shob, and others were staring firmly at the huge battleship in front of them. At this moment, the sea in front suddenly turned into a sparkling white and was extending toward them. The sea was rapidly freezing. The other group of people was slowly walking towards them on the frozen sea. Ice Emperor is here. Trajan took a deep breath. Grandpa, Olivia became nervous, tightly holding on to Trajan's clothes. If it were someone else, she would not be so nervous. But this person was the Ice Emperor. Twenty years ago, the Ice Emperor was the only person in the King Class C who could contend with her grandpa. And even after twenty years of her grandpa's retirement, the Ice Emperor remained strong. Could her grandpa defeat the only emperor in the King Class C? Freezing the sea surface? Just this scene alone was unbelievable. Trajan squinted slightly. The Ice Emperor's control range, freezing speed, and ice temperature were more than ten times stronger than before. How could he be so strong? The Ice Emperor's strength far exceeded his expectations. If that's the case, perhaps he had overestimated himself. As the Ice Emperor and his group approached, Trajan gently tapped Olivia's hand. Olivia, remember not to always act like a girl. After leaving Pandora Island, not everyone will pamper you like me. Grandpa, what are you talking about? Do you mean, you can't beat the Ice Emperor? Olivia noticed that her grandpa's words were a bit off. Rain is a good person. I really like that kid. Try to get along well with him. Shob and Avril also frowned. What did Trajan mean by saying these things now? Trajan turned around and said to Avril, Vice Captain, you are the Vice Captain of our fleet. Your duty is to maximize our strength and protect the Captain, right? Avril was stunned for a moment and nodded in confusion. Trajan nodded. Arthur, take them and go. Find Captain Rain and rendezvous immediately. General, Arthur widened his eyes, looking incredulously at Trajan. This is an order. Let Captain Rain leave immediately. Trajan, what are you doing? The captain has already saved many people. He will be back soon, Avril asked in confusion. Trajan shook his head. It seemed that they did not yet know the Ice Emperor's current strength. Then, he could only let them see for themselves. Suddenly, six linked hurricane anti-ship missiles were launched, with one missile having an attack power of 10,000 points and a total attack power of 60,000 points shooting toward the Ice Emperor and his group. The leader of the group lifted his hand and, from a kilometer away, the six hurricane missiles were covered in ice, with their propulsion systems malfunctioning and turning into six blocks of ice, falling into the sea. The fuck? Shob's eyelids kept twitching, his mind blank. Is this the Ice Emperor's strength? 
233. Trajan vs. Ice Emperor. Avril. Hurry up. Run. Although Trajan was talking to Avril, his eyes never left the Ice Emperor, who was approaching slowly. Avril was torn between leaving and abandoning Trajan, but if they stayed, it seemed like the others wouldn't have a chance to escape. Grandpa, I'm not leaving. Olivia held back her tears and said. At that moment, Arthur suddenly knocked out Olivia from behind and lifted her up. Captain Avril, please recognize your responsibilities. This is not the time to act on impulse. If we all die, there will be no hope of turning this situation around in the future. But if we can evacuate in time this time, there will still be hope. Don't let Trajan sacrifice himself in vain. Arthur's eyes also turned red as he spoke. Trajan had always treated him as his own, and in his heart, Trajan was not just a comrade, but also a close family member. Arthur's decision was no easier than Olivia's. Finally, Arthur's words woke up Avril. It was not the time to act impulsively. Let's go. Everyone quickly evacuated from the ship. When Avril turned around, she saw the legendary figure's cloak fluttering in the sea breeze. The ice had already extended to Super Battleship Number 1. Trajan took a deep breath and jumped off the ship. The Ice Emperor and General Trajan were old acquaintances. The first thing the Ice Emperor said when they met was like meeting an old friend. Oh, my old friend, thank you for helping me get rid of the other five kings. Trajan narrowed his eyes slightly. The Ice Emperor was indeed a cunning strategist. Everything, including the cost and the orders, was just his means of getting rid of the five kings. No matter how much money he spent, it would all come back to him if he could unify the King Class C area and his main force was all on ice god number one. As for the dead crew members, he could get as many as he wanted in the future. Ice Emperor, you really played your cards well, Trajan said coldly. The Ice Emperor sneered, yeah, I've been wanting to take action for years, but that kid suddenly appeared and rose rapidly in just five years. I was caught off guard. Fortunately, he's very ambitious, which gives me a great opportunity. Not only can I get rid of the ten kings, but I can also take out you. This is fucking great. Oh, and this ship too. Its performance puts my ice god in the shade. Look at it. It's still in good condition. Tut tut tut. This haul is really beyond my expectations. The ice emperor looked at super battleship number one as if he were looking at a naked woman, full of greed. Trajan slowly drew his long sword from his waist and said coldly, Want this ship? Did you ask me first? The ice god couldn't help but laugh. Trajan, do you think you're still the legendary captain of the past? If it were twenty years ago, you might have been qualified to fight me, but now, in the twenty years you've wasted, I've become stronger and more powerful. You already realized it yourself. Otherwise, why would you let your people escape? The Ice Emperor laughed. Oh, by the way, you don't think I'm gonna let them go, do you? Trajan didn't say anything more, because what the Ice Emperor said was true. The Ice Emperor waved his hand and said to the people behind him, Step back and witness how I, the Ice Emperor, will crush this famous legendary captain. Captain, kill this old guy and you'll be the only king in the King Class C. Don't kill him too easily, teach him a good lesson. They destroyed our two ice gods. Crush, crush, crush. The ice emperor smiled slightly and casually threw his black fur cloak, which was caught by one of his subordinates. Trajan, did you hear that? They want me to play with you more. Show me what you're capable of now. Trajan's eyes were firm. You want to crush me? You're not even qualified. Ally transformation. Trajan's body surface was covered with a layer of metal, gleaming with metallic silver light. It turned out that Trajan's mutation type was also a material mutation, and it was a very rare metal mutation. Generally speaking, the material type mutation cannot receive a base attribute bonus. However, Trajan not only had the characteristics of material type mutations but also gained attribute bonuses. If Rain were here, he would realize why Trajan never chose to enhance himself. The effect of the Fire Heaven Crystal on his attributes was not great. Ally Mutation? One could know its power just by thinking about it, which could be said to be both offensive and defensive. Moreover, alloys have various properties. From Trajan's Daredevil jump onto the sea surface, it could be seen that his alloy feature should include being lightweight and waterproof. Ordinary creatures that undergo mutation were ineffective against Trajan. After all, most creatures couldn't compete with an alloy human in either attack or defense. Trajan relied on such abnormal mutation types to gallop on the battlefield and defeated numerous powerful enemies. The Ice Emperor smiled slightly, Trajan, your mutation type is quite strong, but unfortunately, your shapeshifting type material mutation is not in the same league as my control type material mutation. 
Trajan's voice was metallic even when he spoke, how do you know until we try? With that Trajan's figure moved swiftly, and he shot toward the Ice Emperor with his sword. However, before he could get close to the Ice Emperor, the latter just raised his hand, and an ice cone suddenly pierced out from under his feet, flipping Trajan over. Before Trajan could land, the sea surface shot out a series of huge sharp ice cones, stabbing towards him. If Trajan's mutation type defense was not extremely strong, it would have been pierced through like a sieve if it was someone else. Trajan was continuously attacked by various ice cones, but he managed to withstand them all. After landing, he coldly snorted, Ice Emperor, if this is the extent of your attack, save your energy. The Ice Emperor smiled faintly. Do you think these ice cones are meant to injure you? Look at your body. Trajan lowered his head and found that his body was already covered in ice debris. These fragments were what remained on his body after the ice cones collided and shattered with his metallic body. Trajan hurriedly tried to brush off the ice debris, but the ice emperor laughed softly, even if you know, you can't think of a countermeasure. My control range, efficiency, and freezing speed are all different from the past. Stab! A large number of ice cones attacked without warning, shooting out from under his feet. Trajan managed to dodge one, but he couldn't dodge the rest. The ice cones pierced toward Trajan's body, leaving behind a large amount of debris. Melt. The ice emperor narrowed his eyes slightly, and the ice debris on Trajan's body turned into liquid, covering his entire body. Ice seal. A layer of frost had already formed on Trajan's body. Then came the second round of attacks, and Trajan's body was covered in another layer of frost. Although Trajan could not remotely control materials, his basic attributes were stronger than the ice emperor. However, at this moment, he was unable to get close to the Ice Emperor. Suddenly, Trajan seized the opportunity and burst out all his strength, throwing his sword towards the Ice Emperor. Die! Trajan's eyes widened in anger. Hmph! The Ice Emperor snorted coldly. How naive! As the sword flew, a wall of ice suddenly rose in front of it. Trajan's sword pierced through the first wall but was immediately blocked by the second wall. Taking advantage of this time, the Ice Emperor had already managed to move away from Trajan's attack direction. The long sword slipped from Trajan's hand, leaving him even more powerless against the ice spikes. His body was hit again and again, accumulating more and more frost. Gradually, Trajan's movements became slower. Finally, Trajan was frozen in place. The Ice Emperor was also a steady type. After adding several layers of frost, freezing Trajan into a huge block of ice, he walked up to him and looked at him inside the ice coldly laughing. Didn't you say I couldn't crush you? Sorry about that. I did it. Trajan got desperate. He had wanted to wait for the Ice Emperor close and use the last of his physical strength to kill him, but did not expect the Ice Emperor again thicken the thickness of the ice. 234. You all will die today. The terrifying thing about the Ice Emperor was that he could create enough low temperatures to instantly freeze seawater. If it were 20 years ago, Trajan could still fight him with his speed and defense advantage as the Ice Emperor could not achieve such high efficiency at that time. But now, his skills had become instantaneous, persistent, and even impeccable. The real ice follows the mind. The Ice Emperor looked at Trajan in the block of ice and pointed a finger at the heart. The part of the ice block touched by the Ice Emperor quickly melted. This way, the Ice Emperor opened a hole in the ice block, while other parts remained frozen. Allo right? After the intense exercise just now, you should have very little stamina left. I think you won't be able to hold on for long. How about I help you a little? The ice emperor raised his hand, and a slender ice spike rose under his foot. He broke the ice spike and pressed it against Trajan's chest. People say that dripping water can penetrate the stone. As for me, I want to see if ice can penetrate your alloy. With that, the ice spike began to spin rapidly like an electric drill, with the pointed tip in front turning into ice shards due to friction. But under the control of the ice emperor, it quickly recondensed. This process repeated itself, constantly drilling into Trajan's chest. At first, Trajan didn't feel much, but as the drilling continued, his face gradually changed. The massive energy consumption had already made it impossible for him to maintain his alloy form for long, and now the Ice Emperor's torture was rapidly depleting his energy. Once the alloy state completely disappears, he would undoubtedly perish. The Ice Emperor's greatest opponent had already been easily subdued by him, and the other crew members ambled over looking contemptuously at Trajan who was still holding on tightly. Old man, why did you bother coming here? You're already so old. Wouldn't it be better to stay on Pandora Island? Must you show off your strength? Legendary captain? 
he's not even worth mentioning. If you join our leader, it would be much better for you. Look at your current situation. Oh, where's your captain? Oh, right, he's long gone with his tail between his legs. They say your bounty group is really tough, but the truth is, you're just a bunch of trash. The only strongest fighter is you, an old guy, who just recruited, and the rest of you don't even have the courage to fight. Not only are you trash, but you're also cowards. Trajan could hear what they were saying, but he couldn't respond to them. Rain finally rescued old Bai, who was badly injured but should be okay once Avril and the others arrived. When he saw that all of his people were on the ship, Rain finally breathed a sigh of relief. However, at that moment, he saw a damaged Yamato sailing toward them. Hmm? What's going on? Rain looked at the ship in confusion. Avril and the others were on board. Why are they here? They should be fighting the Ice Emperor, shouldn't they? Rain said to One Bear, One Bear, take care of him. I'm gonna see what's going on. Go ahead, Captain. I got this. Rain jumped into the sea and quickly approached Chevrolet's ship, standing on top of Little Black's head. Why are you here? Rain asked after boarding the ship. Where's the Ice Emperor? Captain, Trajan told us to retreat immediately. The Ice Emperor's strength is terrifying. Avril replied in a hurry. Rain was a little confused, so, where's Trajan? And Olivia? What was even stranger was that these people all seemed very low-spirited. Avril, Arthur, and Trajan's old subordinates had red-rimmed eyes. No one spoke. Rain began to realize that something was wrong. He rarely raised his voice, but now he shouted at them. I'm talking to you. Why aren't you speaking? Avril, speak up. Shob. At this point, Arthur spoke. Captain, don't blame them. Trajan asked us to leave. I knocked out Olivia, and now she's in the captain's room. Trajan. He's covering our retreat. What? Rain was instantly furious. What kind of joke is this? How could we let Trajan go and die? Rain roared, all ships turn around now. Captain? Avril exclaimed urgently. Trajan said that the Ice Emperor now is not the same as the one twenty years ago. Even the Hurricane anti-ship missiles are useless against him. We can't let Trajan's sacrifice be in vain. Who said Trajan will sacrifice himself? Rain exclaimed, back then, I didn't abandon you and today, I won't abandon Trajan. Return. Arthur was also angry and rushed over, grabbing Rain's collar. You can't let Trajan die in vain. Rain grabbed Arthur's hand and said, I said, he won't die. What makes you so confident? Can you defeat the Ice Emperor? Do you know how strong he is? You're acting recklessly. Even if I'm acting recklessly, I will never abandon Trajan, just like I will never abandon any of you. Rain's eyes glowed. I will take you to farther places but the precondition is that none of you can drop out. In this argument, many people couldn't hate Rain at all. Yes, this was his usual style as their captain. He would never abandon anyone, even if he died in battle. Arthur's hand gradually loosened, and he looked at Rain in confusion, but Trajan. I am the captain, and this is an order. Rain exclaimed angrily, full speed ahead. The metallic skin on Trajan's body gradually began to fade, indicating that he could no longer hold on. Blood gushed out from his chest where he was pierced by an ice drill. Ha 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 Trajan, my legendary captain, you are gonna die in my hands. From now on, whenever people speak of you, they will always think of me, the Ice Emperor. How does it feel now? You sacrificed yourself to protect those who have all abandoned you. The war we couldn't fight twenty years ago has finally come to a conclusion today. Oh, I suddenly have a great idea. The Ice Emperor spoke with excitement. I can turn you into a specimen. Imagine, you, a legendary captain, becoming a collection of mine, the Ice Emperor. That would be such an interesting thing. Ha ha ha, and your granddaughter, she is so beautiful. Speaking of Olivia, Trajan's expression finally changed. She was the person he loved most, but he could no longer protect her after his death. Oh, you're in a hurry, ha ha, but it's a pity that you are just a discarded pawn. No one cares about you anymore, and your death is worthless. The Ice Emperor then grabbed the ice drill and pushed it into Trajan's chest himself. Die, useless old guy. At that moment, a series of cannon blasts could be heard from the sky. Boom, 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 boom. Everyone was surprised and turned around to see two warships rushing towards them at the fastest speed from afar. On the deck of the leading ship, a young man stood facing the wind, roaring at them. You all will die today.